Welcome once again to the PokerStars Arena and the 2023 Spring Championship of Online Poker. Tonight, the final table of the biggest buy-in event in the series, the $25,000 Super High Roller. 42 total entries, a prize pool of more than a million dollars. They played down into the money last night. Six players return for the final day. Up top, a first prize of $362,000, plus, of course, the Scoop Trophy. Hello, everyone. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And, Joe, we are going to pick up the action in the main event a bit later on. First, as the starter, we have the 25K, the Super High Roller final table. Let's get straight to the action because cards are in the virtual air. And look at this. It was just like watching the main event yesterday. We've got Mike Watson and Samuel <laughs> Vuzden. So Watts and European, both big stacks, one and two in chips, respectively, coming into this FT. The other players at this final table, Sam Greenwood, Daniel Smilkovic, Pedro Garagnani, and Bruno Voltman. So two Brazilians sat next to each other in the top right-hand corner of the table. Uh, suffice to say, every player at this final table has at least one scoop title to their name. So we are going to see another multiple champion this evening. We've spoken a lot in the last 24 hours, Joe, about Mike Watson having not one but two EPT titles, including that win in Monte Carlo at the start of this month. Mike also has seven scoops. Wowee. Seven scoops. Jeez. So this is I mean, he Brazil. Didn't even, he didn't even play most of them this year. <laughs> no. Uh, Brazil versus Brazil. And since the flop, it's all been about Bruno Voltman, who's now improved from top pair to trips. I had trips. I love trips. It's one of my favorite hands to make. And now we have the decision on Pedro Garagnani, who has ace high and is the second shortest stack at the final table. Not like this. Not like this, Pedro. Yeah, please note that Sam Greenwood is playing a sub-10 big blind stack right now. Checks it back. Mux. Chips go to great Dan. Bruno Voltman third on the leaderboard. As we introduce the third member of the commentary team, please welcome back to the PokerStars Arena, Griffin Benja. Hello, everyone. Let's do this. 25K final table. Yeah, another night of looking at <clears throat> European and Sawats play top-level poker. We also have Bruno Voltman on one of our feature tables during our main event coverage yesterday as well. Should highlight, Griffin, that Mike Watson, as well as being chip leader here, is also number two in chips coming into the penultimate day of the main event with 40 players remaining. And I don't think this shove from Sam Greenwood is going to get through. Yeah, this is going to be an easy call for... Oh, European. rotation. Oh, forget about the rotation. Nut flush <laughs> for Samuel Vuzden and Sam Greenwood, who came into this FT as the shortest stack, cashes out in sixth place for $54,482, which means Mike Watson is now guaranteed to make a profit. We should highlight that Sir Watts is in this for three bullets. Sir Watts is playing the 25K as a 75K. If... Look, Mike's had a rough run lately, so I'm glad that he will at least be profitable in this event by $4,000. What is the ROI making 4000 on 75, by the way? Well, how does that work out? Does anyone know the math on that? <laughs> or how did By the it? way, Houston took the chip lead piece of paper? after eliminating Sam Greenwood, but it's pretty much tied for first right now so both players with just shy of a hundred big blinds uh, this has been folded around to daniel smilkovic who's got sevens sevens come on with the sevens <clears throat> you know i saw an unfortunate uh, comment in the chat when I entered here. Someone saying that they weren't a big fan of the Chop Pot song. And I have a little story from this weekend that I want to uh, tell as Great Dent flops a jack Before here. Before you yeah. tell that story, when you say 
the chat. Can you please be more specific? Because we are broadcasting this evening on both Twitch and YouTube. And I Absolutely. would like to reflect Twitch. both platforms equally. Okay. Yes. Twitch, we had um, an unfortunate comment from someone up here. Um, Irrelevant who it was. Anyways, I want to tell a little story from the tournament I played this weekend at Playground Poker Club. There was a player two to my left, sort of in his late 40s, real sweet guy, nice beard. And he told me that he was a fan of the stream. And we ended up all in together. And guess what happened, James and Joe? It was a we chop pot. We had ourselves a chop pot. And Did I looked say- over to him, and he looked back at me, and I said it. And he said it just a half a second later because he realized what was happening. And we sang the song together. And it was, uh, it was a real special moment. So you might not like the Chop Pot song. But guess what? Everyone loves the Chop Pot song. So we're going to get was to the Pot. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> moment. Tough spot here for Smill the Hero. Those Queen-10, Queen-9 combos have missed. Those 10-9 combos have missed. So there is some reason to call here sometimes. What do you guys think? James? Joe, what's your vote here? Call or fold? What do you think is going to happen? I fold. vote fold. I can see these up against a pair of jacks, so that's yeah, why I'm I, saying he that should That was call. my rationale. That's what I, that's what I was thinking, right? too. I was like, this guy's got a jack. you got to fold the sevens. <laughs> Griffin, it's so easy. You just, look, this sevens are not winning here, so you fold the sevens. So, Large Farb says, the song is A-OK. I do not, however, enjoy an actual chop pot when I'm losing half the pot. That sounds like a glass half-empty attitude. Yes. Yeah, I don't You're not that. losing the, the whole pot. That's, pot. That's the way you have to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way you have to look at it. Blinds have just gone up, by the way, to 20k, 40k. 30-minute blind levels in this super high roller as we see Mike Watson open under the gun with King-8 suited. We've got a three-bet from Daniel Smilkovic with Ace-10. And Samuel Vuzden with Kojak. Interesting to see uh, Smill here decide to 3-bet off this 17 big blind stack instead of shove over you know, what would be a pretty wide opening range five-handed from the chip leader. With this price, um, Mike's not going to go anywhere. He's going to try to flop some equity. So you're not getting any folds, and this isn't a hand that necessarily flops especially well. Wow, okay, very surprised to see folding for another 88,000, but maybe just deciding, you know what, this seems like a trap. This is just a nutty hand. So that was a cool little cool little spot there. So Bruno Voltman with ace, king on the button. Raises to 146,000. 10-6 suited in the small blind. Nope. Eight do suited in the big blind. Three and a half X here um, from Ace King. Not something we normally see. I love these 25K final tables because we just see some really nuanced play um, that we don't always see at the at the lower stakes. Yeah, some of the some of the greatest ICM here at the twenty-five thousand dollar level. Really, really amazing laddering. <laughs> So Jack five off suit. Mike Watson raises small to big. Daniel Smilkovic with ace eight. Ace eight of hearts. So Smilkovic, who plays from Austria, has $4 million in stars earnings, has two scoop titles. They've come in recent years, 2018 and in 2021. And still ahead right now with ace high. But so Watts has continued. Dave on Twitch asking, is Watson the same Watson that won EPT Monte Carlo? No, you're never the same after winning two EPTs. Thank you for your question. As we just established, seven-time scoop champion, two-time EPT winner. And another barrel with the flush draw Wins the pot for Mike Watson. Back in the number one seat. Has the snowmen's. Nom, nom. Nom, nom. Uh-oh. Probably going to have to pay off P. Vigar here. Yes. Well, this, more than that, I think this is probably going to go raise, call, Three shove, ways? call. I mean, it's going to be 15 big blinds. Maybe Sir Watts 
finds a fold after they're both prepared to be all in here, but this is just 15 big blinds. It's representing, you know, 20% of Sir Watts's 3.2 million. He's going to know that P. Vigar's uh, hand strength is, is, is quite big here. It's going to be sort of ace-jack plus and probably nines plus. So maybe he decides to fold eights and just let them bust each other. But this is a really strong hand button to big blind and small blind. So Pedro Garagnani calling all in with tens and will take the flip against Daniel Smilkovic. Mike Watson folds that. the eights. Here we go, and it's a jack-high flop, an ace on the turn, no 10 on the river. We're already down to four. Pedro Garagnani from Brazil cashing out in fifth place for $79,500, meaning everyone's now locked up a six-figure score. That's just a really world-class fold from, from Watson there. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people, when they have a big chip lead like this, have an opportunity to knock out two players, but he just knows the ranges so well in that spot and, you know, didn't take more than six, seven, eight seconds to, to make that big fold. We go three-way to the flop. Queens versus Queen-9 versus King-Jack. It is an ace-jack-3 flop. No player has an ace, but obviously, so what's has paired is Jack. Yeah, and Dant electing to stay under repped here with these queens. Expecting Sir Watts to be opening pretty wide here under the gun forehanded. Just going to get a lot of folds against the big three bet out of position. So instead, just playing this as a sort of slow play. And already getting some value against the very dominated King Jack. Oh, no. Kojak improving to two pair on the turn, and Mike Watson now an 86% favorite. So, as I said, we saw Bruno Voltman briefly yesterday. $8.7 million in PokerStars earnings, won a scoop title back in 2021. It was a 2K no limit hold'em for $74,000. Also has $2.6 million in live earnings. Full house. Everybody. We've got some top level analysis from Brett Saunders on YouTube. Mike Watson has solved poker. Great food. He's killing poker lately. I've not had his cook food, but I'm great jealous. Food. That, yeah, that you have. Jeez. So is this running Kings here bad for Great Dant? I mean, I know that it doesn't help him, but does it and spiritually? Yeah, I think, I think definitely we would have seen a pretty quick fold to most any sizing on the turn here. With the check, this is going to look a lot like something like Ace X that's going to check back the turn. But now that we see the big bet on the river, it's much more polarizing. It looks more like, you know, something like a King 10 that would have C bet the flop and then hit that King and then made trip Kings. So I think it also it, it makes for a pretty easy fold for Great Dan. Obviously frustrating, but doesn't seem like a very realistic bluff line betting into a two people a very strong range flatting the small blind and then the big bet on the river so good good read from dant eight seven versus king nine the two big stacks at this final table well i should highlight that uh bruno voltman is playing a lot of chips now and Daniel Smilkovic isn't exactly short stacked. We've got rid of the two shorties. Some early consolidation at this now four-handed final table. Yeah, sometimes you're going to think about raising a hand like King-9 when you face a limp from the small. But Sir Watts electing to stay a little under with this pretty strong uh, blind versus blind hand. Also no reason to sort of go after Europeans so much at, the, at this stage. And you can also get value. Look at that. <laughs> I'm going to address this earnest question from Derek. 
He says, am I crazy or do these computer generated hands produce more big hands than real poker? Has anyone done any studies on that? I think this question is being asked honestly. I'm not going to jump down Derek's throat, but Derek, you're just seeing more hands. You're seeing like three, four, five times as many hands per hour uh, watching online poker versus watching uh, live poker. And also, you're probably, if you're watching poker on YouTube, you're probably watching a lot of highlights, right? You're probably watching even more filtered down things. Now, this is live, so this, this is not a highlight show. But yet, yeah, it's going to seem like more crazy things are happening. And don't forget, you're watching the best players in the world right now. So it's just entirely possible that also you're going to be seeing bigger pots and more money wagered uh, because they play a little bit differently than the $5 pub league. Yeah, and a consideration of a king high call is a perfect follow-up to that comment from Joe. Well there read you go, yeah. from Sir Watts. He's <clears throat> now up to 3.7 million. Has put some distance between himself and Samuel Vuzden as Bruno Voltman opens here with Jack Eight of Clubs. Derek, and seriously, Der who writes so no studies? I'm not, now. I'm now. I'm mad, now I'm actually angry. Now I'm pissed. Okay. Okay. So Derek, yes. There are studies, because basically, when you have logged, and what are we up to now? 300 billion hands of online poker dealt? Oh, I'm yes. so mad. You actually do have accurate records, and what you see is whether things are performing within normal parameters. So, of course, you're going to see weird stuff happen. One-outers are going to hit. 2% is 2%. It's still a chance. But what you want to make sure is that when you study a large sample size, and going back to what Joe was saying about you see a lot more hands dealt online, you're able to run that statistical analysis <clears throat> in the long term to see if things are performing according to pattern, if they're staying true to the percentage. For example, are aces holding against kings roughly four times in five? And guess what? The studies show yes, because you have enough data to genuinely track long-term results and even out iron out that short-term variance so i've just spoken to stat statric actually and he's told me that uh based on the numbers we have derek you actually run significantly worse than the average player <laughs> than almost everyone actually <laughs> we have a massive sample we've compiled both poker stars and live data and i mean <sighs> keep trucking i guess but So, so no studies, though. Uh, link, question mark, link. Source. <laughs> I mean, if you're thinking that coolers don't happen live, if you're thinking weird stuff doesn't happen live, I'm assuming you haven't seen 90% of the content on our YouTube channel. So, King-9 completes, Queen-Deuce raises. What if I told you this raise wasn't going to work? <laughs> so a pair of deuces against a flush draw. I'm being told on YouTube that Great Dant is not a pro, so unfortunately these $8.7 million in total PokerStars earnings must be the world's greatest amateur! Oh, did I miss the YouTube comments? Welcome, welcome back, YouTube. We had a whole two weeks without you. I don't know what I did in that time. It was... Yeah, it felt very kind of... It was just so calm, so many paradise. fewer aneurysms. <laughs> Tough card to barrel here for European. Going to be... Going to expect to be behind a decent amount of the time here on this flop float. And is going to expect a fair amount of ace high limp calls and then calls on the flop as well i think great dent you know might want to bluff this card but it's also a bit tough because you're going to get isoed by those ace highs so 
Dent electing to just check and hoping this King High is good at showdown and going to be quite annoyed to see that Ooh. the Queen and the Duck. Yeah. Well, Cocken watching on Twitch asks, how is European? I think he's probably feeling pretty good right now. Big stack in the Super High Roller, still going strong in the 10K main event. 34 players remaining as they play down to the final nine today. And is that one going too right now, or is that starting a little later? No, that's going. Wow. So these, Look, I understand for those of us who have been in the game for a long time, we take that as a given. But if you're new yeah. to this, these, these, these cats are playing for huge money on at least two different tables. At least. That's pretty wild. Like, I have a hard time doing analysis, seeing all the hold cards with one table. And they're playing with limited information on <laughs> multiple tables with the added pressure of massive money on the line. My job, no massive money on the line. A pair of aces is still good. Great Dan facing a bet of 200,000. And still ahead on the river. <clears throat> in your experience, James, in these 25 games, do we often see um, deals being discussed when you get they get heads up for 300? They just go for it. It depends on the players. Mm -hmm. But yes, we have seen very amicable deals between some of these guys who know each other very well and play against each other mm -hmm. all the time. It also does but, seem to make a difference if there is also a 10K main event going on at the same time. It seems mm, like if there is, if people are multi-tabling and have other things they yeah. want to play, they tend to find the deal a little bit quicker. That is true. Mike Watson. The gall. Oh. The, the oh. unmitigated gall. The hammer. But Daniel Smilkovich doesn't really have anything here. Backdoor potential, I guess, but... We might, yeah, we might see a, a call actually here with the backdoor straight draw for the min bat. I mean, yeah, it's, it's tough because... You know, I mean, Sir Watts could just have, have like... 6-5 offsuit, you know, he could just have a 7 that gets sucked out on a 9 or a 10 that gets checked, so, uh, of course we can just, it's, it's tough when we see, you know that Mike Watson has somehow flopped 2 pair with do 7, but, you know, when you think about the whole range, sometimes it's okay to just peel there So interestingly Tom, one of our Twitch mods, observing there is nothing in the lobby that specifies a set aside. Now, normally, every single major event on PokerStars, including all scoop tournaments, has to have a set aside. If they do do a deal, they have to leave some money still to play for. That's not detailed in the lobby. Do you think it could be just a lack of labeling, or um, yeah, you know, and maybe I the think software it could be will the... still force it? Yeah, I think it probably. I think if they were to do a deal, it would still force it, but it's just not advertised as such in the. Uh, on the homepage on the main lobby. Biggest buy-in of the series if we don't have it properly labeled? Oh my god. Well, funnily enough, the uh, the kind of announcement is more about the rake refund that was available for people who showed up mm. on time. I'm going to say that that's relevant to more players than the set-aside for if they're already guaranteed hundreds of thousands of dollars. Got a limp in here from the amateur, Bruno Volkman. What, what, where did this start? It was on YouTube. Just wrote, Great Dant is not a pro. Okay. Yeah, one positive dude says the pay jumps are small enough. These boys not going to deal. Well, I bet if Mike Watson wants a deal, that, uh, I mean, no one's going to turn down so what?
10.8. I guess this is a value bet with 10 high. Obviously, Samuel Fuster not aware that he has the best hand right now. And he's going to get a fold from Bruno Voltman. So two eliminations from this final table during that first session as we hit the first break as we play down to a winner in this 25k super high roller. A quick reminder, the 10k main event plays down to the final table tonight. We will pick up the action in that tournament later. But right now, we're going to take an overview of the 2023 Spring Championship of Online Poker as the series nears its conclusion. Stories and stats from our man in the know. Yes, it's our scoop correspondent. He's got the looks, he's got the brains, he's Howard Swayze. And Howard, before we get to the stories, let's hear the stats. The latest series numbers, please. Yes, so we now have 330 tournaments are completed, and that has seen 1.011 million entries. Yep, we're through the magic 1 million entries mark. Prize pools of $69.6 million. And first prize prizes of $10.8 million. Yep, so past $10 million in first places. Crucially, though, these are only completed events, so it doesn't include the main events. The guarantees have been eclipsed in all of those, so those numbers are going to shoot up very soon. Okay, Howard, thank you. Uh, so what went down last night? Poker-wise, don't, you know, there no succession or Barry spoilers. <laughs> Okay, Samuel Vuston, European. He won his first title of the year. That was his fourth overall. It was the $530 Sunday warm-up, and it earned him 71K. So he wasn't just playing the 25K. Uh, there was also the second chance turbo main event last night. Uh, the 5K in that had tons of big names. A player called You Win Take It won it, uh, and it took <laughs> five hours to win $104,000. Brilliant final table, actually, with uh, Ben CB was in second, Sam Greenwood, Stefan Chu, Espen Jorstad, and Timothy Adams were in the top six there. And the medium version of that event uh, went to Estonia's Yago Alavali, otherwise known as Bunga Cat. I think we'd have heard of him before. Uh, he won $61,000 after a heads-up deal. Did any of that change player of the series? Uh, actually, no. So really not much changed since we had that huge update yesterday. Uh, Foul first has slightly extended their lead now over Rui Ferreira. But as I think we'll all remember, we've frequently seen very big swings in the player of the series right on the last few days. So we shouldn't be ruling out anything. There are still 33 tournaments to finish. So, uh, you know, we, we need to keep, uh, keep an eye on that. OK, so everyone who's in contention still has a sweat all the way through to the end of the series. Exciting stuff. Now, Howard, I actually went back over my notes from last year. Don't ask me why. Uh, and at this point in 2022, Brazil had won 66 trophies. So what are they up to in this year's series? Yeah, and last year they finished with 72. They've already beaten that. They are up to 77 for this year already. The UK is up to 29, good for second place. Uh, that's more than last year as well, actually. And now players from 40 different countries have won this time because we had a first ever title from a player from a from a player from Mauritius. Uh, so that's a oh. scoop first. So uh, take a bow. Big Twins was that player's name. Fantastic. Uh, now we did see a few team pros in action in the main event yesterday, some of them more briefly than others. Um, any big results or near misses for any of the guys repping the Red Spade over the last few days? Well, they're still searching for their second win of the series uh, after Wiston, but Rafa Moraes, he came second in the 1K Sunday cooldown behind Juan Pardo. Uh, so that was a good result. And Georgina James, she cashed in the medium women's event. Uh, the women's event was a real success, by the way. Tons of entries into that, so that was great. Uh, the scoop main events haven't been quite so good. Only one team pro is into a day three there. Uh, Ramon Kalilas in the medium main event, but still plenty of time. Okay, now obviously our primary focus once we're done with the super high roller will be the high buy in main, but I think we're going to have to keep tabs on the medium because, Joe, we want to follow Ramon. Yeah, no surprise that there's one team pro left and it's Ramon. <laughs> follow him. Uh, Howard, we will get an update from you tomorrow. Of course, we'll get your series recap on this week's podcast, but for now, thank you very much. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Ramon 
always impressive. And talking of impressive players, we've got Mike Watts in the final table of the 25k Super High Roller this evening. Ship leader with four players remaining and still a big stack, still a top three stack in the high buy and main event, which is coming back from break with 31 players. Down to four in the 25k. Uh, down to two commentators as Joe goes on his sausage break, I say. <laughs> Man loves a hot dog. So, Griffin, it's you and me, baby. Let's do it. The Disgusting Brothers. And we've got Bruno Voltman with 8-5 of clubs on the button. I'm going to make it absolutely clear. There is no way I'm the Greg of this relationship. I'm definitely <laughs> the Tom. Yes, that's for sure. So, Dent, again, going for the larger sizing on the button against these two mega stack Megalodon sharks. Don't think it's going to work this time as European is loaded with the ace queen of spades. Oh, slide it. I do love people who violate the number one rule of being an know-it-all which is to be right only 42 entries must have been a big overlay nope on a 1 million guarantee with 42 entries price pool is 1 million thirty thousand and fifty dollars zero overlay so if you're tom and i'm greg who is joe roman Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I kind of feel that's harsh and flattering it's at the same time. It's a little harsh, time. as the, the, yeah, with considering the way that things went for Roman in the last half of the, the final season, maybe that's a little harsh, but I can't think of a better comparison. 7-3 versus 7-5. Joe is Connor. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so domination rotation in Daniel Smilkovich's favor. Logan is obviously Mr. Poker Star, who one day I hope to meet. <laughs> yeah, big advantage here for Smil the Hero. Some equity here though now on the turn. For Dant, looking to pop off that six or five. No hearts to be spoken of. And with the gut shot straight draw, Bruno Voltman makes it 60,000. Taser, I will respond to your question imminently. Oh, this is a great comment from Large Farv on Twitch. OMG, if a seven hits, the five plays. <laughs> five kickers don't often play. That would be one of those rare yeah. scenarios. That's true. I talked about being a gut shot, but actually Great Dan had more ways to win the hand. So I Taser asked, does anyone know, is it public knowledge whether each hand is a predetermined deck order or flops, turns and rivers are based on percentages and equity of players remaining in the hand? I'm just curious. It is a predetermined deck order. So the virtual shuffle happens before the start of the hand. Nothing that happens in the hand then influences the cards that come. The turn will always be the turn. The river will always be the river. And that is public knowledge, by the way. I'm not letting you in on any great inside poker stars secret. He does have those, but he probably won't share them. There are times when I have to remember there's certain stuff I know which I'm not meant to talk about. But that's normally about stuff that's coming up, which I think that'll be fun to tease or promote. Nope. Not in the public domain yet, James. And no, there are no burn cards. That's a good question from one positive dude. No burn cards. 
I've actually never related to you more than your reaction <clears throat> after you being on the feature table and the Irish Open when you realized that every every conversation you were having was being broadcast. You're like, did, did I say everything that I, you know, maybe it was like talking about a lot of different things? Because I felt it like that. Really the I, I, you, you it's really weird. You must strange. have been in that situation. You've played on yes, a lot absolutely. of feature tables, a lot of TV yeah, yeah. tables. That after a while, you forget about the cameras. You forget that there's a microphone on you. And yeah. you get lulled into a full sense of security. You think, I'm just absolutely. at a poker table. I'm just with the people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember someone was asking me about uh, about about working for for Poker Stars and doing the commentary, and I was talking about going to school for sports broadcasting. And then you guys brought it up on the stream, and I was just like, I, I've never talked to you guys about this, I don't think. And then I was like, Oh yeah, that was a private conversation. You guys were bugging me. <laughs> Smell the hero finding the three bet. I think this particular combo of King Four of Spades will fall into the fall range for European, but he's full range, but he's so confident that he might just own appeal and try to flop some equity that's i think where this pause comes from instead Ooh. he clicks it back hello and this really pressurizes a hand like ace seven suited what year is this this feels very 2011 i like it i like it i mean these are the kind of moves that samuel has i mean so impressive to watch Zeddy says it best on Twitch. Samuel, you dirty dog. And finds the shove. And now, oh, wow. A five bet all in for like 20 big blinds. I mean, the things we see at this stage of a 25K, just remarkable. Okay, so a couple of follow-up questions. Web13 on Twitch says, so no burn cards in all variants. Correct, no burn cards. Boon Ben. On YouTube, ask the question, why is there no burn card? Well, you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the burn card in live poker? It's in case the deck, the card on the top of the deck that the dealer is holding has become marked in some way, and a player might know what card is coming out next. If you mm. don't have a deck on display, there is no need for the burn card. It serves a purpose in live poker. It has no purpose in online poker. So there are certain things where online is different. You don't need, for example, the big blind ante in online poker because the ante is paid automatically, right? So you don't have to worry about that whole process of speeding up play by not asking everyone to post their antes. It's, there are also nuances between the two. I will say I've had a lot more success live than online in the last 10 years, and now I'm just going to say I'm more of a burn card player. Okay. little slice for Sir Watts on the turn, but actually almost a bad card, the queen, unless that happens. Zeddy asking if I'm going to be playing any WSOP this year. I may go out for the main. I skipped last year for the first time in God knows how long, but I think head back out there for the main event you know if you win 125 buy-ins in the main event you should really treat yourself and go for the rest of your life i think thinly veiled brag actually not that thinly veiled was it no it's pretty pretty on the nose actually <laughs> So after those two quick eliminations, I get the sense we're going to be forehanded for some time, Griffin. Meanwhile, Stat Trek has just given me an update from the 10K main event. We will drop in on that later on. We'll watch them play down to the final nine. They have already got down from 40 to 30. Start of day chip lead at any extras. Still in first place. It's one of the Canadian players. Uh, Laszlo Bouchtash, Omaha for rolls has moved up to second, so Mike Watson is now third in chips, uh, remains chip leader at the final table of the super high roller. Uh, some other notable exits, or rather some players no longer in, Seiji Star, Silent Mode, Christoph Vogelsang, Steve O'Dwyer, all eliminated during the first 
40 minutes of day three of the 10K main event. Maroon Poker. James, I have a doppelganger for you. We call them bad lookalikes on this stream, but I'll allow it. Griffin is Banjo Ooh. Beal. What do you think? Should I know who that is? Oh, we're looking it up. Banjo Beal. I mean, it, it, it sounds like they haven't violated Interior the rule designer. of comparing you t to another... Yeah, Banjo Interior Beal. designer. One wow, interior that design is master. a good bad lookalike. Is it? I think that's pretty solid. Do that face. Do that kind of squinty-eyed face. Put glasses on. No, not sunglasses, but... Listen, I'm working with what I have here. Babe! <laughs> I need my eyes, babe! So, a pair of deuces... And a straight draw for Daniel Smilkovic, betting 208,000. Top, top for Samuel Vuzden. Yeah, lost in the shuffle of all this interesting conversation was a very ambitious check raise on a 75% C bet from European. And now Smil the Hero is finding himself with an SPR of just 0.5 to 1. SPR, of course, being stack to pot ratio. So after that, Pretty incredible uh, five bet shove with ace seven suited has now found themselves in the jaws of Samuel Vuzdin. This is not where you want to be as the short stack. Is Smilkovic going to try something funky here? I mean, at this point, you got to imagine that European is going to be pretty strong, at least a decent ace. Is he even going to fold that? Got to figure that a pair of deuces is probably not the best hand. So do you bluff this river? And what sizing is not going to get called? Wow, a virtual all-in, 760k, leaving himself 670 chips behind. And I just can't possibly see a fold here. Um, no. I mean, European blocks King-10, which is one of the, the hands that I guess... Milkovich might raise the flop. He's really repping Queen Jack with this check raise on the flop and then the bet shove. So it doesn't really, you know, it's just too, too few combos. And then there's the call. Yeah, so Samuel Vuzden takes the chip lead as the blinds go up. And look at this. Daniel Smilkovic forced all in from the small blind. Actually from the ante. And deuces trying to isolate here. Bruno Voltman calls. Oh! And look at that! Samuel Vuzden flops quads. So TBQ, this will baby. be... This TBQ. will be hashtag death by quads because we know Daniel Smilkovic is going to be eliminated. Bruno Voltman can now fold. And goodbye, Daniel Smilkovic. Most of the damage done on the previous hand, and now European gets the rest. Smilkovic cashing out for $116,221. I said we'd be four-handed for a while. Clearly I was wrong, but now I think we will see protracted three-handed play, because we've got three deep stacks here, Griffin. You know what they say, James. What do they say about pocket twos? Uh, ducks like to swim in the lake. Ducks fly together. Come on. I That's did right. That That's it. That's it. Ducks fly together. Mike Watson has the Grafton. 10-9 suited. But right now, Jack High is ahead. Scratch that. Pair of nines for Mike on the turn. That's what would you set the over-under line on Mike Watson's age in the picture of him with the cigar? Oh, that looks like the antics of a 21-year-old. 
Ooh, I guess I think I would take the over. 21's a little strong. Let's set the line at 23. Chat, please feel free to give your over or under. But I feel like that's probably been his avatar for a while. It's for as long as I've seen him play on stars, that has been his avatar. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Wow. That's a good expression. Meanwhile, Did I just make up an expression? That's amazing. Domination rotation in Samuel Vuzden's favor. And a pair of fives still ahead. Jack Ish versus Jack Ish. These are not pretty hands, but the five is the best of it. I bet. On the turn, sixty-five seven fifty. We'll see Boosden extend his chip lead at this shorthanded final table. Playing four and a half million. Mike Watson second in chips with 3.6 million. Bruno Voltman 2.2 million. And this is a button raise from Mike with Ace Jack suited. Rebat by Jack Seven of Clubs. Now that we're three handed and Sir Watts has about 50% more chips than Great Dant, European is trying to pressurize that middle stack. But uh, it's a tough assignment, especially when Sir Watts has Ace Jack suited. Not flush draw on the flop for Mike. Huge advantage, 92% blocking that jack of Europeans as well. Well, the ace is playing, and Mike still has a live diamond draw. 91% favorite. And having taken that stab on the flop, maybe European gives up now, Griffin. Yeah, and it's a funny thing, the variance of sort of card distribution. You know, if Sir Watts had something like Ace-9, Ace-8, I don't think would be calling the 5x 3-bet in this spot, and European would have just extended um, his chip lead. Instead, you know, Sir Watts has a very strong three-handed hand, makes the call, and now this chip lead is going to turn over in Sir Watts's favor, assuming European doesn't find a very big, brave bet on this river. Hmm certainly could happen i mean sir watts no gives up maybe wise and that is going to see the big switcheroo and mike watson back in the catbird seat with four and a half million and now has ace 10 versus ace nine blind v blind cole wants to know what happened to scraggy Assuming you mean Spraggy, nothing has happened to him as far as I'm aware. This is going to be really interesting. I wonder if if and when Samuel decides to 3-bet the Ace-9, how Mike Watson is going to react with the Ace-10. A very strong three-handed hand. Yeah, and just folds the best hand, and I don't blame him. So that's one of those interesting spots where if Great Dant decides to make a tight-ish King seven fold on the button, you know, Mike Watson's going to have a big advantage um, blind yeah. on blind there, but instead has to fold the strongest hand pre. King 10 button raise, 7 5 off for Bruno Voltman, who defends the big blind, does not connect. 
Instead, this is all European. Masada asks, did the 10K main end yesterday? No, it's a four-day event, and yesterday was only day two. So we watched them play into the money. They then played down to 40. 40 have come back today playing down to nine. Once the super high roller is done, once we have a champion in this event, we will switch our focus, we'll switch our attention to the main and watch them play down to the final nine. I say that, Griffin. There is an unlikely scenario, but it's not impossible that the main event could reach nine, could end before this final table. This is playing with 30-minute levels, granted with three-handed, but they are deep stacked. There's a lot of chips in play still. Yeah, absolutely. These players are known to get a little wet and wild despite how big the stacks are, but we've certainly seen these, these things slow down when they're this deep as well. This is decisively a great dent hand. Yeah, and finding a way to get a little money in there too. With European completely drawing dead. Couple of pretty strong hands here, blind on blind. Samuel Vusen completes. Mike Watson raises with a Saint. And Ace High still the best hand on a seven tray deuce. <coughs> Bless you. Thank Two you. nights in a row. Yeah. Should I go for the turkey tomorrow? The trifecta. Very nice price here for European to maybe consider calling. Just a 25% pot bet. Can be a bit tough. Maybe sometimes you're... Oof, Ooh. king... Could be out kicked, but you know, too good a price. Samuel Vusen gets there, and we will have a change in the chip lead unless the river is an ace. No ace. Barry Greenstein staying in his bathroom with the robe yeah, very much covering him up. I don't, yeah, it's interesting. I don't, I think this king is a particularly bad card for Sir Watts to make a hero call with ace high here because the kind of floats, the kind of hands that are going to check call preflop and call those floats are a lot of those king 10, king jack, king queen type hands. You know, a hand like ace five suited, ace four isn't going to bluff the river. So really you're just looking at maybe some queen jack suited floats that are now bluffing does 4-6 suited limp call 4x raise? Probably not every time. So I think that's yeah. why we see a very quick fold from Sir Watts, whereas earlier we saw a pretty awesome call from King High in a situation where the range is much wider based on the action on the previous streets. Um, Carlos says that's an image of Barry I didn't need. I apologize. That is a Joe Stapleton anecdote. Sadly, it's a, a true story. Joe stayed at Barry Greenstein's apartment, I think slept on his couch, and Barry was walking around in a bathrobe, and it did, at one point, flap open. So, yeah. But all of Barry was revealed, and I'm sure that that is an image that is etched into Joe Stapleton's brain forevermore. That's all right, Carlos. I could make it 300 times worse if you want me to be descriptive. 
Was it a front or back reveal? Oh, it was a front reveal. Okay, so it wasn't an ass on the river situation. Little Barry was proudly on display. <laughs> So both Mike Watson and Samuel Vusten hovering around the 4 million mark. Vusten with the slight advantage right now. Bruno Voltman with 2 million chips. But ace, nice. king here in a great oh, yeah. spot. Yeah, I, th I think we can expect to just go to the flop here. Um, this is going to be too strong for Sir Watts to fold to a 3-bet. Uh, you know, over 40 big ones effective. I don't think that Mike is going to want to shove so might just decide to call you know you would hate to just fold a hand like this when your opponent's three betting something like ace queen or pocket tens pocket nines you know those bluff type hands like ace six suited but at a huge disadvantage here going up against the ace king Close to 200,000, the bet from Great Dent. I think this is a good example for the viewers um, of the kind of flop that, you know, I think I think we all, a part of us all hates when we three bet ace king and get a board that doesn't include an ace or a king. But these are the kind of boards that are dry enough that you should feel relatively comfortable. Don't sky is falling in your head like oh this guy's just gonna have jack 10 like it's it's hard yeah. for other people to make pairs and at the end of the day a, a flop like 10 6 deuce you have the range advantage you have all those queens through aces and stuff the ones three betting so you can see great dan not betting any bigger than he needs to um yeah. even welcoming some floats but of course king jacks of spades isn't going to be one of them so nice hand there from great dan we see the defend from mike watson with the grafton and he has flopped top pair here, European with second pair. Pair of nine still good. Yeah, Sir Watts electing to stay under wrapped, and also I think it reflects a level of respect and i wouldn't go as far as to say fear but knowing how capable european is to check raise you know some sort of combo and put a lot of pressure on a hand like nine ten, especially with the way that the chips are right and you can see all this checking back there he is. now it has now bitten sir watts in the butt but uh european might have just gotten to this river anyway so has lost the minimum a flaming barry meaning samuel vuzden with two pair the dead man's hand, aces and eights. Ass on the river. Over bet. And if Mike Watson makes this hero call, it will be incorrect. It is a straighty, flushy board, and he has a pair of nines. Yeah, this is a pretty sick little over bet, but Sir Watts is not going to fall for it. Nope. Not today, Samuel. Vusden raising the button here. So a reminder that we watched Samuel Vusden playing in the main event last night. We're watching him play the super high roller this evening. And we had that update from Howard Swains just over half an hour ago where he revealed that European was playing another event last night. The Sunday cooldown, winning his first title of 2023. His fourth overall scoop title. And right now, of course, to be another double champion this series. If he can close out this super high roll-up. Oh, nice. hello. Check raise. Just wants to clear out the 
really it's, it's almost like an opportunity clear out just like clear out the opportunity for european to bluff later i have a yeah. very minimal showdown event hand with ace high on queen 10 x i have the backdoor heart in case i start picking up more equity you know why am i going to call here and let the turn be a nine and samuel bet some huge amount because now he's turned up bottom gutter i mean this is the kind of these are the kind of moves you have to make when you're playing against someone as as skilled as european yeah yeah. Yunnan, where sketches are, who's on top of the scoop leaderboard. Should have been here half an hour ago. You get your daily update from Howard Swains, our scoop correspondent. But dun, 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 for your benefits, it is the player foul first from Thailand, who currently sits in the number one position on the overall player of the series leaderboard meanwhile stat has got another update from the 10k main event a reminder guys that with both the 25k super high roller and the 10k main event we're following these on a 30 minute delay so if you've got the lobbies open in real time please don't share any spoilers in the chat let's try and enjoy the experience from the perspective of 30 minutes ago uh five bust outs in the last 20 minutes or so dimitar danchev gone dominic nitscher gone 25 players remaining that was a really cool bet with the deuces from Sir Watts. Cleared out 40% of equity because that hand was just queen high and a six high flush draw, um, which could be drawing close to dead, but was really, really live against the, the non-diamond deuces of Sir Watts. I reduces here, one, one 1990 ass on Twitch. Who is European? And Craig CU is able to respond. I'm European. I'm in the UK. I would like to yeah. point out I made that joke yesterday and then got challenged oh, nice. on it when someone tried to tell me that the UK is no longer in Europe, clearly misunderstanding oh, how, how geography Here works. Here we are. This does feel like a bit of a Spartacus situation if anyone asks who European is, so maybe just do your own research or everyone's going to make the same joke. I'm I mean, glad I you call were first him by his James. real name. I call him by his real name pretty much every time he's in a hand. Mm-hmm. Well, Paradeus is still good. Mike Watson left with a straight draw. And there's a million ahead of Mike Watson now. Plus, has... Nom, nom. Nom, nom. The snowman's. Ooh, I nailed that nom, nom. Queen Jack of Diamonds for Mike Watson raises to 110,000. Blinds going up inside of 10 minutes. A6 for Bruno Faultman. Don't do it, Bruno. Wow, he listened. And now Samuel Vuzden with 9 4 offsuit. Does not defend the big blind. Raise and take it for Sir Watts. Blind v blind, we go to the flop and Jack Ten High still ahead right now. Does anyone know if Lex entered the 25k? I don't think he did. I know that he teased the prospect, but no. 
Interestingly, Sam bats. didn't play the 25k either. I think Sam Shit had other plans. Crazy. I think Sam is out being social last night and tonight. But he's going to be on what? the stream tomorrow. We'll have Sam for the final table. Um, this hand is playing unconventionally, Griffin. Can you explain what's going on? I mean, this is just the two biggest guys at the poker gym, you know, trying to lift more weight than the other. This is pretty amazing. I mean, this is a, a bet from Sir Watts followed by a check raise from European who has, you know, some good turn cards. If there's a, a, a call, can fold out hands like Jack-10. And Sir Watts, without even a diamond in his hand, elects to call and now rivers a Jack, which... Samuel Vuzin's going to think is good. I mean, this is just high-level stuff that I... It's hard for me to even quantify. I mean, when was the last time any of us have check-raised... Have been check-raised and called with Jack High? No pair, no backdoor diamond. I mean, this is how I play poker, Griffin. I mean, I clearly have learned from the best. Normally, and it's a now, misclick in my case. This overbet, I mean, you have to find a call here. Look at this amazing hand. He does. Hand. And the chip lead switches once again, and it's Mike Watson back in number one position. <laughs> oh, wow. These guys. These guys. Oh, thank you, Vlog, for the inside info. Lex wants to register the 25k if it overlaid by more than 100k. He was checking it until late reg ended. In the last seconds, it filled up to break the guarantee. Ah, oh, so he wanted some of that added value, did he? Un value hunting. Unlucky Lexington. Top pair for Bruno Faultman. Dance just checking this down, hoping that European is going to find a piece at some point and then he can get some value from the ace. Or just to get your opponent to start bluffing. European way high up in his range here with queen high, though. It's going to be good enough at the time that European's not going to bluff. Now Dant will almost surely go for a value bet and sometimes is high. going to actually get a call from the queen high. You're in European shoes, you're thinking, okay, if Great Dant had like an air type hand, wouldn't he have bet at some point during this hand? And that's why European makes the very good queen high fold. Yeah, yeah. And these three stacks are getting closer and closer together. Yeah. No player with an overwhelming chip lead. Both European and Sir Watts. We're just shy of 4 million, and Great Dan closing in on the 3 million mark. Sixes versus King 8, and 6 is still good post flop. Yes, Arcadia, they can make a deal. There is an option. The players can tick a box. We don't see it because obviously we're just observing the table. But they can tick a box. If all three of them tick that deal box, play will be halted and they'll be given the options. Two options, basically. To do an ICM chop or an even chop. They very rarely do the latter. If they all agree to the ICM numbers, they tick agree. If one of them doesn't agree, we play on. Simple as that. European going to be feel pretty comfortable calling these sixes in this scenario. Jobster says, what's the difference between the chops? Well, an even chop would basically mean that all of the remaining prize money, so you take the prize money for first, second, and third, for example, and add it together, and they'd split it evenly. It's not taking into account who has what in terms of chips. 
ICM is closer to chip shot, but it is an algorithm that factors in the fact that the chip leader shouldn't get as much as a straight chip chop, and the shorter stack should get a little bit more. It's a theory. Wayseal's theorem, later rebranded ICM. Very cheeky value bet with the sixes here. Yes, Tidy, they are the only two options. That is how deal-making is handled, and I am advised by people who've been in that situation that there's no negotiations, there's no sliding bars around or trying to get an extra 5K, or it's you to either agree to take a, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 an even chop, or you opt to take ICM, or you say no deal. That's it. Those are the choices available to you. Blinds up, 30-60. <laughs> Aces for European. This is what it's all about. And I think a King Nine would want to play this is a check call, but I think King Eight is going to get folded sometimes. It's going to be right on the line, I think, for Great Dant. As far as his limp call range, this feels probably a bit too strong, and it is going to be played as a call. Important not to just look at what European has. We have the benefit of seeing those cards, of course, but yeah. they don't. So you don't want to just be folding every King-8 that you limp when your opponent's going to be raising some bluffs, some Ace-10s and the like that you're going to be very live against. Um, Ragav99, I'm sorry you're not enjoying this, but your take is somewhat subjective. I'm sure some people are enjoying this three-handed action and are actually quite impressed by some of the moves we're making from these three very accomplished players. We will switch to the 10K. It's not at the nine-handed table yet, by the way. The 10K is still at 24 players, so they're playing down to nine today. But we will follow them play down to the final later on, but we're going to see this conclude first. And... You say there's no action. Look at this. King 8 getting frisky against aces. Yeah, and you're, you might be asking yourself, why is Great Dent doing this? I think that he's trying to target those bluff um, isos from European. You know, European might just raise 8 do suited or something from the big blind um, and then have to fold after C betting here. But again, then European just finds a click. There we go. So Samuel Vuzden pulls ahead of everyone else now. Four and a half million. Three and a half million for Mike Watson. And 2.2 .2 million for Bruno Voltman, who is the shortest stack of the three remaining players. Ice of Force says, Mike Watson plays online? Um, yes. And he has won a total of $6.4 million playing on PokerStars and has seven scoop titles across six different variants. So, yes, he's had some success online. Decent three-handed hand to continue with. This Jack six suited. The question is, is it going to be a raise or a call. I think call makes a lot more sense, and that's what Great Dent does. Flopping decently equity-wise, you can see now 40, almost 
Big boy bet. And nice check race from Great Dent. There we go again. Wow. I mean, it's remarkable. He, he's putting in 30% of his stack with this raise. Would the intention be to just fold? I guess so. But maybe seeing that big sizing as sometimes what it is, just a bluff. So I've got updates from the 10K main event and the 1K main event, Griffin. New chip leaders in both tournaments. So in the high, which we will be following later on today, assuming that the super high roller doesn't go in front of the five hours, Laszlo Butash, Omaha for rolls, just eliminated Vlad Dari to move up to 18 million chips. 6 million clear of any extras. So Whoa. Laszlo Butash, now chip leader in the main, in the 10K main. And in the medium main event, Ramon Kalilas has chipped up and now sits in first place with 43 wow, players remaining. So Ramon making a deep run in the medium, in the 1K, and is chip leader with 43 players remaining. So there's a chance we might be following him later. Exciting. We will follow his progress on a Monday, on a Tuesday, following Ramon. Following Ramon. So still two pair, aces and eights again. The dead man's hand for Mike Watson. Yeah, and check this down here. Very, very underrepped is Sir Watts here with this dead man two pair. And this minimum bet on the river here is sort of a block value bet from European. I have to imagine it's going to get raised. And then Samuel Vuzin's going to have a decision to make. Just a nine. But not outside the realm of possibility that we see a call. I mean, with the line of Sir Watts be playing it so passively. Really tricky play. I mean, these guys are battling. This is like... Feels like N Nadal Federer stuff right now. I mean, and these two are amazing. And they're going to play a pot together. Blind v. Blind. And... Every time they get into it, Bruno Voltman's like, yeah, do, do it, fine. I'll, I'll happily guarantee myself a quarter of a million dollars by letting you n knock each other out. A slightly unconventional request from one of our viewers. Mona says, can I join the table for $400? I will give you 80% of my winnings. No, we will not let you buy into a $25,000 entry whoa, tournament whoa, whoa, for $400. Whoa, whoa. Several let hours, if not a complete day, after late registration is closed and when they're already well into the money. But thank you for your question. Not even considering it. See, this is why I said, I mean, I guess playing hardball, he's up, James, he's up to 90%. I'm just saying. I mean, a lot of you empty like seats on that table, players? James. I'm just saying. Would you, like, there's a, would you, there's guys, a would lot you mind? of empty seats at that table. Would We're you talking mind if we, 90%, we can cut it up 45, 45. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll have to, first of all, we're letting a player in for like, what is $400 of 25k? A, a, a small percentage of the buy-in, and you're going to have to give up some equity from first, second, and third to guarantee them a return, 90% of which, to be clear, I'm going to get. No one else. So you're, you're kind of implying you do have the power to do this. No. <laughs> 
can it be done, James? This I'm dealing with a false hypothetical. <laughs> I'm dealing with one of the most stupid false hypotheticals that has ever, you're, you're Ethan ever. Hunt with Poker Stars. <laughs> Imagine the hoops you would need to jump through. The emails. <laughs> Listen, you guys, I got a real sweet deal from this guy. Can you imagine, like, you see me kind of go quiet in the background, kind of gets on the phone. It's like, oh, that's and then, like, 30 seconds later, Mona appears at the table. And the other player's like, what happened? Oh, God, Hartigan's made it happen again. He's bought someone in for $400, and now he's going to get 90% of our action. <laughs> and he just has a starting stack, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, that'd be a good chip in a chair story. That day, James went off the rails and gave, gave a guy a suit to the 25k with three people left. <laughs> uh oh. Sir Watts in trouble. River yeah. four. Great dance sizing it out right now. And Sir Watts got to be like, ugh. Ugh. You come to my river, you, you come to my river and you raise me. It is a straighty, flushy paired board. And not really a board where a nine has much value. Yeah, but an excellent fold because, you know, you would have expected to see a different line taking taken with a flush just looks like river trips there so great fold yeah is starting stack even an ante at this point yeah starting stack was 250,000 so you'd have, what, four big blinds if you bought in now? Four bigs for $400 is pretty good. Not going to happen. And look at this. Oof. Samuel Vuzden flopping top pair and the flush draw. Bruno Voltman with a pair of sixes. Has the ace of hearts. Yeah, all things considered, a pretty great flop for, for both players, at least where they're si from, from, from where they're sitting. Great Dan thinking, yeah, this is, this is pretty nice as a limp call. And there is the flush for Vuzden. The redraw to the nut flush for Bruno Volkman. Yeah, and Bruno not going to be going anywhere now that he is drawing to the nuts, as well as thinking that can probably improve with an ace or a six might even be good with just the six sometimes we of course can see that's not the case queen ten of hearts a massive second nut flush for european and look at that little bet kind of just like come on stick around i'm not I'm not trying to scare you off well you got something like you got a little heart in your hand you want to continue Tebla on Twitch asking the really important questions, James. Can you rotate the table so that European's avatar is yelling at his chips again? I think that's I was seeing that. I didn't I don't like where we put European yelling at the payouts. Uh, yeah. I think I feel like he's yelling at at the at final table. Like he's pumped that he's on the final table, you know? Final table! Final table! <laughs> Okay, no, that is a sizable value bet, and this would be a hero call gone wrong if Great Dant was a call. The irony is, Trip Queens are beating a pair of sixes, let alone the flush. Yeah, yeah and this isn't easy for, 
Great Dent. You're only beating those pure bluffs that find themselves at the river. Maybe something like 8-9 with a heart. Maybe 9-10. 10-8. Are these the kind of hands that are going to ISO pre-flop? Those are probably going to work more into the check back range. So, but oh. Great Dent in the European Oh, God. She's... And oh, that... God. Yeah, please, someone. Can... Oh, no is taking us to the break and that means there is now some separation between the three players european 5.3 million so what's 3.5 million great dance 1.6 million so bruno voltman is now on the short side coming back from break still at the 30k 60k blind level returning to the action inside of five minutes as joe stapleton rejoins us on stream to remind everyone that we are going to pick up the action in the main event. It's the same every time, Joe, when you've got two things taking place at the same time, people disappointed that they're watching one rather than the other. And the reality is we will get to the main event. You're not going to miss the final table. That's not till tomorrow. That being said, they're already down to 21. So they started with 40, and in the space of an hour and 25 minutes, nearly half the field has gone. I imagine it will slow down, but the way this three-handed action is going... I'm going to say again, there is the possibility that the Super High Roller could go the distance, and maybe, Joe, we don't get any main event coverage today. Yeah, there's no guarantees in... Well, technically, there are guarantees in Scoop. There's lots. There's hundreds of millions of guarantees. Um, but there's no guarantee as to when things are going to end, right? We don't know yeah. how long things are going to take. We had multiple final tables over the last couple of weeks. Take two hours, two and a half yeah. hours. We thought six-handed that this would wrap up relatively quickly but now we've got three really good players with three relatively even well it looks like there's some distance between them now but it could get even again we just don't know i do think the main event probably is going to slow down i don't think we'll miss it entirely but it might be close yeah and just to highlight griffin when we talk about like what is possible there are enough chips in play in this super high roller if the stacks remain relatively even for it to last five to five and a half hours in total. So it started at six o'clock local time in the UK. So it could go to like 11, 11.30. We could have another four hours of action in this thing. I mean, it's, you know, it's within the realm of possibility, but we have learned that, you know, these things do tend to take some turns. We just saw that last pot, Great Dent, um, is going to be, you know, close to the danger zone in third. True. And the way that European and Sir Watts are playing, the way that it's this sort of clash of, of titans, I mean, they are really going after each other. We've been seeing check raises with Jack High, called by a better Jack High. I mean, these two players are prepared to really go after each other. So if we do see that become heads up relatively soon, I don't think that it will take as long as, as we think. I agree. It's an improbable situation, but it is possible. Uh, as far as the main event is concerned, I referenced the fact that they are down to 21 players. So down to three tables right now. I'm going to throw some names at you guys. Players who I'm sure you recognize. We established the Omaha for roles. Laszlo Butash has taken the chip lead in the 10K main event. Has 18 million right now. Any extras, the second biggest stack has 11 million. Who else is still in? Stumped is in the top five. Stumped still wow. going strong. What is love? That is Enrico Komoski inside the top 10 right now. So Watts and European, Mike Watson and Samuel Vuzden, who are watching at the final table of the 25K, both still in contention, both with reasonable stacks in the 10K. The future of me, that's Alex Kulev, who was the super high roller winner in Monte Carlo. Welcome Inferno. This is the reigning Scoop main event champion. This is the player who took it down last year. Welcome Inferno, 13th in chips. I mean, we have had a back-to-back -back champion in the Scoop main event. Tankanza won it in consecutive years. Can Welcome Inferno follow in their footsteps? Dinge Brinker, Ben CB, that's Ben Roller. Uh, Hello Totti, a scoop reg. All still in. So much talent, but that's only to be expected when you consider it's a 10K. And of course, what I'm really excited about is when we get to tomorrow, or maybe the late stages of today as they play down to nine, what we're looking for, Joe, are those satellite stories, right? We'll find out if any of these players, maybe some of the names we don't know, have won their way into this 10K for as little as 109 bucks. 
Yeah, I mean, look, there. Uh, I think Welcome Inferno is a great story, and I like the fact that we haven't heard of Stump Fed ever until this year. And Correct. so many final tables, so many deep runs. I'm excited for that one to go for, go far as well. Well, we do have the 25K to resolve before that. I will leave you for the next 55 minutes in the company of Joseph and Griffin. All right, my babies. Threads Up Poker continues. What are the blinds? That is the question right now. They are 35,000, 70,000. Everybody's... Oh, that's the next one. Sorry, right now they're 30, 60. It wasn't really Everyone's a question. I mean, we saw them on the... <laughs> it's okay. A little, a little rusty out the gate, Joe, but listen, we have two pairs here, 25 big blinds effective. I'm thinking this might play as a... As a little limp, call the shove. It's a lot of chips, but I think Great Dan's gonna shove. Wow, no Checks shove back. yet. You love to see it. Great Dan probably gonna live to see another day unless it comes 9 3. <laughs> trip trip crabby turn crab people crab people turning sets talk like pe no one okay fine sir so what's probably not loving this anyway I think Sir, Sir Watts feels not super comfortable, but very underrepped. You know, Great Dent might just turn something like 5-6, five, 5-7 five, into um, a bluff here on the turn. This has been checked pre-flop. Like, nobody has revealed the strength of their pre-flop um, hand. This is going to be kind of a weird spot for Sir Watts, to be honest, because... This could have been a big bet on the turn with a jack by Great Dent looking for value because a queen would have been heard from on the first two streets. But a jack would never bet the two to 500 that we're going to see on this river. So then it becomes a question of, okay, is this a pure bluff? Is this jack three? Is this deuce five? And look, we can see two now. Two to 500, yikes. Right. You know, hard to predict those those three X over bets. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I think your point stands, though. Oh, look at this and this irony here. Pocket threes for Mike Watson. It's crab season. Crab people. Crab people. Crab people. Walk like crabs. Walk like talk crabs. like people. Talk like crab people. <laughs> you can always count on Griffin. It only took him. It only took him. One, one, he heard it once. Second time, he is on board. Pair of jacks again against pocket. No, sorry, not again. Pair of jacks against pocket threes. We were hypothesizing the the jack last time. Mike's gonna fire with an under. Excuse me. Sorry, just someone wrote one out of ten, and I don't know what they're referring to, but they're they're banned. Arcadia is asking where the graphic is for the crabs since we have for snowmen. I, I will do a light petition for like dancing crabs, especially since Joe has this song thing. Um, I think, but look, I think the crab worked really hard on these graphics. Should, it has to, yeah. Go I ahead. think the crab animation should just be uh, Griffin sc scratching his crotch a little bit. I mean, I do that all stream anyway. That's why you never see my hands. Right, that's what I mean. <laughs> It's just a simple Oof. move from the dancing to just this. Yeah, yeah. No, the crap Sir people Watts. bit is Oof. from South Park. Yeah, Watson firing again, really. Trying to muscle out this jack. What? You think I'm just a European? I ain't going to fold this. And the jack says, nay, I will be calling. I will be seeing the river, which is the old... Speaking of things on fire. Itchy. Did you hear about my did you hear about my Barry Greenstein joke in the last level, Joe? I did not. You would 
Yeah, you you would have liked it. It's good. Okay. I'm, you could James, just do the joke again. Sure. I'll do, yeah, I'll do that. I love repeating yeah. jokes. So James was talking yeah. about how you had an experience as the massive bet of a million chips. I'll One get into it after this. Million. Yeah, that's the great thing about uh, about Barry is that sometimes he gives you an out. He gives you a way out of the hand. And Sir Watts, now Queen Ten has been filled up, which is, you know, one of the hands he would be raising preflop and betting twice. Queen Nine though, isn't anything. Seven eight of spades is nothing. Pocket threes is nothing, effectively. So there are a lot of bluffs. You know, what if Sir Watts has ten seven of spades? How's he playing this hand? What if he has ten seven of clubs? Well, but Sir Watts did manage to bluff out the better hand. So good, these guys. And is, yeah, is back up to almost four million. That would have been a huge momentum shift if European had somehow found the call there. King ten of spades for European. Seven deuce, the hammer for the mad dog. <laughs> I used to do the barking for the Merce dog, but now that Jason Merce here doesn't really play anymore, maybe I could just switch that gag over to the mad dog. Eight, yeah, seven, Mercer's, four, uh, so Mercer's too busy on Twitter <laughs> being a bad dog. <laughs> Pocket fives for great debt. <laughs> Ooh, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we have more Sir than Watts. one person asking about what the Barry Greenstein joke was. I just feel like it's not going to be as good when you retell it. But he was telling the story of you staying in in uh, in Barry Greenstein's house, crashing on his couch, right? And uh, I think were... I had a bedroom, but yeah, I, I was. But I was. Oh, like whatever. A, okay. Like a, a, a ward, uh, his ward. For he might have embellished yeah. it a bit for the sake of you know the story. Sure. I mean, I was definitely, like, that... just camping out at his house, so yes. Yes, yes, I understand, yeah. And then uh, he said that at one point that, that uh, in his bathrobe that he may have exposed himself to you. And then I asked, uh, was by it By accident, a... but yes. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. Let's be clear, <laughs> by accident. These things happen. And then I asked, I asked if it was a front exposure or a back, ex uh, back exposure, and he said, oh, it was front. And I go, oh, so it wasn't an ass on the river. Pretty good. Pretty good. But if I could give you a note, it would be I would just have gone into it and say, oh, James told me the story about how Barry's robe accidentally felt open. At least he didn't give you ass on the river. Um, you know, you could have just done it without saying I'm telling you a joke now. Anyway, okay, can we... that's it. Small note. Anyways, Small listen, note. I I wish we're, we hadn't distracted from the poker because this is actually a significant pot here. Sir Watts Go. has been bluffing here with these this open-ended straight draw. Yeah, Dr. Wank and P. I wish I hadn't read your name. I'm sorry, I should have. Anyways, there another is a shovel massive, in the river. <laughs> massive river bluff from Sir Watts. And Great Dent. The hearts have come in. You're losing to the six. You're losing to the nine. You're beating hands like seven, eight, and ten, eight, and ten, seven, and missed spades, and, you know, all those good hands. Can I ask? Four, five has can gotten I ask there. You this, Griffin? Hmm. Wow, Great Dent makes the call, gets a double up. And flip-flops positions with Mike Watson. Great Dent now second in chips. Yeah, no, that's a, definitely a hero call. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me about the existence of that ace-10 suited for Sir Watts. Back to that hand, Griffin. I had, I had a question I wanted to ask, while, but unfortunately Great Dent came to the decision yeah, quickly. give us a second to, like, um, commentate. I mean, you have to assume that we're telling jokes for, like, the first two and a half streets. <laughs> give us a second to catch we, up. I like mean, Griffin. Anyway, well, you back to my question, question which is... Go ahead. Are you ever, when you make that call, Griffin, are you ever um, going to lose to a bluff that's beating you? Or no, is that not a possibility? Are your sixes going to beat all the bluffs? Fives. And no, it's never possible in that spot. Okay. In the, okay, never say never. Say never. 
again. It's rare but that like, you're going to be up against a random nine that just makes that play on the river. But why would the random nine think that that's a, like a bluff? What are you trying I'm, to? That's bluff what I'm asking. That's why nine. I'm asking you the question. And I'm and you I'm answering it why. with a, I'm answering it with a question. Right. This is like a blind on blind limped pot situation. So we're dealing with very wide ranges. No one has established or tried to establish that they have a very strong hand, you know. Uh, uh, so there's no based on the, the the widety of the ranges. You never have a nine there and are thinking that you can maybe rep a six or a flush and you're trying to bluff out an overpair because overpairs don't exist in great dance range checking back preflop. Do you know what I mean? OK. Now, there are some situations, early mid stages of a tournament, where based on the action, you might find yourself with, you know, a mid or top pair that, and you pretty much deduce that your opponent has like an over pair and that you're not beating that hand. And that's maybe where you could find yourself turning these hands into bluffs by representing stronger hands if you think you can fold out these bigger hands. I think that, you know, the easy part there, easy part, the easier part is coming to the <laughs> determination that, that your opponent is polarized. Obvious. Boom. Right there. I would struggle with, hey, they're polarized, but am I still going to lose <laughs> with pocket sixes? Fives. Um, okay. We, sure. I'm, I'm happy we were able to go through that, but actually, Sir Watts just battled back. Now we're pretty much even across the board almost. Uh, after European blasted off there with the Queen 3, uh, Sir Watts back up to 3 million. So we have stacks of 50 blinds, almost 60 blinds, and about 75 blinds for European. All very healthy. Healthy, healthy. And stumped with uh, about 40 big blinds, yes. <laughs> That's a great reference, <laughs> Who <remembered> Zeddy. That? <laughs> Zeddy on Twitch. Top pair on the turn here for Sir Watts. Ron Rebuy wants to know what the buy-in of this tournament is. I don't really remember if there was maybe information somewhere on the screen you're looking at. If you just squint real hard, maybe it'll be be around there. Nice turn here for Sir Watts. Johnny be good. Ace on the river. Here you go. See now you now you can do the story. Uh one of the first gags I ever did for uh some poker funny stuff was poker player Valentine's that I made up. And Barry said, Hey baby, let me get a little bit of that ace on the river. <laughs> nice. Sorry, ass on the river. <laughs> I, I thought ace was funnier. <laughs> yeah, that's why I covered my bases with both of them. Cover your aces? Sir, Sir Watts now with a, uh, a pot-sized second pair bet. And Pretty nice. And do not hero call. Do not call this bet, for you will lose with the dues. European opening with Queen Jack. Great dance with the Back to the Future hand. <laughs> Mishug asks, what do you call a donkey in a kayak? <laughs> uh, Does it have anything to do with this hand? No, think about it. Come on. What do you call a donkey and a kayak? I, I, I get that it's a reference to what we've been talking about. There's only so many times I can say on the river without getting in trouble, so. Okay. Fair enough. And I've hit it. <laughs> it's, it's two. It's two? It's like in PG-13 thir the 13 movies, you get one F-bomb. F and here one we get two A-bombs. Uh, legit question here from Leonard on YouTube who says, what would you say is the rec to reg ratio in these types of tournaments? 10 K plus online. Yeah. Um, 
it depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about a high roller, it's different than if we we're talking about a main event. A main event is going to have this. a lot Let's more. Let's do this tournament. Just this 25K? Yeah, I would here. say it's Ooh. like 90% to 10% or something. That would be my that would be my guess. I don't know. I would I guess mean, look, even we had, higher. Even higher. Like, like we had 95, forty-two but... entries. We had forty-two entries, and nearly ten percent of those entries was Sir Watts and his clones, right? So, <laughs> I mean, three of these forty-two players were already Sir Watts, and then you think of the other re regs that re-entered. There's not a lot of amateurs in this thing. There might be a couple of you know. Blastoids that want to have a good time and fire it off and they can afford it and they love the action. But when the field size is this small as well, it's going to be mostly just the best players of the, of, the, of the world thinking they're slightly better or slightly luckier than the others and they'll they'll go for it. Leonard now follows up, says, I'm also interested in your take on offline, if you don't mind. We call it offline poker. That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit more recreationals in in the live poker scene. It's a little bit more fun for those folks to get on a plane, go hobnob, socialize with the best players in the world. You get a couple of more recreational players in a twenty-five k. I'm really looking forward to uh, late late August, Joe, when we go to. Offline Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> EPT offline, we call it, yeah. Yes, yeah. EPT offline championship. Mike Watts is going to limp in with Ace Deuce. Joe, would we see you in Vegas, WSOP as well? That's a good question. I would love to see you, Joe. We see a lot of each other. Oh, what is what is your schedule? You got time to swing by LA for a little bit? Come hang out at the house? That's actually a, a really lovely offer that I'm going to have to consider. I mean, why not? I'm going to go c come for the main. Maybe I'll pop in, um, say hi. After I main catch the main, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to quit. And You're go playing back to the LA main. That's right. <laughs> Sir yeah, Watts coming great. in for a pre-flop three bet after Great Dant got a little out of line here with the three four. This plan working out exactly the way Watts has predicted. It seems. Yeah, nice little. This is a nice candidate for the limp raise because when your opponent is just mucking about with a hand like this, you can just take it down with your blocker. So. Joe, are you driving down from L.A., or are you going to fly, you think? Well, I have a gig in South Bend, Indiana, June 30th and July 1st, so I'll probably fly straight from Indiana to Vegas and play, like, a couple of things before trip four. Speaking of four, a couple of things before the main, play some small events, and I'm planning on playing day 1D on July 6th, which I think the entire world is going to play that day, so... I'll probably fly to Vegas on like the set. Oh, though, if you, I would throw a July Fourth party just for you if you wanted to come to LA for the Fourth of July. But are you trying to go to Big Hoonies party? Oh, I've never been to a big, one of Big Hoonies parties, but I, I, I would like to. Uh, it's yeah. a little too intense, maybe for me at my age, but yeah. I mean, I had a great time with them. The only, the only night that I, I, I did any drinking in the Bahamas, and I was was hanging out with Big Hoonie. Those guys are. Something else, so yeah, might have to pass on that. Queens, Sir Watts, and eight ten is Joe married? Hand, yes, He's married to James Hardigan at work wife. <laughs> my work wife, James Hardigan. That's right, my babies. I was gonna say eight ten suited is a hand that uh, is gonna be difficult to release pre flop. So Sir Watts should get a couple of chips. Even if this hand ends prematurely. A boom, seven hundred thousand. A boom. Chert on YouTube is asking Stapes, are you gonna sell any action for the main event? I am. 
I have a feeling it's. I'm going to open it up to friends and family first. I have a feeling it's going to sell out pretty quickly just with friends and family. What a flop for European. Ooh, Two scare and... cards for the Queens. An eight to spades. And if Sir Watts shows any weakness in this pot, European might be able to find a way to take it away from uh, Mike, even in the case of European not improving to either two pair trips or a flush. I mean, this is such a trivial Ooh. bet size, and European has latched on to that notion. And beautiful work here from European. These exact kind of hands are now totally thrown in the clink. Ba boom! Big chip lead now for European. Up to 4.6 million. Mike's still the shortest with 2.5. On YouTube, someone asked, how do you know if those guys are not cheating and watching the stream? They've all promised not to. Yeah, it's an honor system here at PokerStars. We really pride ourselves in all always, you know, trusting the player to do what's responsible. But thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. Also, um, Griffin here, Michael Fermani has decided to answer Leonard and says the field is probably 90 to 95 percent pros in this buy-in range. Is that is that not exactly what we said? What did you say, Griffin? I said 90 and then you said probably more like 95, which would. So what, I don't, what are you doing, Michael? Why don't you let us or you let us answer the questions from Leonard? And why don't you continue filling out surveys online? For a dollar. Wait, you can do get paid for filling out surveys? Yeah, I know. I get I get emails every day about that. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a time in my life when I definitely was filling out surveys for a dollar. Top pair for Mike Watson. Gut shot for great Dant. Yeah, huge advantage. Look at those percentages, ladies and gentlemen. 93.2% for Sir Watts, and the remaining 6.8% for Great Dent needs to hit a 5, but guess what? Sir Watts has a 5 in his hand. So the likelihood of a 5 coming is so unlikely. We're talking 6.8%. There's no way... That... <laughs> Griffin, you're the best. Five on the river, two pair for Sir Watts. A straight, a one, two, three, four, five, six straight for Great Dant. Griffin, that was the best joke you've ever made. Look at chat's going bananas. They love it. You're a comedic genius. <laughs> you are fantastic. <laughs> and the shove comes in. Sir Watts so high up in his range at this two pair. Mike Watts makes the call. Not going to not going to disrespect him with the hero fail emoji because what are you going to do there? No. Ace is up. Has to do it. Sir Watts slightly cooler there. Finishes this tournament in third place for $169,000. We are now heads up. It's a lot of cheddar. Mike Watson one of the world's best. Been a real pleasure watching him over the last couple of months. Mike Watts is still alive, by the way, in the 10K main event as well. That is still at 21 players remaining. We're down to the final two here. Top pair for European. They're playing for a difference of $115,000. And this is the first time we've really seen Great Dent as the chip lead at all on this final table, let alone three-handed. So you can just see how things can shift and change. And it's so great to see an amateur like Great Dant go so far. 
That's sarcasm, by the way. Someone earlier decided to say Great Dan wasn't a pro, but, uh, yeah. European blasting away with this top pair. Gets the fold. There's the GLGL from Great Dant. I hope that wasn't intended for Mike Watson because he's long gone, pal. Two pretty playable heads up hands here in Ace 10 and 4 5 suited. I have been seeing a lot of pre flop, at, plop, bleh, pre flop activity from Great Dant. A lot of isolating with poor hands, some pretty interesting three bets. So I think this is definitely one we're going to expect to see Great Dant putting the three bet range, and this is a bad flop for Dant. Just a very easy breezy top pair here for European. Custom on YouTube asked, is this real money or like WSOP? Um, yes. Thank you for your question. And, and a very interesting, in. yeah. Look at this check from Great Dent. You'd think as the aggressor, as the three better, you're going to be C betting the ace high boards a good percentage of the time. But Dent may be just either smelling something or intending to check raise and does sniff wow. it out. <laughs> oh, this These guys are good. Oh. Oh. Great Dant with King at nine, Queen ten for European. Blinds did go up a few minutes ago. We're at that 70k big blind level. Ooh, fair fight. Look at that. Top pair for European. Big ol' flush draw for Great Dant. Henares says, hitting every flop. Yeah, well, the flop is probably not going to be the only consequential part of this hand. Yeah, although European does have about an 8% edge here, there are a lot of turn cards where he's drawing dead. Four of hearts does keep this hand from having anyone drawing dead. And Great Dant is going to semi-bluff. 555,000 yeah. into 761. This is a big, big bet. And I don't think this bet's going to get very many folds. A boom! Ba bang A blue raspberry flush for Great Dant. European, sadly, still has top pair, is going to be beating a lot of the non-diamond holdings. And great damp with about a 2 to 1 stack to pot ratio. Bets half pot. Very difficult for v European to call here. Yeah. V6 Eddie says, easy fold. Which I believe that they know this, Consider. Ooh, oh, wow! Ooh. European Not does find the fold. call there. And that is going to be a momentum shift for sure. Great Dant now with nearly a 2-1 to one lead. You can do the, the, the hero fail thing, I think. That, that really it's worth it. The moment passed, I think. Yeah. 
But yes, it was. It would have I been just, appropriate. I was in the middle of. I don't know. I just, saying. Um, I don't think it's that easy of a fold, uh, as as showcased there by European. I know, but it's just. It's like. Whenever I see her collapse, I always want to. I want to see her again to make sure she's okay. But then she collapses again, so it's this. It's this cycle, for me. But it's it's fine. Ten on the turn. Incredibly unlucky turn of events here for European. How about yes. one more? Trip tens. One ten was good. Two tens is better. And Great Dan can almost bet whatever he wants. <laughs> wow, triple God, the I'm is good. That, I guess that counts as whatever he wants. Yeah. Because it has just shown no interest in this pot. So it's just repping such a thin range with this bit. Look, it works. Incredible. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, she's... She's not gonna get up from that one. That was she just that bad. She, I promise she will be. She's fine. Ugh. Ace eight versus ace eight. Queen nine seven two spades. Great dance with a spade. Ah a spade. Zuh. Oh, Ragav asks, why did he call 3x pot? Because he thought he had the best hand. Thank you for your question. For your question. All right, Johnny Boat with a real comment here. If it's air, why make it as big as 3x pot? Wouldn't 2x suffice if it was really a bluff? I mean, harder to call 3x than 2x. Maybe it looks... Bluffier. Listen, I, it's it's hard for me to really. There's so much intricate logical. stuff going on between these these kinds of players, um, but I think that's it. It does connect with what I said, where you know, Great Dent can kind of bet whatever he wants because he's repping such a thin range. He's only really representing a 10 with the action preflop. He's never going to have sixes or tens. Or pardon me, sixes. Well, yeah, tens. Any of the other like boats, like Jack's full because of the action. So he's repping so thin. If European has a great bluff catcher, like a pair that isn't Jack's or tens, you know, just bet the farm. And the farm got paid off. And great Dant, Bruno Volkman. Betting the semi bluff here, the gut shot. Samuel Vuzden makes the call with King High, which is the best hand. Will European get to showdown with the best hand? Great comment here from Sathar123. European is capped. And Great Dan knows that, and European knows that. He knows that he's capped, and he's polarized to T or nothing, so he can slam dunk 3x. It does seem pretty well thought out. I read that as, like, Tim Robinson in celebration of season three of I Think You Should Leave. On Netflix now! Dant keeping the pedal to the metal. European sitting there with King High thinking, well, I thought this was probably the best hand pre-flop. I thought this was going to be the best hand on the flop a lot of the time. This deuce didn't really change anything, so I'm still good. I call again. I dare you to shove the river. I and double talk dare logically, you. Logically, the river, it, King High would still be good, right? This river shouldn't change King High being and, the best hand. And you got to be a little scared if you're Great Dant because... You probably think your opponent has a nine or a six sometimes here, maybe some ace highs and king highs. So if you don't think your opponent's going to fold a nine, certainly not going to fold an ace, probably not going to fold a six, might not even fold the king. So I think that's a good give up because I don't think European was buying what he was selling. All those straight draws have missed, not just the five eights, but the seven eights, the ten eights, the ten sevens. So good work from European to battle back. Now just at a two to one 
Chip, disadvantage. Yeah, and European um, did get the free showdown there, which obviously is a sigh of relief. Didn't have to hero with King High. Pair of nines for Great Tant. Griffin, you're just as funny as Joe. You two are super fantastic together. Very entertaining chat. Oh, and you're back. Thank he's you gonna delete for your that, comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jack would be an interesting with the Ooh. Ooh. So I don't know if European will fold this hand. We have seen some Jack High floats in uh, less dry board than this. So we do see the call from European with the Queen High. Not an ideal turn card. Be curious to see if Dant gives European a uh, free river. I doubt it. Going to think the nine is still good enough a lot of the time here. But may not be able to size up now. And has mm. decided to check. Yeah. Okay. Okay, European. Here's a free one. Now, do you want to start betting European and see if you can fold out a nine by the river? That is the question. Does nope. not bet deuce of spades. Is your river card. And European only beating something like a 5-6 combo here. Just going to give up. And then the air, of course. And European drops back below the 3 million chip mark. A almost 2.5 to 1 lead now for Great Dant again. Who is getting aggro with the Queen Deuce. And European makes the call. Does get outflopped, but has... Well, didn't need to get outflopped. You know what I'm saying. Great Dan with a pair of deuces. European with lots of equity. Nice check back from Dan. Doesn't want to get check raised by these exact kind of hands that are going to really pressurize bottom pair. So instead, electing to check back, just try to... Get to the river here. I would expect to see Dent call a decent amount of sizings, especially one as small as that. That one. Oh, yeah. That, that bet's a teeny weeny. Yeah, and this is almost a price setting thing by Europeans. Sometimes you're going to get some folds from some air type hands, but also you're just sort of setting what you get have to pay to see that river card with all that equity. European once again facing the prospect of showing down a not very good high card. Yeah, and, and I think this needs to be bluffed, this card, Over, because it does overbet. Yeah. It does fill the four sixes. Um you know, certainly hands like a deuce are gonna it's gonna be very difficult to call an overbet. But a deuce is still beating Something like 4-8 suited, 8-9 off, 6-9 off, all those heart combos. Let's say European has 10-6 of hearts, and that's why we see the call here with the bottom pair. Woo! Another She's great fine. hero call from Great Dant. Maybe Dant means hero call in some other language because Great Dant is putting on a show right now, and God bless Samuel Vuzin for continuing to go for it. Despite getting looked up more often than the meaning of the last two episodes of Barry. I'm kind of glad I zoned out for, for, for that because I'm not caught up and I told you that. Great Dent, the unlikely hero of this final table. I think someone that, you know, when we first started talking about the players, you know, you had a nice little quip about someone calling him an amateur, which is ridiculous because of his $8.7 million in caches. But really, despite having the coolest avatar on the table, actually maybe second to European, screaming at the final table at the bottom there, he was someone that was sort of lost in the shuffle of the Europeans and the Sir Wattses, but has really shown that 
his world-class ability battling against the likes of these incredible players. We haven't seen the big coolers or the big flips for Great Dant that have created this massive, you know, uh, five-to-one chip edge here heads up. Just a lot of really interesting, fun pots and an incredible call there with Queen Deuce to, to, to really almost seal this thing up. And European has yet to learn the error of his ways. Not that it's an error, but uh, he's continuing to bluff despite having very little success at bluffing Great Dant and will have little success on this turn card. Pair of nines now for Dant. Yeah, and this, and this hand almost feels like a callback to a conversation we had earlier about 9-10. I don't know if you remember, Joe, when Sir Watts had the deuce seven of spades limping in and flopping the two pair, and we saw that float with the 9-10. It's because of situations like this where you are just up against five high and 10 high might be good but you can turn a nine or a straight draw and now great dent has european in the gu guillotine here and european over betting the turn this time doesn't get the pair of nines to fold not a super scary card for two nines european hopefully waves the white flag here I don't know if he's going to be able to. Some of the time, Dant will be willing to fold an eight, maybe not a nine. European Dant, all in. Yeah, Dant's calling something pre-flop like queen five of, you know, queen seven of clubs, right? You would hate to lose it showdown to queen high here. So he goes for the all in. But I think Dant is going to put a stamp on this event with a big hero call for the title. And there it Does is. Does, in fact, make the hero call. European is out. Great Dant is the winner. 25K super high roller champion. Three hero calls in the span of 30 minutes. Bruno Volkman walking away with $362,000. European with a not too shabby quarter mill ball. Second ever scoop title for Great Dance. And European, don't cry for me, Europea. Uh, he's doing just fine, I'm pretty sure. Griffin, I know that we had a lot to talk about during those last couple of hands, and I feel like even though all the momentum, even though the, the hero calls and the hero fails all went one particular direction, I feel like it could have gone just as easily gone the other way. Yeah, I mean, anytime someone wins a, a 25K scoop event, oftentimes you're going to be incredibly impressed by the way they, they played. I mean, I was incredibly impressed by pretty much everyone we saw on that final table with huge standouts being, you know, European and Sir Watts for the majority of the final table. And Great Dent was just kind of like hanging in there. It really felt like he was going to be the third place finisher. There was that spot blind on blind where, you know, a couple times he would have something like pocket threes and a shortish stack and was getting limped on. You think, okay, maybe he's just going to shove and try to take this down. Would have been called by pocket nines, for instance. And instead just worked his way, made a lot of um, nice little three bets pre-flop, some nice bluffs, and then really showed his ability and his recognition of how capable of big bluffs these players like European and Sir Watts are, and really started picking off European at the end, and definitely has the upper hand on him right now. All right, congratulations once again to great Dant Bruno Volkman, second ever scoop title winner of this year's super high roller but we are not done yet nope. we have got more action the 10k scoop main event resumes now has already been resumed as far as playing is concerned we are resuming our coverage right now 19 players remaining and we're going to follow this until the final table can't stop won't stop here. baby with the two biggest stacks in the tournament, any extras with 19.1 million and Laszlo Bustas from Hungary, Omaha for rolls with 17 million in chips. And wow, that's a lot compared to the rest of this table. Yeah, I mean, look at, but any extras as well with the 19 million. I mean, these must be, you know, first and second or at least top three on the leaderboard and top a two, brutal right. start 
to this hand for 19 Pistike 93. Um, you know, fluster on fluster at this stack depth, um, about 25 big blinds effective. If a spade comes, 19 Pistike is pretty much all but out. Well, that's, I mean, it's blockers aren't real, so. It's okay, coming. if a spade comes, blockers aren't real. Oh. And this is actually a an absolutely brilliant turn card for um, 19 Pistike 93 because it's the kind of card that Omaha 4 rolls, even though he has the effective nuts, is going to want to definitely barrel because he unblocks. Oh, you hate that, don't you, Joe? All those kings and jacks and tens, so he wants those those cards that that Pistike should have to call, but of course the seven Ooh. high is just going to fold. So um, really nice turn card there, not being a spade and keeping him in the tournament. So when we, when that last tournament was playing its last hand, there were still 21 players left. There are 18 now. So the last few eliminations have been, holy hell, Ben CB, A. Aurelio to get us down to 18. Omaha, four rolls opening this hand. Ace, queen off. And also to harken back to the last tournament, European still alive in this one. Sixth in chips. So after having just finished runner up in the super high roller, the dream still lives on for a big, European victory. Big flip alert coming here. Um, just 21 big blinds for... 19, Pistike 93. Any extras with the Ace King? This is just written in the stars. But what we don't know is the constellation a double up or an extension of the chip lead for any extras. Very cute. And away we go. Ooh, good start. Nine's holding. Oh! Nine's cracked. And that will do it for 19 Pistikes, 93, out in 18th place. That was good for, wow, is that real? $48,000? All right. Pretty so cool. We should have played this, Joe. I know. What the heck? If I want to play, uh, play this, I'm going to have to marry my Canadian girlfriend. Get that. You know Get what I realized, actually, Joe? I've been meaning to bring this up to you. I'm almost sure I haven't. Um, my sister got married two or three years ago mm -hmm. to a man named from uh, to a man from Newfoundland named Joe Stapleton. Sorry, Edmund Stapleton. I was going to say, his Stapleton. name couldn't be no, 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 Joe sorry. Stapleton, and you didn't <laughs> tell me till three years no, 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 later. No, no, no. Edmund Stapleton. My point is, is that I have a Stapleton in my family now, which effectively makes us brothers in my head. I can't believe if she married my cousin Edmund. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, it's rumored that, so Stapleton is an English name, okay? And it's mm -hmm. rumored that the Stapletons fled to Canada during the Euro during the Revolutionary War because they're cowards. <laughs> and, and so they're supposedly I'm is like a whole bunch of up at the next family get gathering. There's supposedly a whole bunch of Stapletons in Canada. So oh, Omaha great. trying to bluff the four high here. Uh, and uh, uh. King Jack Yeah, King uh, Jack uh, uh. is just too too good here. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, oh wow! Movie reference. Oh, works. Wow. That is that is Dennis Nedry, but it did in fact work. Omaha for rolls adds to that massive stack. That was my Newman from Jurassic Park. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I said I said Nedry, which is the actual character's name. But oh yeah, wow, sure. that's next Newman. level. Dennis Nedry. We're, we're thinking of doing one with our boss doing this every time I... It probably would apply to you also. Um, yeah. Every time we do a, a, a bit that goes wrong. And for PJE asks, can we call Runner Runner Stapleton Stapleton from now on? <laughs> Coward. Hello, Omaha 4 Ding, rolls. ding, 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 ding! 
They say it's always coming seven. Not much for any extras to be interested in. I mean, could get weird with a check raise every once in a while. You have that back door straight and flush draw is a really small bet. Maybe oh, oh, there it is. Oh, oh there oh it is. Boy. Oh boy, my. So look, Any this is gonna extras. work. This is gonna work against a hand like King Ten. Oof. Don't you just immediately give up now, though? You're like, okay, I tried later. Yeah, I think so. I mean, now you can be drawn. I mean, the the whole point is too that you're supposed to have more of the sevens. So, yeah. Oh wow, just going for it. Not a give up. Not a white flag. This is a very aggressive flag with like a pirate a, skull on it. Like maybe a, a little flag. finger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and as far as rivers go, I mean, maybe sometimes you want to be bluffing this as well because your opponent could have ace high and over pairs. And you've been trying so hard to rep that seven, you just keep doing it. We could see, yeah, there's the pot oh size. Oh my goodness. I mean, if you're Omaha for rolls, are you like, are you like, what, 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 what could he have? I think you just call in case your opponent has like seven, eight, but he's never considering folding. Yeah. Also, of course, quad sixes. Huge pot. Huge, huge pot getting shipped in the direction of Omaha for rolls. Laszlo boosted us. Now, overwhelmingly in first place with 25 billion in chips any extras still in second place but 15 million 10 million separating them now yeah and i think any extras needs to refocus a little bit here you still in the main event with 17 players left you still are you know a top five chip stack every once in a while you're going to go for the heroic bluff, and you're going to run into the top of your opponent's range. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be able to recover pretty well. Well, let's hope so. Bottom pair here for Alipe. Alipe was at yesterday's final table, if I remember. It's an easy one for me to remember because I always wish it was Dua Alipe. But I, I don't think it is. I saw Dua Lipa live at uh, outdoor concert last year. How close? Not close enough. She was incredible. James Hardigan says, it's Dua Lipa, Joe, with an A. Yes, that's how I said it, James. Thank you for your comment. That's weird. I always thought it was Dua Lipa. Now he's spelling it the Canadian way. Leap A. Yes, that's how I'm saying it. Uh, any extras with a club? Large Farf says you can just say Coachella. Fourth. I wasn't at Coachella. I was at the annual Canadian festival that I'm weirdly brain farting on. And I was too embarrassed to look it up. What's the thing? Was it the Bob and Doug McKenzie? International uh, Music Festival. Montreal Music Festival. Oshiaga. Was it the <laughs> the John Candy Memorial <laughs> Jazz Fest? So big bluff for Pot. This is really an interesting dynamic. Another bluff. Because, you know, Lipe Piv has found themselves with near the bottom of their bluff catching range, and any extras does the exact same bluff sizing, exactly full pot. Um, which might have been a sort of intentional meta thing of like, would I really bluff on the river twice with a pot size bet? And turns out he would. And any extras losing around 8 million chips, I think, over the last couple of hands? Maybe not that many. 3 million chips? A lot, though. Over the last two hands? Yeah. Yeah, about seven or eight million. Had twenty eight, upwards okay. of twenty one. 
and now has been outflopped again. So, you know, far too early to say this is the beginning of a collapse, but we're certainly going to see at least one more bet here from any extras, and things are trending down. And he is not taking his foot off the gas. Mm -mm. He's got places to be. Dinge Brinker, one of the shortest stacks, second from the bottom, does not fold the pair of eights. Doesn't have a club, unfortunately. And we just ticked down to 16 players. The table filled in. We're at the final two tables, my babies. Wow. Bum -bam 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 -bam. Just seven eliminations until we are done for the day. And two pair on the river is going to make this another very tough bluff spot for any extras. Dinge Brinker is not going to give the opportunity for a bluff here. No, no. I mean, unless any extras decides to go really crazy. And bluff raise the river. No, that's a fold. So a rough level for any extras. A player we have not seen much of this series. That name is not at all familiar to me. Omaha for rolls in this event for two bu bullets. The overwhelming chip leader with 25 million in chips. These folks are on a break right now, so it's a good time to bring back James Hardigan. Yeah, and interesting to see that we have Laszlo Butash leading right now and other players we know from the live world also dominating. For example, future of me, Alex Kulev, who apparently eliminated Enrico Komoski to take us down to 16. Alex now second on the leaderboard. Plus, of course, Mike Watson still going strong. In fact, spoiler alert, when we come back from break, we're going to focus on the other table where we will find both Sir Watts and European. So if you've had enough of those guys already from our super high roller coverage earlier on i'm sorry but they're going to be wow. back for more i mean griffin i'm someone who can barely concentrate on playing one table online and do it competently how on earth are you meant to focus and make perfect decisions when you have a 10k and a 25k side by side and you're having to think about some very difficult spots well, practice makes perfect. I mean, you know, anyone who is a top online player has worked their way up in the stakes, you know, become accustomed to far more than two tables, sometimes as much as 10 or 12 in a big Sunday. So I think that obviously when these kinds of players are playing high rollers in main events, they're not, you know, playing big volume. They're just focusing on a few tables. But again, once you're conditioned for those you know, bigger amount of tables, two is really not a lot to deal with. And also those big decisions are not often coming at the exact same time. So you can really stay focused. And then also the great ability to sort of backtrack and see how a hand went if you miss something in a hand you weren't involved in. So PokerStars has a lot of ways for you to be able to, to sort of right. see what happened in previous hands. Um, Joe, I'll be honest with you, that Super High Roller concluded a lot quicker than I thought it would. I know we only came back with six players, but as we referenced a few times, there were a lot of chips in play. The stacks were deep at one point, but... Griffin, you highlighted the fact that they were clearly here to play, and that's exactly what they did. And European played a very aggressive game, which didn't necessarily work out for him. But with the Super High Roller done, I thought we'd have more players left in the main. We're trying to get down to nine today. We're already at 16. I thought we'd be picking up the action now with closer to 24 players, maybe even close to 32. Are you surprised we're already down to two tables? Is this for a me or for bit, Griffin? Yeah. <laughs> this is for Joe. Yeah. No, sorry. Go, go ahead, Joe. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, but I think that, you know, it's like uh, unkinking the hose, right? Like when things uh, move faster in one part of the tournament, they always slow down in another part. And I think we're going to have one of those, uh, for lack of a better word, painful uh, 11 down to 9 situations, 12 down to 9 situations. Okay. I think that these folks are going to be holding on for dear life to make the final table of the 10k scoop main did you have anything to add to that griffin no i agree joe nailed it
okay, well, I'm, I'm very glad. Because the reason I'm keen to know how long we think this might go is we're meant to have Spraggy join us a bit later on this evening in just over an hour's time. And I'm concerned, do we need to activate the Spraggy hotline? Do we need to get him into the mix earlier on? Or do we leave him in his allotted time and hope that when we get to half nine, quarter to ten, that this is still going and we need the reinforcement of Benjamin Sprague? So so Spraggy is not a bubbler, right? Spraggy will, I don't think he'll bubble doing commentary today. I think he'll do what he normally does and just squeak into it and then maybe ladder up. Okay. I will I will <laughs> accept that. So, yes. And then Spraggy will be on queen. A bit, <laughs> Spraggy will be on stream later on. For tomorrow, Griffin, we established that you're with us all week. Sam yes. Grafton, the squid, finally going to make an appearance on stream tomorrow. So Sam's going to join us at the final table as well. And I believe Finton is also going to drop by wow. as well. So we've got three analysts tomorrow, a great mix of characters that you will be able to hear from as we bring you the final table of the 10K Scoop main event. A reminder, today they're going to play down to nine. Um, and that will then draw a line under the Spring Championship of Online Poker. But I do want to highlight that we will recap the entire series in this week's Poker in the Years podcast, recording it on Thursday, full recap, all the stats, all the numbers, all the details from Howard Swain's that show out on Friday. But still a stream to come before then tomorrow night. Griffin, you get a break. Joe and I are going to call the action from the final two tables of this high buy-in scoop main event with a million dollars plus to the eventual winner when we crown a champion tomorrow. And we are going to go over to the right because we're going to go to the table with Sawats, European, the reigning champion, Welcome Inferno. Plus, Stumped. This is a player who I'm stumped about, Joe. They've come from nowhere. We established they've not had any big results until the start of this year, having played on PokerStars for years. And two scoop final tables, a deep run in the main event. Color me impressed. Yeah, pretty impressive, especially if it does turn out to be the middle-aged Canadian woman, Anna Stumpf. And that's right, John Delano. Stumped has 40 big blinds. And Stumped is getting re-raised by, I mean, so sad, right? European only won a quarter million dollars a few minutes ago. I mean, yeah. probably tilted. Probably really, <laughs> probably really having a hard day today. And nice from Stumped. One thing we should highlight is the fact that Sir Watts is the shortest stack of all mm. 16 players. According to Stat Trek, even though he started the day strong, he hasn't been able to get anything going over the last hour or so. And sometimes that's the way things go. And then you've just got to play the survival game. I mean, it's still, let's see, if Mike goes out next, it's still like 4 p.m. on the East Coast. I mean, he can still have a day. And he will still have cashed for $48,000. We are on a money jump, by the way. Next player out, 48 k But then, if you can ladder to 15th place, you've locked up 61 k We've got Killrog94 here with 10-7 of spades. Is a Killrog a type of monster, a creature? No, at first I thought it was Kill Rog, like someone didn't like Roger and decided they were going to yeah. kill Roger. Kill well, Rog is... Deadeye is a character from, looks like, World of Warcraft? This is a great spot for Mike with that short stack, Joe. Top pair against second pair. And with Kill Rog continuing here, Continue. Yeah, Mike's Mike going to shove, get oh, snap wow, called. Oh, wow, snapped it. And manages to fade. We get an inconsequential Barry. And Mike Watson doubles up to 2.5 million. Boom. Yeah, Mikey Watson. No longer the... Oh, he's still the shortest. <laughs> still the shortest, but not quite as in the danger zone. So we've got plenty of nerds watching this stream. Who would have thunk it? Apparently, the Eye of Killrog is an iconic spell in that game, but you might be confusing a Killrog with a Balrog. No, Killrog Deadeye is a chieftain of the Bleeding Hollow clan. Oh. So suck it, nerds. <laughs> Griffin's drafting a very angry response right now. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, look what Stomach has. Ooh, sourdough suited. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you artisanal. saw, but there was a tweet that went viral yesterday about, um, about, uh, Elijah Wood. And this, this is going to shock like, you. Yeah. But no, with with the little time I spend on social media, especially Twitter, I'm not aware of anything that's been viral recently. It was just like one of these viral joke tweets that was this guy was talking about the time he uh, he ran into Elijah Wood and Elijah Wood told him that uh, he was terrible at throwing a baseball. And then he goes, well, Elijah Wood was wasn't a dunk tank at the time. So I think that sort of influenced it and all these people earnestly replied about what a jerk Elijah Wood is oh. not understanding <laughs> that it was a bit I liked him in Flipper uh, well what then a bunch of other people wrote in with all these stories about how awesome he is and I do have one personal encounter with Elijah Wood and he literally helped me load baggage at the airport as a total stranger so I was struggling with my bags and helped me with them so he seems pretty cool to me and Hello. this is a flush for Dave's up with street flash potential. Jack of Clubs is live, people. We've seen it before. So, oh, no. Oh, no. Sh should have been here yesterday. David Nash asks, are people from the U.S. allowed to play this game? Nope. Even though PokerStars is licensed and operating in three U.S. states, those states do not play with people in the rest of the world. This is what we call the global version of PokerStars, and it does not include any American players. Not anyone who still has an account registered in America. Obviously, there are some U.S. players who've gone either north or south of the border. Some moved to Europe. I'm going to talk to someone about that, I think, about getting online poker back in America. Yeah, because basically that is a common question we get asked, Joe. What are we, what are we doing about it? Yeah. No, I've, I feel like it's about time. I've, I've, I know that I haven't really talked to anyone about it, so. Yeah. Oh, stumped. Nice. Yeah, stumped. I mean, look, I wish I were good enough to even think about making that call. I, like, kind of checked out, assuming it was going to be a fold, but... Uh, yeah. Good good for stump fed. Whoa. Andrea on Twitch says, The biggest celebrity I've met is Robert England. He was awesome. And Robert England is trending right now on, on my other screen on Twitter. Is that the um, Freddy Krueger guy? Yeah. We get the raise here why from the kill rog. Why is he trending? Has something happened to him? Uh, let's see. It says he's done playing Freddy Krueger. I'm too old and thick now. I can't do fight scenes for more than one take. I've got a bad neck, a bad back, arthritis. If there's anything that would make you less scared of Freddy Krueger, it's reading this. i got a bad back, By the way, arthritis in my wrist. This is a good spot for Welcome Inferno, although that ace on the turn might slow down the action. Kilrog had top pair on the flop. Top pair no more. Oh, boy. And he suggests that Kevin Bacon should take over for him. Interesting suggestion. It's a really random suggestion. I don't know. Wasn't Ho Hollow Man was scary, but I guess we didn't see much of him. Hollow Man was a nasty film. There's always a nasty strain of misogyny in many of Paul Verhoeven's films. Hollow Man in particular. And I say I that as someone who has a soft spot for Paul Verhoeven films. I've got a hollow spot for them. I just associate Kevin Bacon now with advertising mobile phones, so... I think he's part of Guardians of the Galaxy canon now, too. Oh, God, that awful holiday special, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't, I've, many times I'll be watching a Marvel movie and I'll think to myself, boy, I sure wish this had more singing. 
I love to write that Terry Bradshaw on an airplane. Did you win Terry's money? Para six is on the flop. Well, here's another one here. Robert England once auditioned to play Han Solo in Star Wars. He didn't get the part, but he urged his roommate Mark Hamill to audition for Luke Skywalker. There you go. It's all connected. And just as Bacon's biggest movie is, of course, Friday the 13th. Nah, Footloose. Come on. I mean, I don't think any of them count as his biggest movie. Tremors, obviously, is the best of those movies. That six, no longer any good. But will European bluff? We know European loves to bluff. I mean, I kind of like respect this bet from Welcome Inferno. And was that a hero call? You're getting that. It was indeed. Man, four flush European. board, pair of sixes. European heroed and got heroed more times than I care to remember in the 25k in the last 20 minutes I am very much looking forward to all of these celebrity encounters by the way I had beer with Iron Maiden I met Charlie Day at a golf course he was super cool it's good to know considering people think I'm him a lot of the time John Delano wait, met wait, marvelous sure? Marvin Hagler at a restaurant stopped for lunch oh. a few days after staying on Cape Cod nice Tremors was ace. Very glad they didn't mess with the magic with any terrible sequels. I assume that's sarcasm. Mike Watson. Pocket jacks. Yeah. Does have jacks. Stumped has the spraggy. A7 offsuit. Still can't get over the fact that Welcome to Inferno is still in this event. Anytime Flat. people can win back to back tournaments live or online, it's so mind blowing to me. Yeah, and it will be interesting if it's these two who go to battle here, considering we saw so much of them sparring when they were side by side at the Super High Roller final table. Nine five calls as well and flops trips. This could be bad news for Mike Watson, who only has two million behind. This could be quite bad for Sir Watts. If you continue here, Joe, and you get check raised, I don't see how you get away from this overpair. I guess because, you know, obviously the big blind's going to have a lot of fives, but they're also going to have a lot of, like, seven eights and... Random diamond sevens combos. Sevens and diamonds, yeah. So there is the check raise from Kilrog. And Mike Watson now has to decide whether to go with this or not. And I wouldn't blame be... him if he did. If that happens, he will get snap called and he is going to be drawing thin. He's got 12.5%. There's a lot of gut shots that are going to check raise this. Yeah. And Mike Watson is eliminated. So Watts, 16th place finisher in the 10k main event following his third place finish in the super high roller earlier this evening so he cashes for 48 grand everyone else is now locked up 61 grand and we are down to 15 players closer to the final table closer to the conclusion of play today 
The good news for Mike Watson there is even if he had gotten in against a straight draw, he still would have lost. So, <laughs> I'm sure that he will find that reassuring. Uh, he'll he'll call me occasionally when he's feeling feeling not great. I'll show him the the bright side. Meanwhile, ace jack of clubs for Samuel Vuston, ace king for the Killrog. You know what's weird is, uh, now I wasn't on for the entire broadcast of the Super High Roller, but we saw more like big pots with bluffs and hero calls and really yeah. sick sort of aggression. I don't think we saw any coolers that I was there for, right? There was no like aces versus kings. We're due for some coolers. I guess the only cooler was the hand that Mike Watson was eliminated in, right? Yes, and that one, obviously, that wasn't like a pre-flop cooler. That was a, you know, a no. flop top pair, rivered second pair. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, it does count as a cooler, but just, I don't know. It's just weird how, how streaky this game is. Streaky and freaky. 5-4-3 on the flop. Ace-King still ahead. Chop opportunities, of course, with a deuce. So check, check on the flop. We get the nine of diamonds on the turn. Haven't heard anything yet from Danny C1994-1893. Yeah, you're right. Not a thing. Not a damn thing. Oh, Dave's us here too. We covered Dave's mm -hmm. yesterday. We did indeed. Kilrog checks a second time. Ten on the river, so ace king high still ahead. Now, is European going to be able to resist if this gets checked to him a third time? Is he going to take the showdown value, or will he feel compelled to bet this river? If past behavior is any indication of future behavior, European, I don't know. It might be too good. The showdown value might be too good. We've seen European bet quite. Heavily, but it was with eight high, five high, yeah. We are switching to the other table where we find Ooh. any extras with aces. And a big blind defend from Dinge Brinker, who has missed this flop. On the other hand, it is a set for any extras, top set. I guess Dinge Brinker does have a gut shot straight draw. Yeah. <laughs> 420. So this is the table where we find the two biggest stacks right now. Omaha for rolls, Leslo Butash with 26 million and any extras from Canada with 15.7 million. Felipe Piv, that is Felipe Boynovsky opening to 280,000. Flattered by a hello, Totty, with sixes. Tens for Paulinho. Oh, boy. I did not see that. I don't know what chance I would have to play in any of these events um, without the hold card info, because I can't even see them. I'm pretty blindsided by these tens right now. Well, I think we're heading for a coin flip here. Chances are Felipe will re-raise... Totti will fold the sixes, and Paulinho is going to be flipping for their tournament life, one of the remaining Brazilian players, and we'll talk about nationalities after this hand. Let's see if Paulinho's tens hold, and Paulinho can survive.
2.38. We're going to do a little, a little extra click in there this time. Yeah. Here we go. The all-in and the call. 10 still ahead post-flop. And on the turn. And it's a flush on the river for Paulinho. Doubling up to 14.8 million. And that is going to leave Felipe Boinovsky super short with just 1 million chips at the 7140 blind level. So, yes, Brazil. We know Brazilians always put on a good show whenever we have a major online series. And close to 80 titles claimed in Scoop so far. Paulinho is repping Brazil. Danny C1994 1893 is repping Brazil. And Felipe Boinovsky. So that was Brazil versus Brazil that last hand. So of the final 15, there are three Brazilians remaining. That's uh, that's that's gonna be some tough odds for one of them to end up the high champion. Three out of fifteen. Yeah. Meanwhile, Omaha for rolls with the graft and ten nine suited, currently behind to Alex Kulev's Jack High. Flush draw now for Laszlo Butash. Alex Kula betting 490 over bets the pot here with Jack High. And Butash folds the draw. And on to the next hand. When are the blinds going up? When are we going to actually have a proper blind level again? Does 8160 even count as a proper blind level? Yeah, so you have 8160 live. I, I've, I've never yeah. made it even remotely close to that stage of any poker tournament, so... Sevens open, however, backs with queens. Backs. These cards are going on their backs. <laughs> All in. Yeah. Seems like a lot. It is a lot. Seems like a lot. Out of the big blind, I think you can take this pretty seriously. Yeah, seven's folded. Average stack, by the way, for those of you who want to keep track, is 9.7 million with 15 players remaining. If at any point you want to calculate it, 250,000 starting stack, 587 entries. That will give you the number of chips in play and then divide by the number of players remaining. As we see, the chip leader with... Nom, 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 nom. The snowman's. Thank you, Marco. Sending greetings from Venice, Italy. Oh, first Griffin, now you. Bless you. Um, always love the international spread of our audience. As these two players go to the flop, eight still good. International spread. I wouldn't Google that. Or do, I mean, depending on what you're after. That's a jack on the turn, which means Butash is actually drawing dead because the percentages don't take into account folded cards. So mm. the one out, the eight of clubs, has been folded by Dinge Brinker. These pots have traditionally, at least since I've been in here covering this one, gone the way of Omaha. And extra does take, pick this up, luckily. So, level two for high speeds is I'm from Canada, the least international country in the world. Kind of feel you're selling Canada short there. I mean, look, uh, maybe most of Canada is uh, in the middle of nowhere, but uh, Toronto is one of the most diverse cities I've ever been to. Also, any country that has more than one official language is a very international country. It's probably true, too. Alex, Alex Kula opening here with 
Yeah. King Queen. <laughs> Running into it. Yeah, and there is the re-raise from any extras with Ace King, the dominating hand. It was a Norm McDonald joke, lol. I did not realize. Oh, wow. Oh, my we goodness. get a four bet from Alex Kulev with King Queen. And these are two not insignificant stacks. These are two of the big boys. Yeah, these are eight digit stacks. And there is the <laughs> five bet shove from any extras who now chips up to 19 million. Alex Kulev down to 10 million, just above average. How many Wolverines actually have homes? Feels like that doesn't need to be said. Sorry? Thanks to James like... Hardigan and Homeless Wolverine for the cast. This is great. <laughs> I mean, uh, even in most of the movies, he's living in the woods in the middle of nowhere. I don't, I'm pretty it's sure. True. It's true. The, the character is, by nature, a kind of like nomad. Yeah. It's a little redundant, you band. Thank you. For your comment. Uh, Omaha for rolls flopping best here. And nobody picking up any hope on the turn. Three hundred twenty thousand. The bet from Laszlo. Who maintains the chip lead with fifteen players remaining? Well, we came into the session with sixteen, just the one elimination so far. So this is basically staying true to your prediction, Joe, that things would slow down they would tighten up now we are at the business end now the final table is in sight no one's gambling so we established that Felipe Bonovsky is short gets it all in with a7 offsuit shoves with the spraggy and hello totty flats with ace nine it is a domination situation with Felipe at risk Queen Jack Deuce, opportunities. Yep, Joe, this is going to be a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, a, loves chop a chop pot. <laughs> Omar Skin says what he meant was zombie Wolverine. Zombie. There I don't like these scores. Wolverine at some point. Yeah, me neither. I'm, I'm, someone just wrote terrible. I, I banned them, but I guess we deserve the rest. Is it true that James Hartigan supports Arsenal? No. What is true is that James Hartigan has absolutely no interest in the sport of soccer and does not support any squadron. I, w I went to the London Arsenal's person. stadium a couple of times. I lived in London, but it was for uh, concerts, muse concerts. <laughs> uh, to be fair, Joe, you have attended more soccer games than I have. You've, have you never been to a game? Nope. Wow. I went to El Clasico, and then I did. I went to some really big match in like Wembley Stadium, I think, one time. Do they do soccer there? They do do soccer in Wembley Stadium. Yeah. It was, was a really it, was big, it a high-scoring game. Was it was it a one-all draw? It could have been. It could have been massive. It might have been two-one. 
Wow. You know, like a world record, yeah. Not uh -oh. looking good for Felipe, but that king on the turn means that he will double up. Ah, high, high fived themselves. It's awesome. Yeah, I went to like some a, a derby. Do do they? Is that something? Um, I be no, because a, a a derby is normally when two teams from the same city play each other, and that would normally be at someone's home ground though, rather than at right, okay. Wembley. Phil Sternheimer took me to, to like, um, some, like, very, a big rivalry. I want to say it was the Spurs versus, wait. The Tottenham Spurs. The Tottenham Spurs. Would they have played against a German team? Does that make any sense? Um, that would not be a derby. Not the Ham Spurs and the derby. Arsenals are rivals. They, they, even though they're next door neighbors, they don't like each other. Are you sure he didn't take you to the actual derby at Epsom Racecourse? No, I'd remember Epsom Racecourse because of the salts. Okay, Joe, in the FA Cup Finals, Man City versus Man United, that's a derby at Wembley. I think that's what I went to. That sounds more like it. And on a scale of one to board, what was your uh, entertainment factor? It was fun, only because the people I was with cared a lot, right? Like, I don't, I, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, this is stupid. How dare you take me to this once in a lifetime game? You know what I mean? So right. um, I, I'm, I'm there because other people are, are, are happy about it and into it. So we've got Ace Deuce opening, but we've got Kings for Alex Kulev. I would really like to have the future of Alex Kulev, personally. Re-raises, and now we have Ace-Jack folded. 5-3 of diamonds folded. Back on Hello Totti with the Ace-Deuce. People do sometimes like to go a little crazy with these little suited aces, but not this time. Is it possible, and again, I say this as someone who does, knows very little about the sport, is it yeah. possible that you did go and see a regular season game at Wembley? Because weren't, weren't Spurs based at Wembley for a while? Wasn't their like, own stadium like under maintenance or something and they had to play at Wembley? Well, this guy on YouTube is saying Bayern Munich versus Spurs ended 7 or 6 something. So maybe that did actually happen. Trip aces for hello trip aces. That eight also is a really great piece of the board um, for Hello Toddy. Sorry, Ragatak, I didn't see what you posted. The reason, the only reason I know about the Tottenham Spurs is because I work alongside someone who is a painfully boring Spurs fan, and Ooh. sometimes when he's ranting about Spurs, some of it goes in by osmosis. Most of the time, I just filter it out. But sometimes stuff goes in. But I remember there was a period where they weren't playing at is it White Hart Lane. Is that where they used to play? How about White Hot Rage? That's what Lipe Piv is going to have here. Has one half pot behind, not even.
By the way, one thing again I know because I had to listen to a bloody 20-minute rant on it is the, 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 the Tottenham Spurs not doing very well at the moment at all. They've got to get some better kickers, it sounds like. I think it's a coaching problem at the moment. Oh. I always wondered, what does the coach say in the locker room? Like, hey, kick better. R yeah. run, run around more. Kick, kick the ball into the net. Yeah. What are you guys doing out there? A lot of folks are surprised at the check back on the last hand. Anyway, just to bring things back to how it started. No, I do not support the London Arsenals. Ace King all in against Queen Jack. Queen Jack does not river the, the flush. And that is another double up for Felipe Boyanovsky. That was a... Very, very, very welcome double up for Lipe. And now we've got Queens for Hello Totti in the small blind facing this rock, this uh, raise from the chip leader. And we are switching as Solon asks, when are you guys coming over to London? I don't know, I might I might visit London at some point. Tomorrow Today. maybe. <laughs> Today. I think we're discussing my next trip to London tomorrow. I love the fact that we're going to have a meeting about your next trip to London for more meetings. That <laughs> you truly are part of the PokerStars family now. <laughs> I just I just look at it as getting my airline miles up. That's right, Pete. Will there be a PowerPoint? If someone doesn't have a deck to present, I'll be very disappointed. But in, it's very important on a Zoom call that the person doing the presentation is not the person sharing their screen. So you can have that awkward silence of five seconds before they say, next slide, please. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't have anything prepared because it's scoop, but the next meeting about meetings, I can, I can, I can whip something up real quick. It's essential that your deck has at least five major typos slash factual errors in it. I don't know if I could do five. I'm pretty good with, <laughs> with not putting typos in things. Hey, everyone who's arguing about that, uh, that check back of the ace's full hand, maybe they just wanted to see what their player had, realizing that they're probably not going to get paid off that often. That's one... That's one thing. I'm not saying that's what it was. Also, sometimes people misclick. I don't know if you've ever yep. heard of that happening. Well, this is all Killrog for now, but the reigning mm. champ does have the nut flush draw. Is the eight of hearts alive? It is, but it's the four of clubs, so the board bricks out for Welcome Inferno. It's also, Joe, essential that at least one of the slides is like an essay, like the page of a dense the block book. of text. Block of text, which you then read word for word as if this was like, you know, a school class and you're kind of like literally reading out loud what everyone's already looking at. Kilrog on a bit of a tear right now, up to almost 20 million. 
Ordinary user says, James, your Wikipedia mentions your love for American football. Is it factual? There is a lot of stuff on Wikipedia that is not accurate, and I'm pretty sure there's some stuff on that Wikipedia page that's not 100%. But no, I haven't followed it for a couple of seasons now. But yeah, I, I, I do like American football. I do follow the NFL and have been a 49ers fan since the 80s. Legit re-raise here from Inferno. Who's on the short side now? Four and a half million, which is less than half average right now. Meanwhile, oh, I bring you bad news from the 1K main event, from the medium version of the scoop main. Ramon KO'd. Got it in Ace King versus Ace Jack, and their opponent turned a Jack. We will not be able to follow Ramon any longer. I was hoping we could just, you know, follow him into the kitchen. I'm kind of hungry. Stumped opening under the gun here with Ace Deuce of Clubs. Aces for Dave's are, and tens for European. Oh, and Danny. Danny's got the snowmans. Nom, 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 nom. I like that we make a bigger deal about the snowmans than the aces. Well, it's more the fact that with three players with pocket pairs, I mean, by, if this gets re-raised, I guess the eights may get binned. The question is whether Samuel Vuzdan will go to the flop with 10s. Danny C, 1994, 1893 has folded. So it's back on Samuel Vuzdan. And Andrea asking, will this be the end of European? Might just call this, might just go to the streets. European does call. Does take, yeah. But what do you do now? Overpair to the board, club in your hand. You lose more chips. <clears throat> You definitely lose more chips. <clears throat> yeah, 1.2 is the continuation bet from Dave's up. So now both players pick up a flush draw. I would like to point out that Danny C1994-1893 would have turned a full house, but, you know. <laughs> Snowman's num num. Uh, we got like a one to one stack to pot race here for European. And not exactly a scare card out there. Even the clubs. I guess. Other than a 10, that's the best card that can hit the river is a club. Maybe he gets away for, for with just the 10 high flush. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, it is a club. So both players with a flush. Dave's up with the nut flush. And, yes, we are looking at pretty much pot for European who should probably check this and does and – I mean, if you're Dave, sir, don't you just try and get the lot here? Yeah, but it, isn't it hard to get the lot when it's a paired board and you have the nut flush? Eh, details. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't well, asking really as like a as like a gotcha, but there you go. See, there we you, go. You you. <laughs> well, 
Puckle Patrick predicts this is a check fold from European. I think that's what you were saying, Joe, that maybe with just the 10 of clubs, Samuel Vuston can find the fold here. No, nope. he calls. Well, that's both the Super High Roller finalists gone. We lost Mike Watson in 16th place. Samuel Vuston bows out in 15th place, cashing for 61K. Takes us down to 14 players. We're going to have two tables of seven now. It's just, I, I can understand why it's so hard to get away from that when you're playing at this level. Like, your opponents are just going to be, are just going to not have it a lot of the time there, right? Like, that polarizing bet size. I think there's going to be plenty of times you're going to be right. I bow town opening here with tens. Two junky hands in the blinds. Rudy Poos says, why did you call? He's not here to answer. He played like he had a high pair too, says Rudy. I, I, I'm just going to say that, you know, Samuel Vuston probably has better things to be doing now than answering criticisms from Twitch chat, so. Do we just get a balance over here? Is that what just happened? Paulinho? Yes, because we're at uh, 14, so we need two tables of seven. Two tables of seven? It is always coming seven. 78KB, why no answer? I don't know what the question was. Do I have to, you're going to make me scroll up? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I think to the question that he was a asking, why no answer? I still can't. I'm, I'm looking for the question. I can't find the question. The one you read, I mean. I think he's asking why you didn't answer the question of why he called there. The question was, why did you call? The right. question was directed at Samuel Vuston. I can't answer on his behalf. I think the why no answer was a joke. Anyway, let's just move on. So this... Open, being attacked. Nice. You can click his username, James, and see his chat history. Oh. Now I can't find his follow-up question. Oh, there <laughs> we go. Click. Where's, where's history? Where is that? Follow, whisper, gift a sub. Messages. Oh, give him a sub. Give, give him a sub for his efforts. Okay, so the last question that 78KB asked was, any good players in still? Okay, now I'll give you the answer. Yes, thank you for your question. Great question. Oh, man, that was so worth it. DJ Harry on YouTube says, little moody to J today, James. What do you mean today? I'm always like this. Also, you're banned. This is a great stack size for pocket jacks. You're just like, whatever. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, you're just like, I'm, I'm not folding. Pocket nines for Dave's. Uh, hey, James, Custom on YouTube asks, favorite hand? The right one. He likes the right one. I also have a favorite hand, so thank you for your question. Yes. Should be a no-go here. No, no. And blinds, who knows? Heap one asks, where is the background noise from? I, my guess it's either coming from your computer speakers or your headphones. Thank you for your question. 
obviously dependent on how you're choosing to view us this right. evening. Also, don't assume that people are watching on a computer, Joe. Most smart TVs have a YouTube slash Twitch app now. Yeah, the speakers are headphones. I think I covered it with those two answers. That's true. Six, seven, eight, nine. And once again, one of those straight outs being blocked by Ibotown. Why are they so arrogant today? Joe needs a shave. Guess what, Jonas? <laughs> you need a new YouTube account. You're banned. <laughs> it's just the second bit. It's the kind of outrage. Why are they so arrogant? Joe needs a shave. <sighs> so the straight draw misses. The flush draw misses, but guess what? I'm a town's gonna take it down anyway. Marco B says, where is Spraggy? He's going to be with us in around half an hour's time. Joe? Easy read. Yes. The commercial that you appeared in for a popular beverage. Yes. It was the one beginning with the letter P, right? Uh, y y the overall brand was the P one, yes. Yes, so basically when someone says, did anyone see Stapes' Cherry Coke commercial, it proves the ineffectiveness of advertising. It's not exactly a great advertisement for advertising. No, it isn't. No, no. One heart here for Ibo Town. Ace high still good. Now a little wheel action possibly. That's the one where you played the guy who'd been fired, right? Who was carrying all of his stuff out of the office in a box? I mean, it definitely looks like that. <laughs> I don't know if that was really my motivation. I guess it kind of was since I was terrified of being fired <laughs> from the commercial. I, and look, I did bring I said, that box from home. I think if you're going to cast Joe Stapleton in a commercial or a movie, you've got to basically find the type that he can play. Guy getting fired from his job. Guy losing a poker tournament. It, these are all kind of... You, you, you embody that kind of like, oh, really well. So King 9 bluffing with King High does get Ace High to fold. So the funny part is... So, um... The director wasn't around when they called me into the makeup chair, and uh, they decided to, like, I probably would have made this audience very happy, to clean up my beard and to, like, make it sort of manicured. And the, and the director came over and shouted and was like, what are you doing? This guy's supposed to be a miserable hump. Not, <laughs> not, not a well-manicured beard model. And I felt so what, bad because he wasn't very nice about it. So basically, miserable hump, who is n whose whose attire and appearance is not suitable for this company, and that's why he's been let go. There was a backstory to this character, and they ruined it. They ruined it by making you look too presentable. Exactly. Ace Deuce flopping real good here. Got that pair of aces, the wheel draw, the low board coverage. I'm surprised that you didn't go full method and didn't immerse yourself in an office environment for several weeks before playing that <laughs> role. I didn't even know what it was when I showed up. I didn't get a script or anything. I had no idea. Wow. 
That was all improv, baby. Trip aces. Yeah, I mean, Stump was drawing dead on the turn, but, you know, why not have another ace kill, Rog? It's just where the action goes like this, you think maybe your king high could be good. You, know, you probably don't think it's good if you're betting this. <laughs> you no. probably also don't think you're betting into an ace. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. And kill Rog Whoops. is going to move over the 20 million mark. Yes, Rip. The awards have been held, and James did win the award. I thought he was most deserving of winning. He did win Poker Commentator of the Year? Poker Personality? What is it now? I forget. They've been uh, different names. Best Broadcaster, according to the card that I still have here. I don't actually have the award yet. I actually emailed Eric today to say, Eric, did the awards actually finally arrive? Hey, look, Danny's in a pot. You mean Danny C1994-1893? I did mean Danny C1994-1893. I don't think this hand's going to be going any further, though, with Stump moving all in from the small blind with King-Queen. And we are on break. Omaha for rolls. Laszlo Butash goes into this break as chip leader with 25.9 million. 14 players remaining as they play down to the final nine tonight, playing to the final table, and then the action resuming tomorrow, and that's when we will conclude our coverage of Scoop 2023 with the last day of this 10K buy-in main event, which has a first prize of more than a million dollars. Uh, Griffin Benger back in the mix, a uh, Rolex Dota saying, show us the award. As I just said, I don't have it yet. Um, as I said, I emailed Eric, Danny, and asked if uh, they'll, they'll be in Vegas, because if I do go to Vegas this summer, <clears throat> I will be able to finally pick it up. I don't want to have to wait a year for my award like you did, Joe. <laughs> Hold on, I got, I got a couple of them here. Oh, my gosh. Don't forget this one. This one I didn't even brag about on the... Oh, it's very heavy. Uh, this is for yeah. MC of the Year from the Charity Series of Poker, so... I'm, I'm surprised no, we also a... didn't get a glimpse of the uh, Polymer Omaha trophy that Vanessa Selps gave you in Prague. It's behind, it's behind the wall of the arena here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I know, Griffin, you and Joe were talking earlier on about Vegas, talking about the World Series. I'm still not 100% yet, but I have teased already, and Maria and Joe have been kind of like metaphorically needling me with big sticks. I may come to Vegas this summer. I may join Joe in the main event. Oh, that, I'm so happy to hear that. That's so exciting. I'm sure uh, your experience at the Irish Open helped you, you know, maybe got, no, got, gave you the bug a little was, bit wanting you to play. No, it was actually a miserable experience because I just suffered three it bad beats. Not. So you think I'd never want Come to do on. it again. No, it's, no. it's one of those love things it. which... Love the pain! <laughs> it's one of those weird things which, you know, since the mid early to mid 2000s when I first really got into poker, it's one of those things you put on your list, right? One day I will play the main event. Yeah. It's like, well... If not now, then when? That's what I'm kind of sort of thinking about. So, yeah, if I can get the time off, I will. Uh, I, I may well consider it. If it happens, we'll confirm it on the podcast and we'll talk about how it's going to work and everything because I guess I also will kind of offer a little bit of action to people who uh, who may be who may be interested. But yeah, I mean, oh, is the what? Does it start tomorrow? Um, I know a lot of people have gone already, Joe. Uh, when 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 is the first? When is the first event? It's either today or tomorrow because they did the uh, the draft last night for the fantasy. Wow. So I mean, it, it's it, we got. I think the the uh, what is it the the dealer event, the employee casino event. Yes. I think they call it now casino employee is either today or tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, it's all kicking off. Yeah, I, I so heard you made uh, you were you were drafted in the sixth round, Joe. You better make that main event count. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, my God. You should get money back for your team if you draft me. <laughs> I, I still am not 100% playing the main event. Like, I want a seat, and I'm still only, like, 95% to play it. Like, no, I'm, you're you're playing. You're 100% playing. Um, I was thinking of selling 100% of my action and just taking the 10K and letting everybody have a sweat. 
Uh, Stat Trick, by the way, has confirmed that it did start today. Um, so that is from the end of May to the middle of July. I mean, is it my imagination, or does it get longer every year? Has it always been six and a half weeks? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's always been a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of events. Yeah. And you, did you say you missed it last year, Griffin? Yeah, I did. I I'd, I'd come to Vegas about a month and a half earlier to, to visit a friend and just uh, didn't feel like going back out there. Um, yeah, it is six and a half weeks. And let me tell you, from someone who has been out there for the whole time, by the time the main event rolls around, you are just a shell of a human being. So uh, most of my success in the main events have been when I've just come for that event right. for maybe one or two before to get a little warmed up. But uh, it's it's a long summer out there. You know, a lot of money being thrown around and a lot of heat. So it's 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 not for me anymore. <laughs> and Joe, remind me, did you visit last summer? Were you there for the first year at the new venue, right? It's now at the Horseshoe slash Paris across those two hotels. I was there for like an hour. I, I basically was right. in Vegas at the same time hosting at the Brad Garrett Comedy Club that week. And uh, I was actually quite tired and stressed from that so i didn't the fact that my sh i had to be there for the show every day at 7 p.m meant i couldn't play any poker um so i only went by for an hour one day um but it was cool it was cool and i'm looking forward to it um and i saw plenty of people in that hour a very a very awkward hour uh well joe you get a break now as we return to the action in the scoop main event griffin we're going to be joined by spraggy in the next 30 minutes so we're not going to have to do nice. this alone as we try to get down from 14 to 9, it did slow down during the last hour. We only lost two players. Uh, nothing that I've seen leads me to believe that we're going to hit that final table anytime soon. And I was able to catch a couple of those hands right before the break. Uh, yeah. One of them being between Kilrog and Stump Fed. So this should be an interesting hand. About 30 effective for Stump Fed. Let's see how... He flops against this king queen, which should go heads up. Maybe Dive Forza decides to flick in the extra 160. Would be pretty nice in this spot. You see the percentages, but of course, against those ranges, you're not feeling great. Bad flop for Stumped. Bad flop. Bad flop. Bad flop. No. I mean, oh, yeah, you but say one that, that Griffin, we'll get if Kilrock improves yeah. to two pair, mm -hmm. then it's a great board for Stumped. Yeah, but still only three outs, not even a backdoor spade to speak of. And Stumped is going to take the lead as Kilrog kind of caps his range a little bit. Going to have some King Xs, but, you know, hands like two nines that might just fold for the one bet. So that's why we see the bet, I think, from Stumped, Ed. And Stumpfed could get creative here. Um, you know, this check call is going to be hands like maybe King Queen, King Ten suited, maybe something like Ace Rag that might have to fold to a big pressure pressurizing bet. You do have that ten in your hand with a Jack Ten that that um, means that you can have a lot of Queen Tens and the like. You have a pretty strong range at this point betting twice on this board against an under the gun open. So maybe kill Rog is going to see right through it and be prepared to call this big bet still drawn to the nuts, but look at that nice bluff and a great example of what stump has been doing so well over the last few days. Um, so great work there. And here's another example of why this is not going to reach its conclusion anytime soon. The blinds have just gone from 8160 to 90,000, I think I read. I think you tweeted once that this is your one of your favorite levels, James, the ninety-one eighty. I I've said many times I do not acknowledge it. It is a fake blind level. It does not exist. <laughs> so, King Jack suited calling on the button. This is the reigning champion. Welcome, Inferno. And luckily, it doesn't come all hearts. Yeah, and maybe Welcome Inferno is going to have an opportunity to take this away. Similar to the hand with Stumpfed. 
once your opponent shows a little weakness on a texture that should technically favor the aggressor. And now we do see that bet. And I think this A7 of hearts will fall into the fold category a lot of the time here. So these are great examples of, you know, some of these players that we're seeing such amazing results and deep runs from how they're winning pots that don't otherwise belong to them. Okay, so stumped. Num num. Num num. However, okay, I would like a rating on my num num. Ibo Town with Queens. Well, this complicates things. The open from A6 of Hearts. Yeah, Stump Fed playing now about 30, 35 big blinds, I'd say. Well, he's just flattered with the eights, so it is going to get around to Ibo Town. And Ibotown playing the same stack. Probably going to find a raise to the tune of around 1.5 million. That's large. Maybe even a bit more. Mm -hmm. Oh, just but jumps. Instead just, yeah, you know, wants to maybe get a crying call from something like tens. So just shoving. Hillrog with the Spraggy. Inferno still in contention with 6.4 million. Average stack right now, Griffin, is 10.5 million. So has some work to do. And look at this. Sevens for Stumped. Kings for Kilrog. Yeah, and I, I don't know if Stumped is going to get into too much trouble if he faces a three bet from Kilrog here. Um. You know, we are just 14 players remaining in the main. You don't want to be four bet shoving your sevens for 35 big blinds when you're opening under the gun very often. Be curious to see if Kilrog does three bet, what sizing we're looking at, and whether Stumpfed feels comfortable enough to call. I would probably lean not. But this is a player that's playing with a lot of confidence, and the chip leader on the table is three betting you. Yeah, good discipline there from Stumped. Glassy1996 asks Has Griffin watched The Great Escape yet? I mean, to be fair, Griffin, you've had like one day, but even so, have you? <laughs> no, I was busy watching the succession finale. Aces for the actual table chip leader. I didn't even see that 22 million. What a stack! For Diva, sort of decided to call them. Well, does anyone have a hand they're going to be willing to call with here? I Ibo, Town has a hand that you definitely have to at least take pause with. Ooh. And yeah, sometimes you're just going to attack the big stack with a big sizing. Be like, get out of here. This is my pot. Get your ace eight off out of here. Get your, you know, king jack off. Even your queen ten suiteds here are not going to feel very comfortable with this big sizing. But, of course, Diva somehow waking up with the aces...
You know, sometimes you want to work in some flats with aces as traps. Of course, in this situation, we know that that would be the best answer. But especially against such a large sizing, might seem a little suspect. So instead, and also you don't want hands like ace king or two jacks that are prepared to get all in preflop yeah. to find a board that they don't like, and then you don't get that extra five million chips. So, um, I, th I think I like this small four bet and good discipline from Ivo Town to just let it go. So this is one of two tables remaining. Seven players at each. Yeah. Not surprised we see an open here from the 6-5 suited from Paulinho. Not getting a lot of opportunities to open despite having an 80-plus 80, 80 big blind stack because of how active Diva and Killrog with those chip lead stacks are. So, you know, if you can get through the button here who has a shover fold stack, you know, I think you want to be raising pretty wide from the cutoff here because these are the kind of opportunities that you're going to get to pick up some chips. Welcome Inferno, though. Definitely going to continue in some capacity, whether that's a three bet or a call. And this is the tough thing, you know, two very confident players in the blinds. And Welcome Inferno just makes it a huge three bet. And certainly Paulino's just, you know, just waiting it out a little bit. But So I've like, been learning all lots of new things today griffin like for example how to look at someone's like chat history on twitch like we can see everything they've posted recently and also mm -hmm. i've just random I, I just randomly pinned someone's comment to the uh to the top i have no idea how to undo it spraggy stop trolling me Oh, I guess I asked for that. Welcome, Inferno. And thinking about attacking the chip leaders opens, really great awareness that we've seen from Welcome, Inferno. Of course, you've brought to the attention of our viewers that Welcome, Inferno has the potential to be a back-to-back -back champion of the scoop main event an incredible accomplishment that has somehow been done once before but still incredibly impressive True. that's the thing right if you make the final table of this event two years in a row you're like wow that's incredible and it's like yeah well there was a guy who actually won it two years in a row so you know you've got to you, you've got to it's not enough to just make the final table the next year you've got to win it again true story I actually, um, in, it must have been 2010, final tabled the Sunday Million two weeks in a row. And I finished wow. ninth and seventh. And I never even sniffed the final table. I never got close ever again. But poker's funny that way. <laughs> yeah. Surely Killrog's just going to give Stumpfed a break here and fold the 9-5. What do I know? Dolly Parton in the middle. He's not folding, and don't call me Shirley. And a very interesting flop, because the kind of flop that Killrog is going to want to see a turn, whether that comes in the form of a check raise or a check call, but instead Stumpfed under-reps this flush, and I probably with the intention of inducing bluffs on turns like this, Killrog might want to put a lot of pressure on, you know, the ace highs and bet two big bullets tw uh, both on the turn and the river. So here it starts coming, the 900. And look, of course, Stumpfed is calling here. If the river is a 10, or pardon me, not a 10, but I mean, basically any of the straight cards, I think. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> that is absolute gin for Stumpfed because not only does it make Kill him the nut Rog. flush, but it's it's in that territory of what Killrog's bluffs could be, right? Like uh, 
uh, a, a five six for instance which is now made a straight so you really pressurize the ace highs that are just ace highs by going all in here and i think and there it oh, is and kill stump rod, fed, snap yeah. cold and stumped is going to get the full double up to 9.8 million almost an average stack now And that is the sort of monkey's paw of calling with hands like 9-5 off from the big, is that Killrog's doing it because they have a lot of chips and they feel that they're prepared to make big bluffs like that. But sometimes you just find yourself up against the top of your opponent's range and yeah. you lose a big pot. Yeah. Uh, Stumps has 40 big blinds, by the way. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> the prophecy fulfilled! <laughs> Six is for Killrog on the button. Yeah, I think this could be an interesting clash between Killrog and Ibotown, assuming that diva folds the cutoff with the jack nine which he's not always going to do you know if killrog opens this button does ibo town three bet fold the king jack does ibo town just shove for 25 big blinds certainly reasonable if you think your opponent on the button is raising 80 90 percent of their range and what does killrog do with the sixes facing a 25 big blind shove going to be flipping most of the time. Sometimes your opponent's going to have deuces through fives. It is, though, just a three bet. And Ibotown's going to be pretty annoyed to see the four bet shove, which I think is almost always coming from Killrog here. And I think the reason why Ibotown doesn't risk just shoving the 25 big blinds here is because I don't think he expects a lot of, of, of four bet all ins from Killrog. He's going to need something like a pair or a suited ace or a big hand to, to do that with. And, you know, oftentimes Killrog's just going to have queen nine off and fold to the three bet, you know? We've got two players with a six here in the blinds. Killrog opening with Queen 10. Be very interested to see how Danny C is going to react to this. Such a brutal ace to have the ace 6. Please, Griffin, you can you call them by their full name? Danny C, 19941893. Just to flick in the one chip seems okay. The problem is if you're not specific. You, people might think you're talking about Danny C 19936241. Question from Lord Sh Shredderman here on, and there is the shove with the A6. Nice recognition from Danny C, recognizing how wide Killrog will be prepared to open the cutoff. Very tough to do. Uh, 14 players left. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Make a habit of shoving A6 facing a cutoff open, but. You know, this just goes to show at this stage, at this level, at this buy-in level, players very aware. And that leads into my answer to Lord Shredder Man's question, which is why is 6-6 six, six for me such a clear jam there? It's because these players are very capable of three betting light from the small blind facing a button open, hands even as good as King Jack, using the blockers, expecting a lot of folds. So you need to protect your opens by being prepared to four right. bet all in for something like 35 big blinds with pairs. Ace Jack versus 10 8. Ace High still ahead. So, um, one positive dude just said, Did you guys know there is also 14 left in the 1K main? Never cross the streams! It's too close. I hope, by the way, 
I hope, by the way, that that update from the medium is respecting our 30 minute delay, because if it's not, that's a spoiler, and I will have you banned! Oh, yes, he will. He's threatened to have me banned just for repeating spoilers when I didn't even realize they might be spoilers, so. And then you'll be sure to commentate her. Clash of the Breakouts. Stumped against Welcome Inferno. I don't think Welcome Inferno is going to welcome this limp with open arms. I think that this is too strong a hand. The kind of hand at this stack depth that even if you do raise and somehow your opponent finds a limp raise, maybe you can just call anyway. Yeah. So happy to raise it up. We have got Ace Jack suited for the reigning scoop main event champion. Welcome, Inferno. A6 opening here. I don't blame Danny C1994-1893 from trying to find spots to acquire chips, but I don't really like this open from the cutoff. And it's not just because we see the King-10 and now the Ace-Jack suited. I think that, you know, if you're going to try to steal chips, maybe not from these really tough opponents with such a, a weak hand as Ace-6. Hmm. But hey, probably has fond feelings about Ace-6 for getting that shove on kill rog through, you know? It works once. Why not again? Well, because Welcome Inferno has Ace-Jack of Hearts. Welcome Inferno on 8.5 million. A reminder, average stack right now is 10.5 million. As we see Ibo Town open with Kings. Ibo, one of the short stacks at this table. going to be difficult for them to get any action with these hands being distributed to the rest of the table. Don't do it, Kilrog. Lucilla Twenty is asking, "It's yeah, is this, this pre-recorded pre or a rerun? Neither." But thank you <sighs> for your question. I oh, was going to joke Danny. and say it was it was pre-recorded. Num 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 num. Because then we would have been able to talk. Kill rock. Ooh, sourdough suited. Num num. Which is artisanal. So, eights have opened to 378,000. Killrog, apparently it's compulsory to re-raise with this hand. Yeah, and the intention of a potential raise from Killrog would be to Psy call off. And that's why we see we the go. effective shove here. Um, and Danny, not loving this spot, but I think will probably, as probably the short stack in the tournament, you know, you, you, go you would call off nines and tens, so may as well. Eights is, like, right there, and you're up against the exact on hand. No three. Eight told. That is a double up, and we are switching over to the Cheers. other table where we have tournament chip leader Laszlo Butash, a.k.a. Omaha for rolls, playing around 27 million right now, but this hand is Future of Me, Alex Kulev, versus Any Extras. And we have got an overpair versus a flush draw. Very nice check back here from Future of Me. Trying to give Any Extras some reason to maybe bluff um, some certain cards on the turn, like something like an 8 or a 5. 
Might still bet here to try to target. No, nice check from any extras. Just looking to realize that equity. Maybe not expecting future of me to, to fold all those ace highs on the turn. And also could be kind of trapping with a hand yeah. like this. Goes for the big value. And the board bricks out for any extras. Tries to bluff at this for 600k. I don't see Kulev folding this Griffin. Yeah, I think the question actually might be, um, is he going to raise or just call? You know, 5-8 has gotten there, maybe something like 5-3 of spades. But if you do have aces, do you want to raise and potentially get called by a king? And that is exactly what Future of Me has deduced. Yeah. And going to be difficult for any extras to get sort of super galaxy brain creative and maybe just like shove over this raise because Future of Me could just have pocket kings or pocket sixes, um, yeah. you know, with the line of checking the flop and then betting very strong and raising very strong on the river. Well, we'll never we've know got if you would have pulled the aces. <laughs> players remaining, Griffin. We're down to two tables, but let's have three commentators. We've been promising him since the start of the broadcast. He's finally here, ladies and gentlemen. It's Benjamin Spraggy Sprag. How are you, sir? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. How, how are you? The internet is going to be delighted because obviously you were promised and you finally have been delivered. I do feel, however, that the thumbnail may have been slightly deceptive in the sense that when we said we were covering the 25K Super High Roller final table and had a picture of your face, People thought you were at that final table. Not as a bit, but genuinely you had made the final table of the 25k. And I think I deserve some of the credit here because I'm the one who created this myth that has led people to believe that you would play and final a super high roller. The, the C, first of all, very incredibly optimistic. I'd like to thank those people who thought that I, I potentially had final table of the 25k. I'll, I'll keep, always keep believing. Uh, yeah, the seeds for that troll were planted many, many years ago. Actually, during this series, people still ask me, um, did I play the 100k? <laughs> did I play... Wasn't I the guy who fired three or four bullets in the 100k? Um, many years ago. I was very close to actually being in the 25k because I played the... Oh, really? A few of the satellites. But uh, I was down to the final eight with, with two seats, but no, no luck. And sadly, Spraggy, no longer in this main event. We saw your elimination yesterday, but at least you lasted more than one hand on your second bullet. I, yeah, 10 or 20 more hands than the, than the first one, so it was a, a little bit more successful. And I, I threatened there to start, had a really good start today and started building a little bit of a stack, but uh, didn't quite get Griffin's telepathic fold energy <laughs> uh, versus the ace king and uh yeah eliminated yesterday it's, quite early it's really hard to send energy to someone 30 minutes in the past yeah I mean, it would be so helpful i can't stress enough fellas if it would be so useful to us if in the future you know when you have this card up stuff if you could yeah. somehow work that out it would be very nice yeah well two pair here for hello totty and i imagine Spraggy, there's plenty of avatars, handles that you recognize from your journey through the MTTs of Scoop. Many of the regs still in attendance tonight. Yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, hate and vitriol coursing through my veins, looking at a lot of these names here. They've been giving me a hard time over the last few weeks. But uh, yeah, we have, a, we have obviously a lineup of very talented players, some of whom we're probably more yeah. familiar with, obviously. Um, Kulev at the, the final table here, Future of Me, recently won yes. uh, in Monte Carlo as well, and is becoming a very, you know, big force to be reckoned with in both online and live uh, high stakes and sort of super high stakes poker as well. So, yeah. yeah, we've got a very, of course, as you'd expect, 10K main event, very all star lineup. So, Hello, Tolly making on... a full house, an all star. Yeah, hand. but 
nothing for any extras to be too excited about. Uh, one question I wanted to quickly address from, um, from Splittered. Who is Welcome Inferno? So we will often tell you a player's real name where it's in the public domain, right? So it's well known that Omaha for Rolls is Laszlo Butash. It's well known that Future of Me is Alex Kulev. But where a player has not publicly disclosed their Pokestars ID, or in Welcome Inferno's case has specifically asked for their real name not to be in the public domain, we're not going to do that. Welcome Inferno won the Scoop main event last year, came on the podcast on the condition that they could not be identified by their real name. Did you, uh, was it uh, 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 sort of back to, we filmed from behind and with a voice changer or? Fortunately, it's audio yeah, only. Yeah, so I think, I, think, I think we can get away with it where it's audio only. I don't feel the need to, you know, have their answers either distorted by one of those awful kind of voice boxes or to have their role played by an actor. So welcome Inferno, what were you thinking when you made the final table? Well, it was delightful to be in the last nine. <laughs> have you have you had work doing that before? That was very, very good, James. That was strong. That was perfect. Back in the day, I did a fair amount of voiceover work, yes. But yeah, welcome Inferno. Trying to make back-to-back -back 10K final tables and is at the other table right now. Hello, Totti wins a hand with the cards that are named after you, the Spraggy A7 offsuit. Well, there it is as well. If we had that, if we had that telepathic technology yet to be developed, we'd also have avoided that calamitous situation <laughs> from, uh, I believe, two or three, maybe, actually more like three or four series ago now with the A7 I, I, off reshove into the Queens. I'm just going to say... trouble for Dinsbrinker here. The flip side of that, though, is... The fact that you get a hand named after you. Not many people have that. So I'd like to think that there is a small net positive to that situation. It is a rare privilege. Dinge Brinker indeed, Griffin, in big trouble because future of me lurking with the Cowboys in the big blind. And this is only going to go one way. You'd imagine way, that is an yeah. all-in hand. I assume that if Kulev reshoves here that any extras will fold the ace-10 of clubs. Yeah, and I don't really see any uh, incentive to do anything else, of course. Oh, and a jack, jack high flop. flop. And that is going to be a double up for Tinge Brinker. And Alex Kulev down to 7.9 oh. million. Now picks oh, up no. ace-queen suited. Hello, Totty with ace-king. The chip leader with aces. Spraggy, have you been cranking it? Only a fool would uh, cold four bet the ace queen suited though, so we might we might see a situation develop where <laughs> future of me can get away with it. Well, get away this from is, it. No, Isn't it be no. big Watch trouble this. for future of me? I think. Watch this. I if, mean, what about if Laszlo just flats on the button here with the aces? I think in that case, future of me would be able to get away from the hand. Actually, I think he's more okay. likely to bust with this raise three bet situation. I mean, like, he can still make a really big fold for these 40-something blinds, but even Brenjamin Sprague will attest that's not always the easiest thing to do with ace-queen yeah. suited. And there oh, is the effective shove. Wow, the virtual all-in. And now Hello Totti will get it, and with ace-king will be called by Omaha yeah. for rolls. We're going to have a three-way all-in here and a potential double KO because Laszlo has got both players covered. Oh, my gosh, he's slow rolling. The roses. And that is a straight draw. That oh! is the straight. That is Broadway for Hello Totti. So that sees Alex Kulev KO'd. It sees Hello Totti get a near triple up. And it sees Omaha for Rolls take a small knock and is down to 26 million. Still chip leader, though, with 13 now remaining. Uh, the value of wow. this pot, though, 16 million chips that look destined to be an Omaha for Rolls stack. It's going to be a big psychological. Yes. Dent as well. A very, I mean, uh, very swingy hand here. The chip lead, the chip lead that he would have right now with 12 players remaining, if aces had held, would be a phenomenal advantage. Yeah, uh, but you've certainly brought the action with you, Spraggy. Yeah, you have. <laughs>
And not to be lost in the shuffle of all this, I mean, there was something uh, amazing about what future of me, I mean, you know, from winning that, that, back -to -back that hands, right? high roller. Kings in yeah, but it just in general, like I, I started hearing rumblings about him a few stops ago before he really had done right. anything. And people were telling me like, watch this kid. And now just completely breaking out all the times we've seen sort of coverage of him in the last two days, just been playing hands so well, so interestingly, so creatively. And then you see the Kings and you just think like, okay, he's going to final table this thing. Maybe he's going to win this thing. And then bam, in two hands, it's just over. His day is over. He had 14 million a second ago. It really shows you how fortunes can change as we now see this four bet all in from Vegas 22. Crazy game. Yeah. And of course, um, th this is a dynamic as well with Hello Totty opening and Omaha for rolls with all the chips where you'd anticipate Omaha for rolls to be uh, kind of lighter in the three bet, applying some pressure to a stack that is feeling a lot of pressure. So ace queen suited is the hand that you want to be able to, to four bet ripple in there. And like you say, Alex Kulev playing mistake free over these two hands, but uh, you know, making perfect decisions or making good decisions at the very least, uh, but still finds himself eliminated from the tournament and Hello Totty spinning right back in. We do see aces here in the small blind. And I'd imagine a, a hand that is going to want to invest some more chips in the pot. <laughs> I'd say. And the kind of hand that, I mean, you know, we do see these types of hands, these suited wheel aces, fall into the four bet shove range, you know, a, a sort of sub 30, 40 big blinds. Um, instead, just playing it as a call, which is going to save him a great deal of money. Yeah, fortunate enough not to have caught the case ace on the flop of a board where Omaha for rolls will have a lot of hands that are easier to continue for this one uh, than this one, should I say. Also worth considering, uh, not just the, the fact that Omaha for rolls loses the 15.7 the million chips uh, to the ace king, but of yeah. course, if, if, if he was able to, like you say, have this 30 million chip lead, it creates such a more punishing dynamic uh, at the yeah. table whereby he'd be able to steal blinds uh, against the other players with 40 million chips that were just the future value of the chips that he would have won in this hand are worth a lot. Whereas even though Hello Totley doesn't have him covered now, uh, obviously Omar half rolls cannot act with the same impunity as if he had 40 million because Hello Totley can still you know, put a big dent in Omar half rolls stack with 15 and a half. So yeah, a real big swing for Omar half rolls, but still, still out in front and just uh, looking to regroup, I guess, and, and move past a pretty bad beat. And it's the running joke about Laszlo Butash is that he doesn't play that many tournaments. He is a high stakes PLO cash game player. We've seen him have success in PLO events in Scoot before and in some of the high roller events as well. When he does play an MTT, inevitably he's at the final table. Inevitably he's cashing for an obscene amount of money. I mean, I don't know what his success rate is. But I'm going to say, considering how few tournaments he plays, he's absolutely outperforming. He's definitely running above expectation. And a pretty interesting one here with Dingebrinker taking the, the three bet out of the big blind. You see a lot of players use this high-low combination with the three bets. You want to make, make it easier for your opponent to have the middle part of the deck, uh, which are typically the hands that are going to fold. Of course, pocket tens not going anywhere, oh. and certainly... Not going anywhere after this turn card. About a pot size bet remaining. Dingebrinker, you'd imagine, would preference having a heart. Uh, perhaps if we see here with Ace-3 offsuit with the Ace of Hearts, uh, some continuing of this bluff, but there we see a little slowdown once the, the situation goes south. And any extras, certainly with a hand now. But will be quite happy to try and get as many chips in as they can over the two streets. I think it's entirely possible Dinge Brinker still checks a hand uh, as good as aces or kings or, or even with a queen on it, uh, in it. Any extras will be targeting those sort of hands for value, but the ace three off, an easy fold. Now that we are down to 13 players, average stack is 11.2 million. So any extras just above average right now. Most of this table below average. Yeah. 
And these are always the more miserable spots for Dinge Brinker at a position against someone with 24 million. Obviously, caution is the aim of the game here. And Omaha for all is really in a position to, to turn the screw a little bit. A hand like 6-4 offsuit might even consider an ISO here. Not too much in the way of playability. Definitely benefits from just getting a fold preflop. Which is very easy to achieve when Dinge Brinker's in a spot where they don't really want to contest the big stack too often. I imagine Dinge Brinker now begging for some sort of fight back, some sort of resistance, picking up the queens yeah. on the button. And probably won't get any from these two hands. Picks up the blinds. Binge Brinker wins that hand. And we are switching over to the other table. Where we get a shove with sevens called by kings. And it is always coming seven. And that will see Ibo Town's Kings cracked, and that will see a KO that takes us down to 12. Two tables of six now. Brutal bust out for the cow, Ibo Town, who's been a, a big high stakes scoop regular. Player that uh, I've run into a lot over the last few weeks. Very tough opponent on the end of a nasty bad beat here. Seven is always coming, of course. As we have been informed for many years at this point. Now reigning defending champion Welcome Inferno. With an ace queen and a small blind. About 40 big blinds deep. I'd imagine investing in some regard. It's quite an yeah, interesting uh, yeah. shove. Yeah, big, big jam. Ace queen is, uh, is one of those hands that actually fits into this profile very very frequently it's one of those where there are so many hands that play well to do this against a wide button shove uh, and just denying so much equity think of some pairs sixes sevens fives yeah um, but of course we don't always want to have those hands we want to make sure we cover the rest of the deck so you'll see some king 10 suited you'll see some ace queen just so that you're not always face up with the the small pairs looking to deny equity mm-hmm It's one of those players as well that at this stage of the tournament, a lot of a lot of uh, folks might look at that and think, well, that's quite a risky play. You know, you're shoving in 40 big blinds. Um, but actually, the, often the opposite is true. The risky play is, is, is perhaps the three bet smaller uh, and your opponent comes along on the button or they four bet jab and ace-queen off is a little bit uncomfortable. So actually, it's just going to work so frequently that what looks like a high risk play is actually, uh, you know, quite low risk and, and very profitable. And this is very interesting because we saw Kilrog, who, you know, uh, when we started sort of the last level or so, and we can see that Stumpfed is, is fed up. Yeah, nice Kilrog, find here. Kilrog, a collapse Stumpfed. here. Yeah, um, we saw up, upwards of 15 to 20 million, and things just haven't gone Kilrog's way and takes that blocker from the big blind. Not going to work out. Yeah, I mean, that's what we spoke about before as well, is having this high-low combination. We just saw a three-bet from the big blind with ace-three offsuit. Now we see king-four offsuit. Um, again, unblocking that middle portion, hoping your opponent has the, the eight-nines or the ten-jacks, the middle right. part of the deck. So uh, it's nice to use the, the high-low there, but stump-fed, being able to re-resist and, and find the four-bet with king-jack suited. See, Paulinho has the Grafton ten-nine suited. Ace high is better than 10 high. Therefore, your hand is objectively better than Sam Grafton's hand. I thank you. There you go. But I, I, I need a better hand since Sam is a, a much more proficient player. Yeah, yeah, it's like you have to give him a little handicap, right? We have to give him... It's like <laughs> golf. Ah, hand cap Nice. Handicap. There also, you go. <laughs> again, from having watched totally intentional. many, many... Many hours of online poker. I'm going to say that 10-9 suited always tends to flop better than ace-seven. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think if you offered me 
one of those hands for the rest of my life, I take the 9-10 suited. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, so, beautifully playable hand. Stumpfed, raising with a lot of confidence now, and actually this, this should probably get all the way through. Maybe sometimes Danny gets a little frisky with appeal from the suited 8, but... Um, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar, Ben, but uh, Stumpfed just coming off a really impressive performance earlier in Scoop. So someone who's playing with a lot of confidence, and, and I think that showed in that King Jack suited shove, and, and these opens with the Queen Nines and the King Nines feeling like maybe the table momentum is swinging in their favor. Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice hand to draw attention to, because King Nine also is, is certainly a hand that you'd probably open in the cutoff. And we see uh, Stumpfed here opening yeah. it into five players at the table. Like you say, Griff, I think just uh, a sign of the confidence having found that four bet with King Jack suited, which is good. And it, it's, I guess, you know, if you look at the charts, it's standard. But 13 players left here and there, or 12 players left at the 10k WCOOP main, it's very easy to pass up these spots that are, you know, good in theory. But Stumpfed clearly not shying away from those, those choices right mm -hmm. now. So Tom K UK one asked the question, who is stumped? We don't know to be sure, but We're Joe has a theory that it's Anna Stump, someone he found on Instagram. Nice. The edutainer Anna Stump. And yes, Stump has 40 big blinds. Quite interesting to see this. We just spoke about stump, stump fed, uh, opening the king nine offsuit under the gun. Actually, our table chip leader choosing to fold the deuces here in the, in the six-handed setup. Certainly, you'd imagine if those roles were reversed and stump fed, or maybe some other players had this chip lead, then deuces would be coming in for an open. Perhaps an indication of how Diva's going to approach this, final two table spot. A little on the tighter side, perhaps. Oh, chips for the Brazilian player Danny C one nine nine four one eight nine three. Still have three Brazilian flags in the lobby. That's a quarter of the field. And here is another of the Brazilians, Paulinho, raising with fives. Interesting to see here, perhaps some continuing with the 10-7 suited. These suited eights on the button sometimes in for a three bet. We just saw that Stumpfed not afraid to perhaps extend a little bit. We see the 10-7 of hearts coming in for a call on the button in position. Yeah. Certainly seems to be feeling that confidence. Definitely. Five three calls as well. Well, a pair of sevens on the flop for Stumpfed. Imagine Paulinho will check a fair amount on these ace high boards. Stumpfed on the button will have a lot of aces in that range, or in their range. So Paulinho obliged to check with a hand like ace two, ace three, ace four. Doesn't really want to bloat the pot into those bigger aces. So a lot of their hands will check. Huge advantage now on this turn for Stumpfed. Yep, really nice, as you say, Griff. After they check back on the button, they're going to have the King Queens, the King Jacks, King Ten, probably flatting as low down as perhaps King Eight suited. So a really good card for Stumpfed now. If they wanted to, to take a stab at it, we can see they have a seven. Maybe this shows down uh, an adequate amount of time. They have the insurance of the flush draw. So I think both their options now in position are quite, quite good, quite valid. Yeah, you know, this is going to look like something like a king a good percentage of the time. And maybe you do want to pressurize those hands like nines and tens that are going to have a tough time continuing. So Stumps wins the pop, chips up to 40 big blinds. <laughs> and again, certainly a hand that kind of on the edge, on the perimeters of where we want to be, especially in the offsuit section. Stumped, 
not abating with this pressure, raising the ace-4 offsuit. That's exactly the kind of thing an edutainer would do, by the way. Maybe Joe's onto something. Oh, hello, flush draw. So just a reminder of the key bit of information about Stump that Statrick was able to unearth. This player did not have a cash of 20k or more until February of this year. Since then, five scores of 20k plus, including two scoop final tables. Kill roll continuing with this flush draw. Occasionally might see some benefit in the deuce, but at this stage of the tournament, perhaps not defending as many deuces in the big blind as they would earlier yeah. on. So this isn't going to give the sort of advantage that it might have given, you know, in level one or level two, where they're getting in there with some suited deuces. And we'll see now if Kilrog, arriving at the river with eight high, is able to make a bluff at this pot. It's going to be the only way they can win the hand. Yeah, and of course, not just the sort of rogue clubs that have missed like this 8-5, but also hands like Jack-8, Jack-9, and has elected to just wave the white flag. And I think this this shows, too, of how things really haven't, hasn't been going Kilrog's way. Maybe he doesn't have the confidence of a big bluff there because of you know getting the hand caught in the cookie jar in so many different situations. Also, the kind of confidence that Stump seems to be playing with um, so I think that was a good uh, give up there from Kilrog. Or perhaps an opportunity for them to reverse this momentum a little bit. Ace-10 in the small blind. Blind versus blind, 34 BBs deep. Got to be careful here raising too many hands in a sense of being denied equity because once you're at the 35 big blind mark, you know, your raises can quite easily be be played back at with a shove. You know, that's not true if we're 50, 60, 70 big blind steep. So that's probably why we see some of these, what you might think of stronger hands, mixing in this limp. Because they don't really want to raise and call off uh, yeah. all of the chips. And a very good flop for Polino flopping this flush draw. Quite a nice spot to take a stab at it. Five high benefits a lot. You're always going to get a better hand to fold if they fold. And of course, if your opponent continues, you have the insurance of that spade. Even more rights now it with ended. this open ender. I mean, quite incredible for it to almost be a flip on the turn. Yeah, heaps of outs right now. It depends whether Paulinho feels that they want to try and bow one of these exact type of hands that Kilrog have off of their equity. I think it would also be quite reasonable to check back uh, and take a free river card, try and make your hand, maybe make some bluffs at the river. It's not that comfortable if we get check raised here with five high, but they've gone for the more aggressive option. And Kirog continues to resist. There's the brick river. Nice. Can Paulinho find it? Five high. That's not going to win unless it finds a bet. But definitely a little bit awkward. Kilrog not incapable of slow playing with an eight or even a three. Yeah. And of course, check calls twice, has a lot of these ace highs that now it's board double paired. All the draws missed, two flush draws, some straight draws, but Paulinho goes for it, 1.8 million. Well, Good this would you. be a hero call if Kilrog can call one more time with ace high. Treacherous situation for Kilrog. How does the Ten of Spades five affect seconds. things, Spraggy, at all? Uh, I think it's probably... Seconds. When ranges are so wide, I don't think it's a huge consideration. You might yeah. think that some players won't continue through three streets with that many spades uh, because they don't like bluffing the missed flush draws. So I don't think it's necessarily a huge detriment. I think the bigger problem right. is the fact that Polino checking in that big blind just has all of the 8x. A decent amount yeah. of the 3x if they don't choose the ISO. So there's just too many full houses to, to warrant calling. 
Uh, and as I alluded to, Kilrock still has some pretty strong hands himself. Probably gets there with an 8 sometimes, or a slow play 3 sometimes. So, chooses to fall BSI. This time Paulinho's bluffing, but much credit to Paulinho for for continuing the three streets and, and taking it down with a 5 high. Yeah, and that's part of... Um you know the call on the turn as well it's not it's not just about this thing where it's like okay well if i call on the turn because i think he might be bluffing i should call on the river it's you know it's it's a lot it's a lot of the time you are going to get some give ups especially on a very interesting river like the eight but just goes to show how tough some of these players are and polino finds that third barrel well kill rock again in a situation where potentially looking to reverse the momentum pick up some chips flopping quite nicely versus the big blind Choosing to continue. But Danny C does take the lead on the flop with a pair of nines. Kilrog needs Danny a break. C. How about an eight? One, nine, How about an eight, four, How about one, an eight, eight for nine, Kilrog? Three, be precise. That's our money card. Action killer turn. Let's see if Kilrog wants to continue this story of having a queen. Seems like the sort of board where if they go for two, their bluffs might want to go for three. Since Danny C, 1994, 80, uh, can potentially, you know, call twice with a nine, maybe fold some rivers. The ace of spades drops. And Danny C and... checks. And Kilrog yeah, will again this... need to find a bet to win. If it gets to showdown, the pot will go to Danny C, 1994-1893. But if Kilrog... You just hate to lose a showdown here against like 3-5 suited oh. or 9-8 yeah. off, you know. Switching! Still a hand in progress at the other table. Ace-king four, ace king rather versus ace-3. And this pot likely to be going in the direction of Omaha for rolls. Kind of an awkward board. Obviously, for both hands, we can see that Omaha for Rolls has this three, uh, but may not be particularly overjoyed that it's the best hand. I mean, this is clearly a bluff uh, with the Ace of Clubs blocker on this four straight board, and Omaha for Rolls does force a, a fold from a worse hand, but is going to get a lot of folds from better. And that takes us to the next break, and it is Davaza who has the chip lead going into this break 26 million. Laszlo Butash, Omaha for Rolls, now second in chips with 23.8 million. And third in chips is our friend Stumpt from Canada with 16.5 million. So Stumpt playing 40 big blinds. The player who may or may not be Dr. Anna Stump, the evangelist, edutainer, and empowerer. Uh, let's get Joe Stapleton back as we bring out the quad box for the first time. Scoop 2023 that we've demonstrated our quad box. Um, Spraggy, I have to ask, obviously the series now coming to a close. It's taken up pretty much the whole month of May. How has Scoop been for you? Good, very good actually. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, we've had lots of wins, sadly no wins in Scoop events. Uh, so I, I remain Scoop titleless. I'm still three behind uh, my friend and yours, Finted Hand, better known as Easy with Aces Online. Um, but I did win the 530 Bounty Builder on my birthday. I won the 1K Monday 6 Max. So a profitable series financially, but it would have been nice. Uh, I think my best finish yeah. in a scoop event was four in uh, one of the 530 Picos, one of the 530 Turbos. We did have a, a scoop final table and a couple other threatening runs. But overall, very enjoyable series here on Twitch, here on YouTube, and, and winning money, I, I, I can't complain. So, just to be clear, that bounty builder that you won, and we'll talk about the big hand in just a moment, wasn't there something freaky about it? Like, the amount of money you won was, like, almost the same as the age that you've just turned? It was on my birthday, and I won yeah. first place for $33,000 on my 33rd birthday, which that, I didn't realize it was pointed freaky. out to me afterwards, but it is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit freaky, especially considering typically first place in this 530 bounty builder is not that much, or it's not as much as 33,000, but I just absolutely god moded the final table. So I ended up taking 20,000 in bounties plus 13,000 for first. So yeah, it was kind of a nice. And, nice and he's in Aries and just rammed his way through it. Oh, Taurus, very Joe, nice. Taurus. 
Bull bowled his way through it. Bull, bull, <laughs> I love the way you pivoted something. there. I'm going to say it was kind of like a glitch in the Matrix, Spraggy winning for 33 on his 33rd birthday. But I do have to talk about that hand, which I think everyone must have seen on social media by now. So just to be clear, you're at this final table, and literally nobody, nobody has any chips apart from you and Tonka, who have, like, the two massive stacks. And then you get involved in, like, this collision. At what point are you thinking, why? I mean, the point that you make quads, you're like, happy days. But is there at some point where you're thinking, should we really be playing this pot? Should we really be playing this 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 hand together right now, considering the dynamic at this table? Well, I, I sort of alluded to this even before the hand kicked off. I was like, imagine we play a pot right now, because as you say, I had two and a half million, he had two and a half million, then everybody else has like 300,000, 400,000, yeah. 500,000, and we're six left. So I'm thinking, imagine we play a pot right now somehow, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking it would just take an unbelievable cooler. Q, <laughs> I open sixes, queen 10 six, bet call, turn six, bet call. And then as soon as the river's a 10, and you'll see in the clip, I'm like, this is such a good card for him, whether he has a 10 or not, he's probably gonna lead. And then he does lead and I'm like, well, he has the 10. It's like, it, it's, <laughs> it's actually gonna happen. So then actually looking back, talking to Parker, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, kind of got caught up in the moment a little bit, but he overbets the river for 1 million. And then I shove for an extra million, which, it's, you know, he's looking at his, uh, this full house of tens, but we decided I probably don't shove anything worse. And if he folds with the dynamic, four other players still have like 300, 400, 500K. So looking yeah. back, he's pretty confident that if he was, you know, thinking really sharply, he probably should fold river or take a different line or, or something like this. But I mean, yeah, what a coming together that me and Parker make the final table. Obviously we're very good friends. We stream, you know, opposite each other for all of these years. We both have these big stacks. And then we make quads into the uh, full house on my birthday, and then I win 33k on my 33rd birthday. It was a, uh, it was a really one of my favorite streams. Uh, you know, one of my favorite folks. I can imagine. Really good fun. I can imagine. Uh, we're about to return to the action in the 10k scoop main event, the high buying version of the main event. 12 players remaining, playing down to nine tonight. And I'm going to leave you as we continue to play to that final table in the company of Joe, Griffin, and Spraggy. Hello, my babies. Hello, Joe. What's up? What a, what a team we've got here. Just three eliminations before we call it a day. And then tomorrow we come back and cover all three main event final tables, specifically this one. Gonna keep an eye on the other two. With just a casual one million thirty-six thousand one hundred and ninety-nine dollars and sixty-five cents up top, hey? Eh? I mean look at all those digits. It's just like bing bang bing bang bing bang bang. It's a nice amount of digits to win. Spraggy, to go back to that hand you were just talking about, I think I know what the answer is supposed to be. But like let's say you're you're Rolls are reversed in that hand, right? I would have folded, and Joe. Let's say I, I probably would have just check folded the river, Joe. Yes. Now, as as part of that, though, would you at all be going, this is my friend and he's probably not running this huge bluff against me in this spot? Is that any percentage of your thought process had you been, uh, had your mm. shoes been on the other foot? Um, The thing about the situation is I can just, like, it's just so hard for me to bluff the river because Parker just has a 10 a lot, right? The way the hand plays out, he just has the 10 a lot. So, right. Because people obviously asking about like the, the dynamic of us being friends is they think like I'm bluffing Parker more in this spot because we're buddies and I'm like messing around with him a little bit more or something sure. like this. But he just, he just has a 10. So it's not a spot where I can really <laughs> bluff or do anything about it, right? He's just, he's going to have a full house. It's very hard for me to bluff, which is why... You know, Parker sort of, and, and I, when we spoke about it afterwards, decided he should probably at least consider a fold. But it's just very sick hand either way. Quite a sick hand. I know, look, I, I don't have the mentality of a professional poker player, but I would just sit there going, I don't, I don't, know, I don't think my friend would do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, I just told everyone out there who considers themselves to be my friend, that I will be so easily bluff, bluffed by you. Yeah, you, you've got well, a lot of Well, there's also just a lot of... 
there's also just a lot of money out there, right? Like you could just be chopping. It's a lot to consider. So it's it's not like you're ever thinking really Spraggy's bluffing, but it's 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 tough. That, that's that's the big one, is just I have a ten also, mm -hmm. but yeah. It's possible. No action there for the Kings for Leap A Piv. Pocket sevens for Dingebrinker. Any extras? who had around 21 million when we started the coverage has now dropped down to 11 million. That is still sixth on the leaderboard. Max with King eight suited. Baby got backs. Baby got backs. Does raise. Was, it's got to be pretty tempting to raise, and the raise does happen. Yep, definitely uh, about where we want to be. With the king eight suited, these suited kings, very playable. Only a six handed poker game we have going on here. This is another choice as well for any extras. I think, you know, almost at this stack depth has the exact sort of hand that if you were going to choose the three bet, you would want your opponent to have queen jack, king jack, jack ten. So not an ideal candidate. Again, uh, coming back to this high-low, you want to unblock the middle portion of the deck, which Queen Jack wow. is. So a very astute fold, and this is a much better bluffing hand, right? Because now your opponent can have the, the middle part of the deck that is much more likely to raise fold. So a nice pick up here from Lipa Piv. I don't want to lose the thought. So you want to, if you're going to three-bet bluff, you want to not have a hand like Queen Jack so you can unblock other people having Queen Jack so they can fold it. It, it depends on... Stage of the tournament, uh, positions, uh, stack depth. Uh, I don't like really this, pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> these are obviously important facets of uh, our decision making uh, in a poker game. But uh, yeah, it's nice if your opponent can have 8 9 a little bit more often, or King 8 a little bit more often, or Jack 10 a little bit more often. Um, so you have the blocker to the top end with the ace, and then you don't have anything that blocks the middle part of the deck that raises and folds. Getting in the leads cool. w weeds a little bit. Thanks. Uh, with blockers, Joe, and I know. The blockers aren't real. There are some situations when blockers aren't real. The times I don't believe in blockers not being real is like when you have a queen high flush and your opponent shoves on you. They have the ace high flush a lot. They have the king high flush a lot. I don't care that you're blocking the flush. Something, something, decision tree. I always <laughs> wanted to say decision tree. I don't really know how to apply it. it sounded kind of decision tree -y. That was nice. That was nice, Griff. Oh, I love that from you. <laughs> oh, I just want you to live Dude. your dreams. <laughs> Thank you, yes. I need to understand. Making Spraggy laugh is one of them, so you're helping out right now. Dinge Brinker, uh, he, three batting. He's getting there. And this seems like one we can say goodbye to. I had a position always a little bit think. tougher to want to get involved. And there's the right. lay down. Who's the shortest deck? It's Bax. Bax and then Killrog. Ace seven for Omaha. And obviously, 50 big blind steep here. We have some considerations that Omaha for Rolls has us quite aggressively outchipped, has the button. Uh, and at this depth, is capable of calling a lot in position. So perhaps if we're going to choose the three bet, we want something a little bit more playable. Ace three with the defend and both players catching top pair. Ah. 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 Definitely going to stick around for one, and, and happier with this ace than some of, some of the others. There's probably some even bigger sighing with, like, a six of hearts. But uh, has this three of spades. Maybe can make some backdoor flush draws. Maybe a little backdoor wheel. The eight, obviously not very inviting at all. How's your singing voice, Ben? Uh, Griff, you know me enough well enough, but I'm quite a self-deprecating person. Mm -hmm. Any extra Unless space in your pot-sized bet? Oh, Unless you're getting me ready for a, a chop, in the morning chop, and chop, uh, chop, chop, chop I'm, I'm just saying, listen, buddy. 
Any five, any eight, any nine, any ten, any jack, any queen, I any think king. Any extras might That's be pretty be close to jump. just land this down. Ooh, yeah, I think right. it is, does in fact lay it down. I was gonna say it's and gonna be very tough up. for us to see a chop here. Um, anyway, everyone, everyone loves alien up, chop. Um, Without, without tooting my own horn, I have, a fan, I have an absolutely unbelievable singing voice to the point where, in another lifetime, I, you know, small, small pub singer, club singer, cruise ship, cruise ship level. I was going to so, say, if it's 1.35 in the morning and uh, Oasis is on the blower, then Spraggy is a belter. I'm your guy. So I had a great conversation with... Um, Oh, remind me of the name of that uh, beautiful Viking of a man that won EPT Paris. Couldn't have been. Or not one, pardon me. Couldn't have been second. that great of a conversation if you can't remember his name. But yes, Peter Yorgna came in second. Peter Yorgna, yes. Pardon me. Okay. Anyway, so he had a little uh, entourage with him. And one of them was a uh, professional opera singer. And I had a great conversation with him. And I was talking to him. And then I sang a little tune for him. And I said, tell me, what do you think of my voice? He said... He, he said something like that I was like a tenor or he gave a name to what my thing was, but that he was pretty sure I am completely tone deaf. <laughs> oh. oh. So that well, was right. So he, he basically showed you your horoscope. Like he was right like, oh, you're a Capricorn, no, it was like, can't sing. It was one of the most backhanded compliments I've ever gotten. Like, <laughs> You're more like a fiver than a tenor. Yeah. <laughs> and Lipipiv. With the top pair, nice big meaty value bet in position against any two extras who doesn't connect. Any two extras? Any extras who does not connect to the board and is in the bin. It doesn't sound like you're drawing completely dead, Griff. I mean, totally tone deaf. There, there might be some room for, you know, work, working something in there. But don't, don't give up just yet. All I'm saying is the only times I sing is when I'm on the stream here and Joe and James are singing with me. Family. Action folds around to the shardest stack. Bax, who folds the ace. And look, I'm, I'm no rocket surgeon, but I had a very strong feeling that things were going to grind to almost a halt uh, from around 14, 15 players until we do get to the final table. It's going to be... It's going to be... a while. Yeah, obviously we're at the stage of the tournament where it matters most, jockeying for position, lots of money in, lots of money in play. Every decision that you're witnessing now, even something as simple as this uh, blind versus blind limp, is worth tens of thousands of dollars, right? 250,000 chips right. with a million up top and 12 players left. We're playing, we're watching a very, very high stakes poker game right now. Um, Hello Totty, a, a very unplayable hand here, choosing to go for the ISO, and Lipopiv sticking around and flopping incredibly well. Um, I'd imagine there's going to be some leads, apparently. We're finding a lead here on the Jack-10-8. And Hello Totty with a hand completely disconnected, unwilling to continue. But Lipopiv will take the pot. Um, but as I said, all of these decisions right now, you know, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. Often people are brought in by high-stakes cash games. Well, at this stage of the tournament, we're effectively playing, you know, a very, very... Uh, high stakes game of poker. Nom nom. Nom nom. Pocket eights for Omaha for rolls. Pocket eights and all the chips. Ooh, that was Apparently a... you nailed the, the nom nom, buddy. Good yeah, job. Yeah, I did. Dinge Brinker. On the brink of Dinge. <laughs> so dumb. I love it. There you go, pal. <laughs> Nom, 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 nom. And there they are again. The pocket eights with an ace ten on the button. Lipopiv and Hello Totty with very similar stack depths. We'll see a raise to start. Hello Totty. What do we got, Griff? Three bet? Call? Could go either way, potentially. There's the three bet. There Ooh, is baby. the three bet. It's so disappointing. King Jack suited. You're all excited to play this. Well, I think if, you know, if Omaha for rolls does somehow find the cold four bet here, I think this gets through both of their, both of his opponents. So don't count him out yet. 
Don't count them out yet, especially with that stack. Two of these 12 million yeah. stacks, he's kind of middle of the pack. Look at that. I'd love to see it. Boom. These middle of the pack stacks, this is where you can apply the most amount of pressure. So the King Jack suited, definitely overextending here a little bit. You'd imagine, uh, you know, Ace Queen suited, gonna have a cold four bet, maybe King Queen suited, King Jack suited getting in there as well. Really shows Omaha for rolls in 10. And Woo. as you said, Griff, double takedown. Beauty. Up to 28.7 million now, trailing only Dave Zah. And now with pocket clangers. Surely we'll be facing an open from Hello Tati. And this is the one where you start to get really excited. You're just playing quite an aggressive style. Yeah. Made that cold four bet. Now you pick up the kings and you're thinking, come on, now's the time for nobody to believe me. Start raising it up once again out of position. 2.2 million. Oof. And having played with Hello Totty for many years, I wouldn't rule anything out. We just said not to rule out the King Jack suited. I wouldn't rule anything out from Hello Totty here, even with an ace nine off suit. Have you ever asked Hello Totty why their avatar is Jen Shahadi in a wrestling match? I don't. I don't know. I I, I wasn't familiar that um, Jen had wrestled at what looks like quite a professional Me level. Me neither. But um, <laughs> Hello Totty's had that picture for for a long time. It's quite intimidating, isn't it? Quite an intimidating player. King Jack for leap eight, Piv. Omaha four rolls with the two fours. He's gonna make the call. Any extras with the 57 varieties. Folds it. 10, seven, six, two diamonds. Four is good for now. Leap this eight, is Piv. a board where Omaha yes. rolls, flatting in position. We'll have some of these Tens. We'll make some straight draws. Maybe make some sets as well. So quite a, you know, unsettling flop. I would say for the out of position with the king jack. Fours will take it down. Oh my goodness! <laughs> now aces. And this could be pretty big trouble for any extras. We talked about that, you know, hand with ace queen when it was button small blind and how the the player shoved in the 40 big blinds in this situation we're looking at about what 34 and the range of omaha for rules of the cutoff is probably going to be as wide as any extras would have been on the button in that hand so we might just see a shove here and that's going to be big trouble for any extras and he just folds mm -hmm. wow 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 -y. that is a I very impressive that, lay down with... I mean, well, well, I don't know if it's got what right. It was right in that moment, but maybe just it's didn't like his when option. cards up. But yeah, like you say, Griff, it's uh, it's certainly quite a a surprising decision to fold against someone who, as you pointed out, has been playing a lot of pots. It's not like Omaha for rolls has sat there and not really getting involved. Um, I would have expected That's, that to one's see some weird. sort of combat. Yeah, that one's that one's weird to me. I think that like if you're gonna if you really don't want to shove, then you should just three bet fold or just flat right i don't know I, th I just think you're i don't know it's it's strange to me we'll it, see I how mean, uh, assume... see how that develops uh, any extras choosing to stay out of trouble i mean what we what we should and have to understand is that obviously we are in a situation where battling omaha for rolls right now is very punishing if you are wrong but I do, I do agree with you, Griff, and I, I could be very open to being wrong. Um, but Ace Jack seems like we're playing very, very tight versus versus these opens. Um, I'd certainly imagine, you know, we can make some folds that we wouldn't ordinarily make, but Ace Jack does seem like a very snug decision. I mean, Omaha for rolls is playing so tight. You have to respect the raises. <laughs> I think there's been one hand of the last five that. Laszlo did not raise. Yeah, that's what, you know, that's uh, sort of a mean, right? It's not like Omaha for Rolls has just been folding away. And we just alluded to the fact that they got kings and they've been playing very aggressively. So maybe just yeah, demonstrates how much any extras yeah. wants to dodge Omaha for Rolls right now. 
Yeah, but I, I think the, the, the part of it that really is strange to me is that I think it's pretty clear that any extras is like really knows what they're doing. Like we've seen, like we saw any extras have a big chip stack earlier was running complex bluffs, you know, three betting wide, a bunch of different stuff. So it's very strange to me to see that ice jack fold, but maybe just didn't like the options and, and man wants to just sort of bend the knee to Omaha for rolls. Doesn't and but yeah. guys, doesn't Bex have like six big blinds? Is, is that not a factor also? Do we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, these short stacks around are definitely a factor. And and what mm -hmm. I will say is when you see someone like uh, any extras who's been playing a reasonable amount of scoop, plays a lot of the high stakes scoops that I've seen, uh, and from what I've seen plays very solid, Ooh. whenever I see something like this, I'm my brain is like, okay, why is this good? Why might this be uh, a play? If it's something that I would not myself do, and it's from someone whose game that clearly is someone yeah. whose game we should be respecting. Of course. Like, okay, that, well, no, that's the what are the factors question, that we're seeing Why here? is it correct, not why is it a mistake? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally still think it's, you know, it's, it's quite tight, but, um, you know, I didn't imagine that any extra is a very studied player. And so, you know, this is Jack. Maybe there's something. The only thing we can think of is that Omaha for Alls just has heaps of chips, and there's a lot of shorter stacks I mean, around at this depth of yeah, time. Yeah, it's also, yeah, if you think about maybe, let's just say, uh, a bad feeling coupled with uh, deciding to randomize in like a sort of, 80 20 situation where like 20 percent of the time i'm going to fold and 80 percent of the time i'm going to put chips in this pot and then he randomizes in some way looks at the clock and just says you know what i'm just folding so there's there's so many things you never know what's going through the heads of and and what kind of computations what kind of sort of decision trees are happening uh with some of these superstar <laughs> high rollers wow and he rolls it out <laughs> in context there as well wow that's wonderful <laughs> Two inside five uh, we got minutes. an open here <laughs> from Lipe Piv with the ace two suited. Just a flat from Hello Toddy with the two tens. Laszlo on the button, all the chips, queen jack off. And it does three go bet. for the 4x plus three bet, 2.2 million. Very interesting Lipe situation Piv. now for Hello Toddy. Very yeah, interesting we'll be situation. Making an exit from this hand. Hello, Toddy. With, I guess, um, Hello, Toddy was not specifically hoping for this, or maybe more of the chips would have gone in at this point. Yeah, not really. I mean, this is one of those hands again at this stack depth, this stage of the tournament. If you three bet and you face a four bet, your hand shrivels up very quickly. You know, it's a very punishing spot to want to three bet call off the tens. So at, at this depth of this stage, we pay mostly a flat. And again, we see Omaha for rolls just finding that perfect uh, opportunity to deny the equity. And what we also what we have to think about in situations just like this when we're seeing cards up is we can see that Hello Totty has the tens. We can see that they have the best hand. What we have to factor in is if they are wrong and they back raise ship it into aces here, this play is losing so much money. Like the yeah. ICM considerations, this play is just burning dollars. We just spoke about we're effectively watching a very, very high six game that if uh, Hello Totty is wrong and Omaha for rolls just snaps off the Jacks plus, then we're eliminated in a spot where we could potentially be on for hundreds of thousands of dollars in ladders. So this is why Omaha for Rolls is able to find these three bets, because Hello Totty just has to play very, very tight against the stack. Do you think that when Laszlo is making these three and four bets that are sort of like denying people's equity, is he just at home being like, "Wee!" or is he um, just kind of chill about With it? With this stack at this point and the way things have been going for him, potentially, because it seems like everything he's touched has turned to gold at the moment, the, the King Jack suited yeah. four bet, this Queen Jack three bet. Um, Queen Jack off suit, you know, a very nice hand because what's the best hand that Hello Totty is going to flat here versus the under the gun that doesn't want a three bet call? The best hand is probably pocket jacks. So Queen Jack, you block that best case scenario for Hello Totty. It's kind of a nice hand selection from Omaha for all. So a little bit of we, a little bit of big stack, uh, but definitely... Uh, very nice situations that Omaha for Rolls has taken right now. Like, I just can't imagine, you know, not having this stream on and 30 minutes later seeing the hands that you're getting people to fold and being like, oh, my God. It's definitely uh, dreamland territory. And, and like you say, Joe, it kind of caught everybody at the perfect part of their range. Like, getting the 10s yeah. to fold here is perfect. Getting the, the 8s and the ace 10, it was sort of bottom for both players. Getting that fold with the King Jack is kind of perfect. So that's when you know things are on your side. It might be your day. Not just the run of the cards on the on the middle, 
But, uh, you know, these pre-flop situations where you're finding people at the right positions in their range. Yeah. First hand we've seen someone else win in a while. And we actually spoke right. earlier, um, Griff, whilst you were on there with the Omaha for Rolls, lost this big hand with aces against Hello Totti's ace king. Uh, and we said, well, if only they'd hold, held here, they'd have set up a really nice dynamic. Now they're sort of edging into that dynamic where they have 30 million. Everybody else, four players, even around the 9 to 10 million chip mark, fakes short at a million. So all of these middling stacks, they're just going to get pressured and pressured and pressured. And actually, Omaha for Rolls will be looking to keep this set up for as long as possible. Because right now, yeah. very few players can fight back against them. So it's just steel chips, steel chips, steel chips. This would not be considered a steal with the pocket tens. But the rest of the table does not know that. Pocket fours for Hello Tati, who is going to peel from the button. No shot that Omaha can hit a set. I guess that's somewhat a good news for pocket fours. Interesting defend here. Hello Tati, uh, actually in the small blind, going to be out of position, but it's one of these hands that's like, obviously... It's almost going to be a pure set mine because we just spoke about the pressure that's going to be applied. Earlier in the tournament, perhaps Hello Totti peels the fours and then is able to stick around on a flop and maybe do something on turns and rivers. But at this stage, if you don't find a four on the flop, it's very hard to, you know, check raise bluff occasionally or check call, things like this. So pretty much a pure set mine from the fours from the small blind. I'd prefer to be flatting ace jack here. That's what I'll, all I'll say. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I absolutely agree. You know what I mean? And so. with that pot there, Omaha for rolls is now the overall chip leader. Now, Davza is at the other table and is probably doing something similar to this because Davza has just barely dipped under 30 million for the first time since I've been back on this broadcast. And there it is. Bax all in with Ace Trey. Any extras tanking for some reason. There we go. Folds around to Dinge Brinker, which will also be a fold even for four and a little bit big blinds. I'm half a rolls, getting a very good price here, sports fans. Just an extra three BBs closing the action with a very nice hand. That is the call. Pair of aces is going to be real good for Bex. Uh-oh, some life on the turn for Omaha, but no, it is a double up for Bex. There's Eight always a swap. Lines. Oh, not any great hands here. Any extras maybe in the mode right now where... They're going to time bank slightly, see if we can lose someone at the other table. Yep, 12 left. Definitely so, worth keeping an eye on everything going on. Yeah. If they can somehow make it to ninth, that's a 22k pay jump. Omaha shoves on Bex, and Bex lays down the 10 high. Ooh, and interesting hands here. Yeah. I wonder, once we see, presumably, just an open from Omaha for rolls and a shove from Bex, I guess any extras just going to get away from it. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has this uh, sort of Bex taking the bullet for them kind of situation once Bex is all in and, you know, potentially a player at risk. I think six is just worth negative thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to call off uh, the rest of the stack with Omaha for rolls still to act, so... I'd imagine. Yeah, you're almost kind of relieved when this happens. Especially given the ace jack fold. You know, we just spoke about any extras kind of wanting to play very delicately oh, against some half a roll. This time, any extras finds yeah, the is... four bet rip with the sixes. Yeah. And, and I guess just, you know, rely on this big fold from the, the button. But we are flipping. Big diamond turn. But a full house will take it for Bex. Three queens for Bex mm. is another double up. And we are switching to other table, table 
dives uh and we are also focusing here on Kilrog, who is now, by virtue of those two double ups from Bay X, is now the shortest stack with about eight big blinds. This raise from Danny C should be getting through. Yep. Yep. And King and Queen for Kilrog under the gun. 12 handed for now, but Kilrog, this is going to go, I think. Makes it a million. Tis artisanal. Ace five suited for Welcome Inferno. Defending and champion dealing with this event. Still yeah, basically a seven big blind all in. Welcome Inferno chooses to pass with the ace five suited. And Jack five suited. It's actually a worse hand than ace five suited. By uh <laughs> right away, so that will be folding as well. Cutting edge insight there. Yeah, that was that's why, they, that's why they bring me in. You guys, uh, I'm always, you know, occasionally with a three-man. Yeah, but every once in a while, I'll be, at, I'll be in the booth with Sam Graff, and, and he'll be like, "Okay, let me explain why Jack Five suited is better than Ace Five suited here." <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him do it, <laughs> and I'm just like, "Well, that's three cards worse because Ace, King, Queen, Jack." <laughs> there you go. You idiot. Sam doesn't know what he's talking about. King, 6-5, two spades. This is all Inferno. Heaven's Gate. Now, the GOAT asks on YouTube, are there any well-known players playing here? Yes. Thank, Thank you for your question. question. And Kilrog will be agonizingly close to wanting to flop some sort of connection to the board and, and run with their 1.9 million. They do have this gut shot. Of course, with the, the short stack, it's very hard to continue and, and, and try and realize. You know, if we we're a little bit deeper, this actually might be kind of a nice hand to certainly either uh, continue with a call or a check raise. We do see them Ooh. check jam. Welcome Inferno with the flush draw is going to call off and actually have the best hand. Makes the Turns flush the spade. Return. Good night. Good luck. Kill Rog. Kill Ed. In 12th place for $78,306. Still have 10th and 11th place. They're going to make that same amount of money, but we are now two eliminations away from being done for the day and at the final table. And with yeah, that, and we're uh, actually... We were going to let Griffin stay if Kilrog doubled up, but since he didn't, Griffin had the, uh, Griffin had the gut shot there. So we're going to say goodbye to Griffin Benger as well. Bye, Griff. See you bye, tomorrow. Griff. I love you guys. <laughs> Love you too, Griff. It's actually Canadian law that he has to play hockey at some point today, and we didn't give him a long enough break earlier. So yeah, he hasn't uh, he hasn't got his minutes in. We Just don't me get and you, Sprague. In we don't want to get anybody in any trouble, Joe. Let the man play, especially not in Canada. Yeah, and I think this uh, just to, to draw back to this eight nine shove. Uh, obviously, when we're again we're looking at cards up. We are just going to see a very wide button open, a wide button C bet, and hopefully a fold a decent amount of time. So Kilrog not really playing on that gut shot, playing on the fact that their opponent's going to fold, uh, and they pick up all that the chips. That seems really the reasonable to me. Is anyone making a big deal about that? That seemed that no, seemed, no. But you know, putting it in with nine high, the tournament life. But we're just really hoping for folds. Our short stack got to go with it. Uh, Danny C here's going a, with it here with this gut another. shot, this six deuce. Yeah, here, here's another similar play. Yeah, this is really nice. This this is a play designed to put pressure on the exact sort of hand uh, that we oh see. Oh my goodness! And of Stump course, Stumpfed gets sticky with the eight. Danny gets there on the turn. This is ah, uh, this is the plan every time, right? This is the real plan. It's like okay, this is the real. You, this is uh, the real plan for sure. And you know, this is why yeah. we always we always bluff with equity. We always bluff with a way to improve. You know, this is why six deuce here is way better than four deuce because just occasionally 
the seven is always coming. A wise man once said, uh, unfortunately for Danny C, whilst they'll be happy to this sort of get out of jail free card on the turn, this uh, card that's going to allow them to win the part, Stump Fed does not have a hand that's going to get coolered and is able to move away. But Danny C back towards that 40 big blind mark. Ace two suited for Devza. Ace seven suited for Danik. And I, I, I wouldn't know it's what breaking. to do here. I don't like this show. Do I don't we... like having ace seven suited here. I know I don't want to fold because it's yeah. a very nice hand. I don't really want to call out a position too often. I don't want to three bet and open them up to four bet. I don't want to jam because if I get called, I'm dust. We do see Danny C electing to three bet the hand. You love a7, Sraggy. This would be a horrible position for you to be in. Now, and now with the ace deuce in position. Yeah, this re-raise does open the door a little bit for the chip leader to get real mean about this. But doesn't. It go. Lays it down. I yeah, definitely think we could see some playback with the ace twos. I don't think four bet is entirely off the table. I think I think it would be a bit of an overextension. Um, we actually saw Omaha for rolls call a three bet in position uh, a few orbits ago with a similar chip distribution. Um, so Dev Devers are playing a little bit uh, tighter, perhaps uh, in position even with these these suited ace x. Perhaps doesn't feel like they want to jeopardize their stack. Twenty nine million. It is a very good distribution for them, uh, able to apply some pressure. But also, you know, sometimes when pressure is pushed back to you, you just have to show a little bit of respect. Take your, take your foot off the gas a little bit. Spraggy, would you mind answering Sword of the Evening, who asked, are you going to commentate tomorrow as well? I don't believe I'm in tomorrow. I believe that you are going to be it's rejoined and by Sam. one of Poker's premier commentators. Uh, yes, and another member Fintan. of the team will be taking over for me tomorrow. I was, and Got Sam Grafton. was, <laughs> But either way. A three-time scoop champion. Finton Hand. And Sam Grafton. That's a, that's a nice treat. Two of the best. I mean, these are always Sam the most Grafton difficult situations to navigate, Joe. These blind v. blind. You've kind of got a bit Absolutely. of it. You've got the gut shot. Kind of want to see rivers, but you're out of position and, and, and betting into someone, as we've seen. There's a lot of aggression in these blindly blind situations sometimes. Yeah, I've Welcome pretty much given up on doing commentary during blind on blind hands. I, I can say what's happening, but that's about it. Yeah, I've pretty much given up playing them, so we're, we're, both, <laughs> we're both mentally checked out. It's just, that's so tricky because there's so much to consider. Ranges are so wide. Uh, and you have to do a little bit of this with everything. So there's some raising out of position, there's some raising in position, uh, there's some limp raising. So you have to try and work out three different ranges of limp and you call your opponent, limp and you raise your opponent, raise and you call your opponent, or raise and your opponent calls you. So you're juggling so many different wide ranges. It's just really tough to, to find good strategies in these blind v blind. There's so much respect for people who really have that blind v blind nailed down because it is so, so difficult, but it's also a very commonly played situation, right? A lot of the time, you are going to end up in a blind v blind scenario. So, so common. Yeah, finding these uh, these good decisions blind v blind is, is very important and something that I'm just not particularly good at. Well, Dave's uh, defended the big blind with 10-6 offsuit and missed about as hard as you can. Yeah, and uh, Danny C quite happy with the flop. The, th the three is going to give a little bit of disconnectivity. So you can see a variety of sizes. I think with the three uh, disconnecting from the king or the queen, we will see some, some smaller bets. And Danny C here not going particularly wild. You know, if this three is up towards a, an eight or maybe a nine, you might see some bigger bets looking to protect a little bit more. But the three allows uh, a more gentle approach to the flop. Stump fed with ace jack. Thanks, by the way, to Peace and Love, Sebastian Huber, for the raid. Welcome, Raiders. 
Now, there's, uh, there's a man. If you guys are watching across uh, Twitch platforms or YouTube platforms, head over to Twitch and give Peace and Love a follow because um, joined the team 18 months ago, a little over a year ago, and now just streams 14 to 16 hours a day, every day, deep runs, 5K final tables during scoop, just uh, really turn into a crusher. Definitely one to watch on the team. It's going to be a, already is a very good poker player and streamer, but if you're looking to learn some, uh, tournament strategies and like watching people play poker 16 hours a day then Seb's your guy Stump fed with second pair not flush draw Polino does have a club is gonna stick around Repeat five in the turn. I'm gonna say that for my boy Spraggy here Thank you uh, and again, a situation where sometimes these low cards, we see leads out of the big blind. Uh, the, the situation has changed a little bit. At this stage of the tournament, we won't see the big blind peeling as wide, so they don't have this big advantage on the five necessarily. Check, check to a nine river, and Paulinho arrives at that nine river with just seven high. So you'd imagine, whilst they don't want to just fire relentlessly, seven high, pretty low down. Versus check check on the turn. Some of the other hands improve, like 9, 10, king 10. There we see a bluff. And stump fed in position with a very nice bluff catcher. Yeah, seems like a fairly trivial bluff catch. But stump fed does called. make the call without having to go into the time bank. And blinds are up again. 150,000, 300,000. Omaha for rolls. Seems like he's still up to his old tricks, opening 5-6 suited here, getting Queen-10 suited to fold. Yep, Omaha yeah, Omaha. Yeah, I agree with you, by the way, on, on Seb Sebastian Huber real quick. I wanted to follow that up and just say that it was a lot of fun watching him uh, on that run where he had satellited into one of the high roller events. So definitely we'll keep an eye on Sebastian Huber. Go ahead, Spraggy. Yeah, I was just going to say Omaha for all, uh, you know, continuing this reign of terror over the table, really. And uh, as you say, Joe, Bakes in the cage a little bit. Um, obviously, can play quite freely now with the 1.1, looking for that spot to double up. But Omaha for all is not going to be any let up, I don't imagine. And Bakes will be in the big blind next hand. Do any extras? Might find a raise here occasionally, but in this setup, Omaha for rolls with all those chips in the big blind, kind of unappealing. Especially off this shorter stack. Just let the Jack-10 go. Hand that's not going to be worth anything at this stage, in this setup. The minimum raise from Lipe. And Omaha for rolls, of course, going to continue in similar fashion, uh, or in some fashion, should I say. Does yes. elect to call. Top pair. Yep, top pair for Omaha for rolls. Nice hand for Lipipiv. Got the ace of hearts. Got the eight, which can, uh, you know, turn well with a six or a nine or a four, picking up straight draws. I think they can go either way on the flop. 33% for the continue. And again, Omaha for rolls. This 10 kicker maybe blocks some of the stuff you want to get value from. Maybe not quite strong enough to check raise and, and play big pots. So comes in for a call. And there's one of those turns we spoke about that gives Lipapiv just a little bit of something. Just that ultimate plan of betting and getting there. Still live right now. Still live right now. Just deciding whether to continue here. Wow. Um, does continue to apply pressure. Two million chips. And actually, this is probably the, the stage of the hand where Omaha for rolls is starting to you know, realize that they might be put in some very difficult decisions at the river. There are some very bad river cards. This is certainly not a hand that is ever going to want to raise. Um, you're up against a value range of aces, ace-king, king-queen, king-jack. And actually facing a triple barrel... Uh, you know, King-10 going to be worth very little. Um, we do see a check. Now, can Lipipiv find this triple barrel? Do we even want if them not, to? <laughs> if not, Omaha for all... They definitely lose if they don't find it. <laughs> they definitely lose if they don't find it. I think it's very uncomfortable for the King-10. Um, 
we do see one of the, you know, this this bluffing combination giving up. I think the Ace of Hearts giving up. You know, you kind of want your opponent to maybe call with some flush draws that give up. So bluffing with the Ace of Hearts at the river, perhaps ill-advised for Lipapiv. Um, you know, these are the, the easy folds for your opponent is just to have the nut flush draw and fold the river. So again, you don't want to block that really when we're bluffing in Lipapiv's shoes. Folds around to Hello Toddy, King, Nine of Hearts. Queen Jack for Omaha. We've seen this hand specifically being used to attack. This time it's just going to be a call, and Bex with Queen Nine suited is dominated in two different ways. Shoves all in. Hello Toddy makes the call. Omaha now faced with a lot of money in the middle. Yeah, just a couple more blinds. Um, kind of priced in to see a flop here. It's not a very keen one for any of our opponents. And maybe we do just see some check. Some check. Hello, Totty. Kind of hopeful that King High is enough. Not really folding out many better hands with a bet. So they will show down. And it's Bakes eliminated as the King High takes it. King High was enough. There goes Bakes in 11th place. $78,306. 10th place pays the same, but that's it. Afterward, my babies. One more elimination. And we are done for the day. We'll have our final table. Final table bubble, Joe. And for the first time since I've arrived, uh, we have a pay jump situation. Actually, no, there was another pay jump, but everyone's got locked. $78,306 at this point. And you can see there uh, the pants in your bottom right. Next pay jump is to 100000 for all of our final table finishes. So the next elimination will miss out on an extra 22000 US dollars. Which you don't want to do. I'm no mathematician, Joe, but if you could choose between having $22,000 and not having it, having uh -huh. it... Definitely a better financial choice. So everyone will, of Sorry, course, be striving to start, to start again table. from the beginning. Can you start yeah, again so from 22, the beginning? 000, yeah, so twenty-two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Ideally, yes. So ideally, don't bust right now. This Plus is a, you have a that's a to, to brag about. That's a yes for me too. I think. So our shortest stack King on this on table King. now is uh, is any extras who'll be who'll be most looking uh, to to. Dodge this elimination. As Lipipiv took the lead, Joe, pairing that three. Domination rotation, as we say. And both players kind of happy that maybe their hand just is winning or wins enough to the point where they have worse hands in their range that want to bluff and they don't want to bluff too much so we do see kind of a tame tame one here with players just having enough of the pot most of the time but it is lipapiv who takes it omaha for rolls now then really in a situation where dinge brinker hello totty lipapiv now this pay jump is immediately in play um all three of these players looking to stay out of trouble perhaps hoping that any extras is the next one to fall And decides to jam the ace eight. And Dinge Brinker not able to tangle with that bad of an ace and that short of a stack. We are switching to the other table. Top pair Where here. We actually for have Dave a much Zuck. more. And top and much pair. More even for dynamic welcome here, to Inferno. Joe. <laughs> yeah. And as you say, both players have caught their nines. They may both be on nines. <laughs> if there's a with the better kicker and looks for some value on the turn. Don't imagine that our reigning defending welcome Inferno champion going anywhere just yet. Quite happy to bluff catch. 
four of spades on the river does change things a little bit. Some straight draws getting in there. Some two pairs going to be made. Some flushes certainly going to be made. Check, check. And the 10-9 will take it. Switching. Jack nine of diamonds for any extra. Not the hand that they'll be going with. Seven, eight suited for Lipe. Is going to give this the old college try. Omaha for rolls has it. The seven dominated, and it is a pair of eights for Lipe. Gut shot for Omaha and the overcard. And that's some turn card. Oh, that's a spicy turn. <laughs> yeah, Omaha for Rolls definitely is going to quite like this board now. Oh my goodness me, street flash potential. But Omaha for Rolls is going to make a lot of two pairs here. Going to make a lot of straights. Wants to start trying to get hands like King Queen or Ace Queen to fold. So is firing out on the turn. Our street flash has been cancelled. <laughs> But Lipa Piv at the river with a pair of eights in a spot where Omaha for all is going to have a, a, a 10, a very decent amount of the time. Um, a hand like 8-5 just got kind of fit, might work in their favor. 7-4, um, 7-9, uh, seven, seven, these straights. And we see an overbet from Omaha for Rolls kind of leaning on this fact that the flop checked through and they still have a lot of very strong hands in their range. We can see that they've got jack high. And it's, uh, it'll have to be a hand digging very deep. This is two pot-sized bets, nearly. And what a nice hero call. Nice call there. Yeah, we can go with one of these. Lippe Piv to the moon. Up to almost 20 million now. That is third on the leaderboard. And Omaha may be about to double up any extras. Yeah, we're going to see a shot. There's the all-in. Snap call. Domination situation, a wheel opportunity for Omaha, but it's home and dry for any extras. Double up. Two of the first losses we've seen from heads up for rolls in back-to-back -back hands, switching to the other table. Pocket nines shoving over this open. Yeah, and this is what we spoke about earlier, that big 40-plus big blind rip of the nines just denying the equity in position um but what a really nice call just to come back to this seven eight of spades fine from lipapiv when it matters most on the final table bubble very aware that their range has a lot of king queen and ace queen and king jack and all these hands ace highs that are just going to fold the river so whilst they only had an eight they're thinking this is one of the best hands i've got it blocks the straights it blocks some two pairs it blocks the full houses i have to make the call even for two times the size of the pot but very impressive to find it on a final table bubble I just want to read a couple of uh, comments from YouTube uh, from Pavel, who says, I saw Spraggy doing that and also many people, and it's stupid to call this nice call. It's not nice or good call. It's just stupid call. Do you mind if I ban – can you be at my guest celebrity banner? Can I ban this person? Do I have your – They're banned. You're banned. Thank what you. do I have to do? Say you're banned? Yeah, just say you're banned. You're banned. I think so. I Thanks mean, I think it comments. is a good call. I think it's a nice call. Um, it, it's definitely a call was of someone who's a very high-level player who understands how their range works. They have a lot of hands that want to fold. And in this spot, they just have a very nice uh, way to catch a bluff. I think we see uh, mistake-free play from both players, right? The Jack-7 is a very nice hand to bluff with. The 8-7 is a very nice hand to call with. Sometimes they just clash and come together for a big pot. It's it's the lack of empathy that really upsets me there, Spraggy. How can you not figure out that even if like you think that this is a very obvious call that it's for so much actual money. This isn't this isn't low stakes. This isn't early in the tournament. This is like you make that call and you're you know you're you're out or nearly out. Uh, you're out actually, um, or whatever. The, I don't remember what the bet was for, but it, the, the, it's the, actual money very being lit on fire. Yeah. We've got to give people their flowers. I mean, we're playing we're, we're playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars here. And someone's, you know, you're playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're able to call a big 2x pot bet with second pair and, and get it right. Um, I think I think a nice call is it's quite reasonable. This that this is actually a great comment from Poker Shed. I like it. To be honest, it makes me happy that there are people invested enough in poker to be watching this but bad enough to say that's a bad call. Sure, I'll take it. It's 
Stump fed, raising. Jack eight off. Dives it with the very strong holding. Stars nuts just calls. Flops top set. Stump fed with the gut shot. Good flop for the nines. And quite interestingly, we just what? saw Danny C with the shorter stack finding the all-in pre with nines. Uh, but devs are going for the slow play. Let's see how they proceed on the flop. If you are going to slow play a hand, maybe this top set's kind of a good idea because you block your opponent's top pairs. It's harder to get value from top pairs because you've got the whole board, right? I think what is working in devs' favor is there's so many draws. You know, we've got flush draws. We've got hands like Jack-10, 5-6, 4-5, 8-10. There's a lot of straight draw interaction here. So we do see them go for the race, trying to drive value into the pot whilst they've got the best of it. And Stump fed with one of these straight draws and also the eight of clubs. Joe, that's 60% of a straight flush. You're more than halfway there. I get that, but I feel like even if you're open-ended here, could you even make this call? I think it's kind of sad uh, hand to fold. I wouldn't be surprised if Stump fed wants to continue. The, the eight of clubs, you know, working for them a little bit. Perhaps this stage of the tournament, we, we are going to have to be a little bit more disciplined. And disciplined is oh, what Stump fed is. Oh, boy. Discipline now out of the window with the Kings. Yeah, exactly. Here comes the raise from the Ace-10 suited. And pocket Kings for stump fed. Any sneaky players? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why I don't think we see, obviously besides the fact that we have Kings, I don't think De Devza has been playing an aggressive enough game. Uh, we just saw them flat the nines in the big blind. If you have a chip leader here who's really applying pressure and really going for it, mm -hmm. maybe you try and trap and see the raise behind. But Devza's not really been doing that. So Stump Fed taking matters into their own hands uh, and opting for a re-raise. Danny C with the ace-10 suited at a position. Too strong to fold. Not strong enough Hard to fold. Hard to say. Bet. At, at this like stage, it. yes, perhaps. Some ah, flop, Joe. boy. Top pair in big, big trouble for Danny C. Two and a very half to one. Stack. stack to pot ratio. Yep. We're very happy, Stump Fed here. Very happy with the flop. Um, looking to take some small bets in position. Very comfortable to be able to get all the money in over flops, turns, and rivers. And there's no obvious threat to your kings at this point. It's not like a, a particularly coordinated board. Stumpfed does go for this half pot sizing. And Danny in just a very, very, very awful position here with top pair. Yeah, all options other than fold on the table. All in. And a snap call, of course. Oof. Ace on the turn. And that's it. Bad beat for Stumpfed. Out in 10th place. Ace 10 getting in pretty bad there. But the poker gods had other plans. 10th place was Stumpfed. These are the nine coming back tomorrow. And Danny does catapult into second place. With that major suck out on the turn, it's Lithuanian player Devza, who has zero scoop titles but four final tables this series, who will start with the chip lead tomorrow. Uh, Spraggy, uh, if you are the sort of person who is in a stump fed position there, uh, how long is it going to take you to calm down from that? How long a did you while. pull the plug on your stream early while, so they wouldn't see your reaction? <laughs> Typically, it's not going to take me too long to recover from bad beats. And, you know, during scoop, it, it's obviously going to happen. This this is a whole different level, you know. Final table bubble of the 10K main event. I think the biggest scoop I own, I ever FD bubbled was maybe a 2K scoop against uh, Zero's poker. I got it all in ace-king against king-queen, and that one hurt. This one, for Stumpfed, you got to feel for them. And, and, you know, played a very nice hand with the kings. Got it all in as a massive favorite for a massive part worth literally hundreds of thousands of dollars but the dagger ace on the turn is uh is quite punishing a very nice run for stumped and uh we've seen a lot of stump during this scoop hopefully we see more from them because their style is pretty interesting just want to remind everyone that we are out of time today we are done with today's broadcast but tomorrow we are coming back with all of the main events specifically the 10k main event which has a more than million dollar first place prize. Spraggy, thanks very much for your time today. 
Tomorrow we are going to have Finton Hand and Sam Grafton and Griffin Benger and James Hardigan in the mix. But for now, for Griffin, for, for James, and for Spraggy, I am Joe Stapleton. Smell you later.